So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life, and I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that to this day are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower. In a realm that is no more. Don't tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m.
What's happening? Oh, perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. This is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Why do you take such pleasure in torturing us? Torturing you? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking... tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down, and the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg. What egg? Oh, of course, the child. Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the wood spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to Earth and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to Earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed, and the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. I think I just made a funnel. Cool! I'm so proud of myself.
fresh mountain water. Back in the real world, they'd probably charge 15 bucks a bottle for this. This should do the trick. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby, or the egg. Thank the Earth. We almost forgot. Uh-oh. It is you. You have come. You know me? April. Daughter. I have been waiting for you. Waiting? Why? Because it begins here, with you, as it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending, the pain and the joy, the end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is, but you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you, and I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. It doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. It's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was gonna spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time.
I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? I don't really have time to hang around. Then how about hanging out with me tonight? A few raptures, some hot dancing. Ah, uh, did I tell you I got a VIP pass to the pavilion? Those things are hard to come by, babe. Sounds like good fun, but not tonight. Hey, whenever. Just don't expect me to be waiting around for you forever. No chick is worth that heartache. See you around. What an asshole. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know what's strange? I don't hate him. He's a bastard, and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God, I'm glad that life is behind me. I hope I never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently, but she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so, but I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. 
Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live. Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Where did you find my ring? Under the sofa, darling. It must have slipped off your finger while you were watching a movie or something. That's strange, because I've been keeping it in a box in my room. I rarely ever wear it, and I've never carried it around in my pocket. Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then? Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for, Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt, and although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favorite tenant. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. 
I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. What's up with Zack Lee? Zack? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass, and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time, and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice, and I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory. But when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council. And after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Borderhouse? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. 
I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area, and that about 100 years ago they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap, and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient, and it's got a... an interesting view. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. Do you like Newport? The city? Well, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love or hate? I haven't decided yet, darling. Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? I hope it doesn't melt or anything. It's alive! leaving my gold ring. Somebody's going to have to replace that cable eventually. Oye, senorita. Yes? How are you this morning, senorita bonita? Hot. I see. 
The summers in Newport are never pleasant. And it will get worse before it gets better. They say there's another heat wave headed our way. Yeah, so I heard. So, you gonna be all right? You don't look dressed for the weather. Si Dios quiere. Sunshine and pretty señoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie. Like all good movies. But tell me, Senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? Hot and sunny like this one. Well then, you should be happy to be alive today, yes? It is a perfect day. But you are not happy, are you? You are troubled by nightmares. What? You are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, señorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? We all do, April. That's the reason we are here, you and me. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please, think about it. And señorita, cuidado. Be careful. Somebody toss out a perfectly good work glove with just one big hole in it. What a terrible, terrible waste. Hiya. Emma? Hi! I didn't expect to see you here today. Me neither. Are you busy? Nah. Well, I am. But I was about to wrap up for today anyway. Why? What's going on? I have an important message for you. 
What's the message? Believe it or not, girl, but it's from Cortez. He wants to meet you. These are his exact words, where children visualize their dreams. Visualize dreams? What's that supposed to mean? Me? I was hoping you would know. Did he say anything else? Nope, that was it. Why does he want to meet you? Oh, don't tell me. You guys are having a secret love affair. Oh, yeah. We're eloping and flying to Africa tonight. It's all been happening so fast. My heart's a flutter. <sighs> How romantic. I couldn't imagine a better catch than Senor Cortez, the Latin lover. <laughs> Did he talk to you about nightmares? No. Why? I don't know. It's just... My dreams are really starting to bother me. There you go again with dreams. You're obsessing, April. They're just dreams. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. And a dragon is just a dragon. What's dragons got to do with it? Oh, don't tell me you had a dream about dragons. A dragon. A talking dragon. I'm gonna regret this, but what happened in your dream? Well, there was a dragon. I think we established that already. You had a dream about a dragon. Not just any dragon, though. A talking dragon. Yep, we've been through that. Talking dragon covered. What did it say? She. It was a she, a female dragon. What, you could tell from the skirt, high heels, and lipstick? Don't mock me, Emma. She said something to me, something about being the mother of the future. She probably said time to get up and go to school, April. If you don't want to take my dreams seriously, I'll just stop telling you about them. Is that a promise? Like you're in any position to make fun of my dreams? Have you looked at your sculptures lately? Oh, that's low. I'd punch you out if I wasn't so hungry. You want to go get some lunch at the Fringe? I'll drop by after I clean up around here. I'll be there for a while, so bye. Hi, Charlie. April, nice to see you, girl. You know, I came to wake you this morning, but you'd already left. Early bird catches the worm. No, early bird finishes the damn painting on time. <laughs> have you seen Cortez around? As a matter of fact, I have. And he was asking for you. He asked about me? Yeah, where you were. He had a message for you. I told him to give it to Emma, that she would be more likely to bump into you. I got it, but I have no idea what it means. Cortez can be a little strange. Do you know where he was going? No, but he seemed interested in that poster next to the jukebox. They put it up earlier today. 
Do you have any idea where kids would be able to, um, visualize their dreams? Maybe in therapy? I don't think that's it, Charlie. Then I don't know. Thanks. Anytime, April. How's work going today? Aside from the trouble with the plumbing, everything's been peaceful. Emma's here with Marcus and Isabel. Other than that, I mean, it's been a quiet morning. Everyone must be home out of the sun, yeah? Or on holiday. Perfect time for it, too. The city's just boiling in July, and it gets even hotter in August. You should have stayed out in the country until the autumn, girl. It's cooler out there, yeah? Yeah, the summers were cooler back home. Uh, I remember my home. It got so hot sometimes. My father worked as a volunteer fireman, and sometimes he'd borrow the old truck from the garage. He'd fill it with spring water from the river up in the hills. And then he would hose me and my sisters down with ice-cold water. We'd laugh and scream and run around. And the funny thing is, his eyes light up, and he'd be so proud of himself. He could be so good. And he could be so bad. On those days, I loved him so much. They were the good days. You doing anything special tonight? Working. I should really be at rehearsal, but I need the money. I'm going home for a week before school starts in September. Right, you told me. Well, that's great. It's been years since your last trip home, right? Yeah, right. You remember well, girl. Four years. My father and I, well, we haven't been on good terms since I left. I know how that feels. Isn't it such a cliche, though? I don't look forward to seeing him again, but it will be nice to be back with the rest of the family. Especially my sisters, you know, and my mom. I have to get going, Charlie. Take care, all right? Remember, you're supposed to get paid today. Stan's not gonna remember unless you bug him about it. I'm sure Stan won't notice if I dig gently into his supply. He's got crates of these in the back. Hey, it's my timesheet from the cafe. I completely forgot I put it in here. Good thing I found it, because I'm broke. What are you doing here? I... You ain't working this afternoon, are you? I don't want my employees work 24 hours a day. Go, get sleep. But I'm just... Damn woman, do I have to babysit you? It's nice to see you too, Stanley. No, I'm not working today. I just came by to... Oh, don't ever say those two words when I'm around. I don't think my horse can take it. You? And nice? <clears throat> That's funny. No. Working and not. Don't use those two words in the same sentence. <clears throat> Damn, I get creeps even when I say them. I'd like to get paid. Damn, woman, don't you know I got a migraine already? Paid? God damn it. Why'd they have to make that word sound so obscene? Listen, why don't you leave old Stan alone, huh? They make me feel a whole hell of a lot better. Choo, choo, be good little girl, hmm? I'd 
I'd still like to get paid, though. Mighty mana woman. You really know how to rub it in. God damn it! Yeah, all right. Got your timesheet? Yes? 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 Let's see it. God damn, you think I'm gonna take your word for a woman? Here you are, my timesheet. Don't say that word too loud, sweetheart. You're killing me. Let's see. Hmm. What? Huh? No, 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 no. Did I sign this? What I thinking? So? At least it doesn't look like it's been forged. Uh, thanks. Thanks? Where's my money? Oh, you ain't getting it now. Next week, buddy. I write down this amount in my ledger. Don't you worry your head from it. Forget that. I quit. You're quitting? You can't quit. You work for me. Nobody quits this job, buddy. I can quit. And I'm quitting. I quit. Damn, woman. You know how hard it is to find people to take a crappy job like this one? I need you. Just as much as you need the money? All right. Jesus, I give you your damn money. What was it? Fifty bucks? Three hundred and seventy-five dollars, Stanley. Cash. Oh, sure. Cash. Three hundred... Are you sure? I pay you guys way too much. All right, give me your CC. Thank you, Stanley. Fine, sure, whatever. Hey, just I mean it. You free tonight? Wanna pull a shift? Sandra, she out sick and I need a replacement pronto. How about it? No, sorry, I have plans. <clears throat> plans? Plans on a Friday? Mighty mana, what's the world come to? Get out from here. Leave me alone with my migraine and ulcer. <laughs> Roma Gallery presents Growing Pains. Exhibition by and for kids and teenagers. Could this be what Cortez was talking about? Where kids visualize their dreams? I think this may be it. Where's the Roma Gallery located? I never say no to a complimentary ticket. It's the address. The gallery is located near the Watertown Bridge. It's all the way over in West Venice, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna have to catch the Metro Line subway to get there. April, when did Roaring Dale release Sidetracked? Oh, 04, right after the Morning Star exile, those sons of bitches. With blood on their boots, yeah. <laughs> Told you so, Marcus. You said 03. I was closer than you, 07, and you call yourself a fan. I don't. Did you speak with Zach today? Why? He was upset. Called you a stuck-up bitch. He what? You gotta be kidding me. I wasn't even that rude to him. <clears throat> he thinks so. So that even if you came crawling to his door, he wouldn't give you the time of day. Said you called him an asshole. Oh, God. I really don't know when to shut my mouth, do I? Who cares? It's Zack. He hates you, so what? No great loss. 
That's true. So, what else is going on? What are you doing this afternoon? Actually, I came by to see if I could find Cortez. What's with you and this guy? You'd rather spend time with him than us? I have to find out what the message means. Don't look at me. I don't know anything except what I already told you. Ask Charlie. He spoke with Cortez earlier. What are you doing? Staying here. What else? I'm meeting a friend later, but that's not until 9. We're waiting for Isabel and then we're gonna eat. But I guess you're not hungry. No. Figures. I don't know why I even bother asking. Who's this friend you're meeting later? Don't tell me it's that guy you were out with last night. Are you gonna tell me I shouldn't get involved with men like him? No, no, of course not. I'm not your... You don't need me to tell you that, Emma. Well, I wish you would, because you're right. I shouldn't, he's a bastard. But he's so cute and charming and, you know, very good in bed. I, I just can't help myself. But he's not a keeper, don't worry about that. It's just this thing, just a fling. I gotta run. See you around, stranger. Blank? I know that duck. Bon voyage, ducky!
get a weekly pass, just in case. $15 subtracted from cash card. You are now free to travel on all Metroline subways for exactly one week. And remember, genetic forgery is a federal crime. Keep your genes clean. Have a nice day. Oh, sir, sir. I'll just leave my ticket here then, shall I? Yes. Yes, I guess I'll do that. About time you showed up. About time? I spent more than... Mira, this painting. Right here. Look. You brought me all the way down here to look at a painting? Yes, but there's more. Just look at it. What am I looking for? What do you see? I see a statement on loss. The guy, he's hugging a girl, and by all rights, he should be happy, but he's not. He's probably already mourning the loss of her, even though that's still somewhere in his future. Statements? Who cares about his statements? Tell me what you see. I see an oil painting of two humans locked in an embrace. That's all you see? But there's so much more. Look. Look. I see art. Art, yes. And beyond that. Beyond art. Truth? Truth. Exactly. A deeper truth. This painting, this particular work of art, speaks a deeper truth. It has a soul. How can a painting have a soul? It has a soul because it has an identity. It has a heart. The memory of this painting will survive beyond this moment. It will linger in your mind, become part of the tapestry of your subconscious. It has made a lasting impression on you. And you're not quite sure why. It's just a painting by some kid. It's not as if it's a Picasso or a Monet. Now you're arguing technique. Not every painting by Van Gogh or Michelangelo is real art either, although they all demonstrate great technique and, and craftsmanship. And the scribbled drawings of a five-year-old child are rarely technically impressive, but they may still have a soul. They may still be real art. So you're saying real art is not defined by the skill of the artist? Then what is art? If just Anybody can create something more real than artists who spent their entire lives developing their skills? Art is still the work of artists. And skill, craftsmanship, technique, those things are critical to the success of an artist's work. But alone, 
those things are merely pretense. For something to be real, to be truthful, the artist must transfer, shift part of him or herself into the work to transcend the illusion and reach for the truth of art. And what is the truth of art? Who knows? I've been asking myself that question for years. Excuse me? You don't even know? And what's all this about all the questions and lectures on truth and illusion? For that matter, why did you ask me to come down here in the first place? Because... Actually, you didn't even ask me to come down. I spent my entire afternoon traveling all over Venice, deciphering a cryptic message, spending money I don't have on a subway ticket, only to have to stand here and listen to... to... You saw something this afternoon. A waking dream, and you can't explain it. That's why you are here, isn't it? How the hell do you know these things? It's as plain as the day, Senorita Ryan. You're under a lot of stress. My point about art and truth is this, April. Some things look real, but are not. And other things may appear to be of no consequence at all, but are in fact invaluable. Like Warren's painting here, and your dreams. There is both truth and illusion in dreams, and in the images they create. The problem is in sorting the one from the other. You're telling me my dreams are true? I'm telling you there are things afoot, and that you need help in sorting the truth from the illusions. My help. Well, that figures. Good. I was hoping you'd understand. No. Actually, I didn't understand a single word. You talk about art, and truth, and dreams, and illusions, and I still don't understand what it all has to do with me. There are things happening, yes, and I came here because I thought, maybe you're crazy enough to believe me, to help me. I don't know, sort through the debris and come up with the plausible explanation. But no. You tell me my dreams might be true, that I need your help, and that there are things afoot. I mean, who says afoot? I've never heard anybody use the word before. There are things afoot. Está bien. I understand your reluctance to believe me, senorita. But I cannot convince you here, now. Meet me tomorrow. What? Meet me tomorrow, and I will tell you everything. Not again, no way. But you will, because you are compelled to do so by your own curiosity, because you are drawn to mystery, and because despite your skepticism, you believe I have the answer to all your questions, yes? No. No, I don't care. I just want to have a normal life. No nightmares, no visions, no strangers telling me that things are afoot. Comprende, amigo? Ay, Dios mío. Is that the time? I've got to run, Senorita Ryan. I'll see you tomorrow, then. I said... Goodbye. There's absolutely nothing out there. Nothing. Oh, there's a city, an entire world even. But nothing. The omnipresent screen. I don't pretend to know how it works, but all the data apparently passes through tiny little black holes in the fabric of our dimension. You know, that really freaks me out when I think about it. Have you been sitting here all day? 
Pretty much, darling. I feel like a vegetable. How was your day, then? It's been a weird day. How so? Well, you know how some mornings you wake up, but you're not sure if you're really awake or if you're still just dreaming? I feel like that every morning, darling. A pot of black coffee cures that in a flash. That's how I've been feeling all day. Like I said, it's been a weird day. How was yours? Exceedingly ordinary. Almost depressingly so. I poked my head out of the door once for about a second, but thought better of it. What are you watching? Nothing special. We were thinking about watching a movie later, though. Yeah, which one? They have quite a few new releases out. Did you ever see Victory Hotel? No. Is it good? That's what they say. So we might catch that one. I'll see you later, yeah? All right, darling. It's our screen. to make my bed. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. It's a chair. What's going on, Mickey? Well, the water's been fixed, so you can take a hot shower if you want. I smell that bad? No, I didn't mean that you. I just, you know, in case you wanted to take a warm shower, I, I just wanted you to... The water being hot, as it were. Thanks, Mickey. Yeah. I heard you had a nightmare last night. Did she tell you that? She can't keep her mouth shut, can she? You can't, can you? As if your screaming wasn't enough to wake up the whole building. And so what if you were having a nightmare? You are human, you know, even though you'd like to think differently. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause an argument. It's just that I had a nightmare as well. Good luck trying to get anything out of her. She's so very together, you know. There'll be no chink in her armor. She's the Iron Lady. Well, bollocks. Would you shut up, Fiona? I mean, for once, would you just shut up? Yes, I had a nightmare, and yes, it's none of your business. So don't try to make it your business. I wasn't trying to... to intrude. Fine. I just don't like talking about my dreams, yeah? What was wrong with the pipes? They're just old, like all of Venice. They're really old. Twice a year, every year, I have to spend a half a day freezing my ass off down in the canal performing emergency surgery on the pipes. Not that I don't love doing it, especially when my so-called partner's curled up on the sofa watching soaps all day long. I'll talk to you later, Mickey. Yeah. Why don't you sit down and watch a movie with us, April? You know what? That sounds like an excellent idea. I'm sorry. 
to find Cortez and get him to explain what the hell's going on. Insane or not, he's the only person I can talk to about this. Good morning. Please tell me last night was a dream, April. It wasn't a dream. I know it wasn't. And since both you and Mickey, since the both of you saw what I saw, it can't have been a hallucination either. Weird things have been happening lately. I have noticed. This isn't the first time. What other weird things have happened lately? Little things, like movement in the corner of your eye that's gone when you turn your head. And noises, the kind you're not supposed to hear in the city. Animal noises. Wild animals. And once, this was very early in the morning, mind, a few days ago, I looked down into the canal and saw what looked like an underwater city. As I looked at it, it dissolved into ripples of water. Scary. You're telling me, darling. I'm scared of cockroaches, for God's sake. What do you think this does to my nerves? Have you seen Cortez today? No, darling. I don't think he's around. Do you have any idea where Cortez is? Sorry, he could be anywhere. Well, he does enjoy going uptown to watch old movies in some revival cinema, but where that is, I wouldn't know. Who'd know? Perhaps Zack. He is, after all, the self-appointed film expert around here. You should talk to him, darling. Great. Zack. My very best friend in the whole wide world. Could you tell Cortez I'm looking for him? Certainly, darling. If I happen to see him. Thanks. I have to get going. Take care of yourself out there, darling. I never imagined I'd be doing this in a million years. Well, well, what do you know? The princess comes knocking after all. Yes, I finally realized what I was missing out on. About time, too. So, you, uh, ready to hang out? Just do me one favor first, okay? Well, give me a reason to, babe. A reason? You want a reason? Okay. What about a date? Yeah. Good. Tonight. Uh, sure. Tonight. I'll meet you at the... Pavilion, was it? And, uh, are you gonna put out? What? Well, I mean, if I'm gonna use my VIP passes and my pills, babe, I just gotta know if it'll be worth it or not. You on? We'll see, Zach. Eh, uh, just don't do a Houdini and vanish on me, babe. If you're a no-show and I wait around for you all night, I end up looking like an asshole. That wouldn't make me very happy. I'll be a good girl and show. Smart. So, uh, what do you want to know? You know where I can find Cortez. Cortez, yeah? I knew there was something going on between you guys. Don't be ridiculous, Zack. It's not what you think. Whatever. Hey, like I give a shit? You're with me tonight, and by tomorrow morning, I don't think you'll find that old creep so appealing anymore. So, where is Cortez? Uh, when he's not outside reading or whatever the hell he does, he's usually at the Mercury Theater. They show old movies on real celluloid stock through a projector, like in the fucking Middle Ages. Where is this theater located? I don't remember the street it's on. It's been ages since I was there last. But you'll find it if you head out the East Gateway from Metro Circle. It's close to the Radio Power Building, and there are tons of adult stores in the area. Actually, if you're not too busy, you could pick up something for us to watch tonight. Something really filthy. 
Zack, I don't think... Hey, whatever. I was just kidding, yeah? Babe, you got a major bug up your ass. Get a fucking sense of humor, yeah? I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the tip... and the info. Just be at the pavilion by ten, okay? I don't like waiting around for babies like you. Got a million better things to do. And it wouldn't be a good idea for you to ditch me. Not a good idea at all. There's a high voltage cable running parallel with the rail, and something's gotten stuck between them. It looks like a large iron key. That won't do any good. I need something tight to keep the clamp open. Last. I tried fishing a couple of times in the pond behind my house. I never caught anything. I hope my luck's improved. That's a pretty cool catch. Do you believe this is the first thing I saw when I came to Newport? Big city? Gotta love it. Excuse me. Yes, huh? Oh, jeez. Hold on there one second, lady. Dang, Marquis. Light up! Good. Now stay that way, you hear? Do you work at the theater? Yes, um, I'm Freddie. Freddie Mellon. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she owns the theater. Yep, I reckon she does, uh-huh. She owns it, and she be running it by her own self, like a, a real proprietor. I reckon I help out some, of course, yep. And what do you do, sir? I'm the usher, and I also takes care of sweeping and cleaning up after the show. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, 
She say she reckon I'm a regular jack of all trades. I tell you what, I think she's right about that, uh huh. Is the theater open now? No, I reckon it ain't, lady. It don't open till this evening. Ain't nobody in there either. I reckon that wouldn't be legal. You know a man called Cortez? No. I can't say as I does, lady. Ain't never met him. Now, I reckon I'd like to get on with my sweeping, uh-huh. But I'm supposed to meet him here. Are you sure you don't know him? Look, lady. I reckon you you should just mind your own bee's knees and get. I told you, I ain't seen Cortez today. You said you didn't know Cortez. I I reckon I don't know nobody by that name. So so I tell you what, I'd mighty appreciate it if if you'd stop bothering me. And let me get on with my work. Jesus, Mary, and baby Joseph. I reckon the whole dang world is f wants to find Cortez today. Thanks, anyway. Yes, yeah, um, I'll tell you what. You go on now. And let Freddy Mellon do his sweeping before his mama, Mrs. Doddy Mellon, get all P.I.S.T. off. Lady, don't you keep playing with that thing now, you hear? Leave it be. Hi there. Having fun? Didn't your mother teach you not to talk to strangers? She never mentioned anything about that. She should have. Now get lost. Are you on the job? On the job? What do you mean, on the job? You know. An assignment. Stakeout. Undercover operation. I suggest you get the hell out of here now, ma'am, before things get ugly. Was that a threat? Are you threatening me? Yes, I am. Hello again. Christ, don't you ever quit? What is it now? Why are you dressed like a cop? What do you mean, why am I dressed like a... Hey, wait a second, what's it to you? Just trying to do my bit for the boys in blue, sir. You look like a cop, so if you're on a stakeout or something, you should try to blend in a little more. Go native! Yeah, how? I don't know, but that trench coat sort of gives it away. Perhaps a pair of blue jeans and one of those I'm with stupid t-shirts might help. Hold on, let me get this down right. Hey, wait a second, what am I doing? Who the hell do you think you are? The NPD fashion consultant? Is that supposed to be funny, ma'am? Are you a comedian or something? Because I'm not laughing. I'm not even smiling, am I? Now get your ass out of here and don't bother me again. Is that a threat? Damn right it's a threat. Hello again? Christ, don't you ever quit. What is it now? Don't you get tired of hanging around here all day long? No, ma'am. So you're completely fine. There's nothing you'd want. That's right. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Not even a bite to eat? Just had a full lunch, ma'am. Thanks for asking. So you just had lunch? That's right. At Cool Cow. What did you have? A triple whammy cow patty with a side order of grease onions and a large bingo cola. No ice. What about fries? 
And a double order of cheese and fried taters, yeah. Tastiest damn fries you're ever likely to find. Soaking in melted goat cheese. And you had this... when? Oh, about an hour ago. And you don't feel, um, the urge to go? No, ma'am, no. My bowels are genetically enhanced and require only perfunctory attention. The burger filled you up good? You don't have the munchies? Well, now you mention it, I have a craving for sweets. I didn't have time for my usual cool cow strawberry pie with whipped cream chocolate sauce and a scoop of ice cream. Wait a second. What am I telling you all this for? Who the hell are you anyway? Hey, get out of here, ma'am. Right this minute or else... Is this a threat? I think that was a threat. A very serious one, ma'am. Would you like a candy? Hey, yeah. That'll hit the spot. What the hell? The taste! Sickening! I feel kinda... Christ! Hey, what... What the hell do you think you're doing? Did you just throw a rock at my head? Now, I tell you what. You shouldn't have done that. I reckon that was a bad mistake. <laughs> you should have seen him run, lady. I reckon I ain't never seen nobody run that fast. And he was clutching at his buttocks like he had the runs or something. <laughs> he, he even lost his stupid old hat in the gutter. <laughs> I ain't never seen anything that funny in a while. Dang, Marquis, light up! Hell, it gone dead on me now. I'm going to have to fix that sign proper this time round, uh-huh. I just need me a ladder and some tools from the basement.
It's a fire alarm and a smoke detector. It reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. I feel an uncontrollable urge to raise my hands, though. The shadow's being cast by those garbage bags. Came loose, poor Constable Guybrush. Sorry, Guybrush, but I need to borrow your eye for a while. Hey, you! Yeah, you! Hands up! Spread your legs and do the monkey. Mildly amusing. But irritating as hell. I think I'll shut him up now. Hey, you! Yeah, you! Hands up! Spread your legs and do the monkey. Now, where is that voice coming from? Show yourself! All right there, mister. Just, just don't, don't you fire that gun now, you hear? I, I'm, I'm sorry I chased you earlier. Freddy, you'll do the monkey for you right now, if, if that's what you want, uh huh? He'll do the monkey until you ask him to stop, I reckon. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, you. Hands up. Spread your legs. And do the monkey. You have no idea what I went through to find you. First... Do you like movies? Sure. Who doesn't? Wait a second. I was trying to tell you that... I don't much like modern movies myself. They're either too loud and expensive or too obscure and self-indulgent. But old movies, really old movies, have a charm and a simplicity that appeals to me. Listen. Please, don't interrupt me again. It's starting to piss me off. But I have never interrupted you, unless I have something important to say, of course. But go ahead. What is it you wanted to talk about? Why did you make me search all over the city for you? Search for me? I've been here for hours, senorita. I haven't moved. The question ought to be, what made you go out of your way to find me? We agreed to meet this morning, remember? As I remember it, there was no agreement. I said tomorrow, but you refused. I assumed you weren't interested. I apologize for making myself unavailable, however. Don't give me that. You wanted me to come looking for you again. Actually, no, I... I had to lay low for a few hours. Does it have anything to do with the cop that was staking this place out? No. So it was a good thing I didn't stick my head out the door to look for you then, no? He's gone now. Are you in some kind of trouble with the police? Wait, don't tell me. Immigration. No, senorita. Not the police. There are bigger players than the police. 
I don't want to know. I'm not getting mixed up with the mob or gangs or anything like that. There's not much you want to be mixed up in at all, is there? My life's complicated enough as it is, Mr. Cortez. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Answers. You want, you need answers. You keep telling me that, but you never give me any answers. Just more questions. Like, who's out to get you? What's going on with me? How come you know so much about me? I plan to answer all your questions today, April. By the time you go to sleep tonight, your world will have changed. And nothing will ever be the same. You're just being cryptic again. It's like soap opera sex. Lots of boring dialogue, and when they finally go to bed, everything's dark and covered by blankets. You want the full Monty, then? Come with me. Come outside. No more talk. I will show you the truth. They just lead back inside. This is probably as good a place as any. At least there's no one around to see, except rats. To see what? Stand back, senorita. What for? What are you doing? Why, Alice? I'm sending you through the looking glass. What? What is that? Please tell me it's a hologram. It's a mirror to reflect your dreams. I don't see anything, just light. Oh, you have to step through. Step through that? Oh no, I don't think so. This is the moment of decision, April. All time, past and present, revolves around this moment. The destiny of worlds is in your hands. But you must make the choice on your own. La vida es corta. You must decide how to live it best. All right. I'll do it. Vamos. Enter the light. Don't say that. It sounds too ominous. Just... tell me what's gonna happen. You're about to take the first step on the longest journey of your life. But don't worry. I'll be waiting right here. I must be insane to do this. Yes. It's pretty much a given. Oh, I almost forgot. When you're ready to come back, pay a visit to a friend of mine called Westhouse. Brian Westhouse. child, and may the balance protect you. Cortez? Cortez! I have a bad feeling about this. What was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Brian Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now.
Hello. Hi. Et tu? Emilie, tu vas? I don't understand. A cool star Kayan Paras. Inomalante Kandra. Ton Maris. Ore Tiesi Ton. Who are you? Ken Esang. Maris Ortona. Magic Ean Pose Ton. Sare Alvoca Im Iriam Tue Ithium. Where am I? Sankis Tue. Tonan to Ken Alvoch, a magican ian ton an asans. Where is Cortez? To tone a ken. To ken vernilia fata tim tu vermilian ton. Aku tu fata se quandare ken estale ton. Ton, can it to a Iraim Bob Simil Quakite? Ton, can it to a Iraim Bob Simil Quakite? A cool candy. Good. Niranton al voce. Sank al coda magic. Torante salhe. Now then, all tongue. Of orta e beginning, parasim tin you. You have fiesa e magic e sara. E the knowledge. Aritua ya ai tue by generations e umani. Knowledge of all tongue. Now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart, and the knowledge of all tongue, ever present but dormant, to guide your ears and your tongue. I... I understand you. You speak English? Why didn't you just tell me straight away? <laughs> no, child. I do not speak English. I speak Naven, all tongue, the common language of Arcadia. Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. Meaning what? That I have been rude. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grinsret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel. The Order of the Balance. We are the Fathers. Uh... Okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. You are without guidance. Without a mentor? Mentor? There's this guy, Cortez. He assisted me. Told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I don't... Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come, let us proceed. Let me show you Mercuria, the grandest city of all ages. A 
Explore Mar Curia, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then. Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias, just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized... I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. You know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science. The fallibility of logic and order. They leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance and about Stark and Arcadia and... This is probably going to sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening in... In my world, I guess. I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... Couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here. To learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. This is the true story of the Balance, as observed by the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance, the Fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago, so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the Balance, and it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the Earth was one, and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. Unless something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. 
and every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. We were given a visitation then. The drag kin, having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drag kin, Draken, Dragons, whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth, and of the four, one who would found the Order of the Balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the Balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark, magic and science, chaos and order. The first sentinel were counted 13, six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between, the drag kin, our mentor, our custodian, our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks, to split a world in two, to create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes, and so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them, a disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disc and the tower would become one, a conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the Thirteen came to the tower, and with them a woman, whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian, the human protector of the balance, who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds, and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, Lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, the disc at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it, until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disc glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created, and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared, and in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the Balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disc and said, This disc is a counterpart to the original disc, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disc, and the disc is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued, Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disk is broken. But nor can it be repaired without the disk being repaired. 
The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on. Without the precious stones that adorn each piece, I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Should the day come when this realm must be repaired, or the world reunited, and that day will come, you will assemble the disk, and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne. Witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disk. In service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the Guardian. And with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun. The era of the Guardian. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth, tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children, and stories to frighten and entertain around a fire. And while dreams still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep in Stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? Then what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers and named themselves the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years, it changed radically. The Vanguard wanted the Divide torn down, the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the Glorious Ages, when humankind could control the forces of Cosmos. But first, they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a thousand years. Every one thousand years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been two hundred years since the previous guardian, the twelfth guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard, to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the Twelfth Guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disk in the tower shattered, and the Guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended, and we have yet to find a new Guardian. Unless we do so, the Vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne, to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia, and the dawn of an era of chaos. 
Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. The balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared. And there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the balance until a new Guardian may be found. And what can I do? I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds. A shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... shift? And he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... talent. Not yet. But in time you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can't you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that, yes, yes you are. That's so not cool. No, it has been unseasonably warm. If you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no, thank you. It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. That is good news. Come see me again if you have any more questions. Excuse me. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Who'd know about West House? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can do to enlighten you. But who is he? He is who he is. What he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for me to divulge his secrets. You're as bad as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth, maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. How am I supposed to get back to Stark? The only way to get back is through a shift. You are a shifter, April, and the power to travel between worlds is within you. It might be within me, but it doesn't look like it's coming out anytime soon. I wish I could help you, but I cannot. 
You must find the path on your own. Who did you say I should see about West House? The map merchant at the market may know. There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know West House by his real name. In the city, he is known as the Rolling Man because of his strange two-wheeled vehicle. A most dreadful and dangerous contraption if I ever saw one. A bicycle? Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the West House himself. I'll see you later. You will? If you say so, then it must be true. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. How much are your maps? Uh, that depends, miss. I got a very nice one here of the Border Mountains for only six Harrens, fresh from the quill of a Sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. Do you sell maps of the city? Can't help you there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. I can tell you're not from around here, or you know that. Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're closed for the holidays. Sure, that makes sense. I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place. Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Can you tell me where the Rolling Man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? I need to find it. Sorry, guild rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps! I really need to know where the rolling man lives. Sorry, can't do. Please? Pretty please? No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. Please tell me where the Rolling Man lives. No, oh, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. You're late again. And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Dolmari to do a human job. What are you gonna do now, without a delivery boy? Hire a new one, of course. Ah, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants. Damnation! Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable. And I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy could work if the Guild of Merchants don't find out. I won't tell them if you don't. Find out pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. 
It's for the captain of the White Dragon. Nebebe, I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. Oh, and remember to have the customer sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. Bye now. Maps, fresh detail, life-saving maps. Ahoy there, matey! Pardon? Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? No. W what do you say then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today then, if we're feeling adventurous. But never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the white dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the temple market. Aye. I be Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Sign this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Please sign it or I won't get paid. I just gave you an errand. That should be enough to cover it, I. Forget the money. That's not why I need your signature. I need you to sign so that I can keep my job and hopefully find a way home. Sorry, but it brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyenne, and we're a spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That's what this is all about. You can't write. Uh, so what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. 
Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But, no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing, but it distracts the Mojal. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... Mojal? I can't sign when there's a chance the Mojal is watching. Music distracts the Mojal. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't that mean the Mojal is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The Mojal has an eye and an ear for every acolyte. And straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the Mojal. But seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Blasphemy! Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. So, if I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second. Big surprise. This guy's selling musical instruments. Most of these I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there and what looks like half a guitar and a couple of dried rabbit carcasses. Ugh. What's your um most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Not very well, but I'm sure the, uh, Mojal won't mind. Nice day for it. Not really, no. Thanks for the chat. Aye. I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on, but don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojal will surely wreak vengeance on us both.
Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Right. Your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um... No. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn... Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? I forget. Uh, let me explain, then. Now, pay attention, because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that. Where you'll turn left. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way. Nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or the other way around. Anyway, find the Rose Bridge off uh, I Reed Avenue and cross it. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Mercuria. And that's where West House... I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Mercuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Eventually, you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tandak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrick Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the Ivory Tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall, but it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kandar. Big creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed away by the storms. <laughs> I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct.
Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, well, <clears throat> guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya for him. Sorry, I don't know who... No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... You yeah, hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glen Vintage for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now... <clears throat> What may I do for you? Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? Y you wouldn't be talking about old... Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. <laughs> I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds, where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention it, 300 years, quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home, to Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel Priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical. Those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say, I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of 
virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind. The occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India, working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown tracks. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? <laughs> it's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Hmm? Hold your horses. What are you doing working for the Guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not planning on staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. Hold on one second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but... Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's Probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. Thanks.
it's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. Cortez said something about Mr. Westhouse being the key to shifting back. Maybe... maybe there's something magical about the watch he gave me. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. If I insert this pin carefully into the hole... ...like so, and then slowly wind it... It worked! It's ticking! I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. Now you go ahead, Miss Hood, and go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. Cortez. Oh. God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. What happens now? The Minstrom told you about the balance. About Stark and Arcadia. A man named Tobias? He was called the Vestrum, I, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum give Yang good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an instrument then, a student of the balance, but he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing, and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most. But even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez. But several hundred years ago. 
So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. Or so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. I'd settle for the truth, just to be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... there are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Perdóname. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world, this world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last Guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this. But what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That, I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know. But not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disc itself. The other is the four jewels. The eyes of the dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel, 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since Steve's tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. 
They are kept by the four dragons themselves, two in Arcadia and two in Stark. The white dragon has one, as does the old one. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, Senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure. They're... Oh. That's the Vanguard? See. Then they're big. Very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... no. That will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. Then imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some Vanguard ass? Find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000-year-old disc and four dragon eye jewels? And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18, I'm an artist. No, not even that, I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. I will help you, April. Others, too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm the Chosen One. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no Chosen One, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers. That I wasn't like everybody else. True. But you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths, but unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you, but you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are and what you will be. Then the choice will have to be, yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city, 
But where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that, um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right. Okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul, at the Hope Street Cathedral, he's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait. Did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the Cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? Nothing, I'm just tired. You don't look too hot either. I mean, uh, you always look hot, but you look a little beat. A little tired. Do you mean that? About me always looking hot? <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I think you're the most beautiful girl in the world. I've told you before. I just have a hard time accepting it is all. Thanks, Charlie. You're so sweet. I have to tell you what happened to me last night. If it's about what happened in the common room, I heard. Fiona told me. Really? Freaky, isn't it? It freaked me out, that's for sure. Yeah, but I can relate. Did anyone tell you what happened here? No, what? Around 11 last night, I was working the bar. And I couldn't see how it started, but the music suddenly changed. Something, I, I don't think it was human, not from any anatomy book I've seen, at least, appeared. Some said materialized from the jukebox. It was playing an instrument. And at first, it didn't seem to notice anyone. And the second it did notice, it disappeared. In the blink of an eye, everyone saw it. And afterwards, everyone was just staring at the jukebox in complete silence. And then things just went back to normal. 
It was like they all chose to block it out. It freaked me out, too. And even though we, you and me, didn't see the same thing, I believe they are. They must be related. What the hell's going on? I don't know. My grandma would call it voodoo. But then she calls everything she can't explain voodoo. How about hallucinations? Or mass hypnosis? In two different places at the same time? Do you really believe that, April? Don't ask me what I believe. The alternatives are... Are scary, yeah. But is the fact that there are unexplained mysteries in the world any worse than the possibility someone's feeding us nightmares? If you could only... Yeah, Charlie. I think I'd actually prefer that. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. She knows about the show, so she'll be here. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon. So you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. Big surprise. I'm still here. day you didn't show up at school you weren't at work and then fiona tells me you're out looking for cortez again and on top of that zach brags about bagging a date with you what's up with that oh shit zach i totally forgot he's gonna kill me if i don't show up that is you mean it's true you have a date with that asshole i told him he was full of shit i needed some information and you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I made a promise. To that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. You're right. I'm staying here. Good girl. Now, there are a couple guys you should keep an eye open for tonight. Me? I have a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend because I have one and I need somebody to compare boyfriends with. It's not your choice to make, girl. It's just the natural order of things. I thought we were here to listen to the band. Sure. From the back. So we can scope out guys' asses. I don't know which place is weirder. Mercuria or the Fringe Cafe on any given night. Mark what? Never mind. So, okay, which guys are we looking for? Right. Now, you may want to take notes. Oh, God. Headache. I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. Not that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like, that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. He's probably royally pissed that I stood him up, and Zack's very good at being pissed. So you thought you could stand me up and get away with it, bitch. I'm sorry. What did you call me? We have a date and then you don't show? Leave me looking like a sad prick all night in front of my friends? I couldn't go, Zack. Get over it. I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. I'd call you a bastard if I didn't think you'd take it as a compliment. 
If I wasn't such a fucking nice guy, I'd smash your fucking face in, bitch. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me, April fucking Ryan. You're not a Hope Street regular, are you? I haven't seen you here before. I don't visit the neighborhood very often, no. And why should you? It's not a very nice place. This cathedral is all there's left of the hope in Hope Street. I'm sorry to hear that, Father. So am I. But we cope. We cope. How may I be of assistance? Do you know a boy named Warren Hughes? As a matter of fact, I do. The Hugheses were regulars before they traveled to the colonies. Poor Warren was left an orphan by his family. I haven't seen him for years. Where does Warren live? I'm not sure he lives anywhere. But he does belong to a Hope Street gang, the Razor Blades, I believe. They seem to conjugate just down the street in Building 87. Be careful, though. Although they're far from the worst gang around here, they're not a particularly friendly lot, and they don't care for strangers. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Still, be careful. Do people still go to church? Yes, some do. Some do. Religion is pretty resilient. Religion, sure. There's so many new religions, and people tend to abandon the old ones, don't they? They'll be back. The Voltex and the Manus of the world offer only a fleeting chance of material happiness. What they cannot offer is spiritual enlightenment. So you're not worried about the competition? We have over 2,000 years of experience and tradition to build on. I don't see us just rolling over on our backs and giving up, no. Thank you, Father. Please come by again if you're ever in the neighborhood. Can I talk to you for a minute? You know where I can find a kid named Warren Hughes? Who's asking? Shut up. Um, I am. Warren Hughes. Never heard of him. What's your name? What's yours? April Ryan. Lucky you. All right, well, I guess you can't help me. Nope. Nobody can. What do you mean? Nice, pretty girl like you in a neighborhood like this, asking all the wrong questions. You're heading for some serious trouble, you know. I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Sure you can. The thing is, 
There are four guys waiting downstairs for you to come back out, and they can take care of themselves real good. I'm not looking for trouble. Trouble found you, girl. What do you want from me? I should have asked you the same question. Except I don't care. You should have thought twice before coming after me. After you? I didn't come... So you're Warren. What? Like you didn't know? No. Cortez told me your name, where to find you, but... Hold on. Cortez? Old Spanish talking dude. Real crazy in the head? That's a fair description, yeah. Shit. You're not a cop. Social services? Corporate? No, no, I'm a... a friend of Cortez. He said to look you up. I haven't seen Cortez in a while. Not since before it. So what does Senior Cortez want with me? We need some help. What kind of help? Look, I gotta stay incognito most of the time now that corporates and cops are stepping up their search for us. I can't go risking my ass for nobody. Not even Cortez. That's all right. I just need some information on a group called the Vanguard and their leader, Jacob McCallum. Oh, sorry. Never heard of those guys. You wouldn't have. They keep to themselves, and they got some kind of cover operation going, but I don't know what it is, and... You want... need to find out? All right. Here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. You want me to risk my life for a personal favor? If you don't do this for me, I won't help you out. Besides, there's probably some information on the... the Vanguards, was it? In the archives. And that information will be valuable to my friend if he's gonna help you out. I'll do it. Smart decision. So here's the thing. My dad doped out on raps and seduced by commercials. Sold out our whole family to the shiny, happy colonization program for a lifetime supply of the big R. The Rapture. He neglected to ask his lovely wife and children, and the corpus didn't care. One day they came to pick up my mom, my sister, and me. I got away, though. Snuck out the window. I spent the next two weeks in a dumpster. And your family? That's just it. I don't know. Off to the colonies, of course, but which one? I don't know. Sometimes they split up families, too. You know, they don't tell you that in their ads. I don't give a shit about my dad, and, and my mom, she's tough. She can take care of herself, but I want my sister back. We were real tight. I'm not gonna let him use her in the mines and factories out there. So, you want me to find out where they took your sister? That's it. You're catching on. You do that for me, and delete my criminal record at the same time and get them damn corporates off my ass. I'll give you all the help you need. Where's the police station? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll come out on what they call Cop Street. You'll see the NPD headquarters down the block. You can't miss it. I'd better get going. Be cool, eh? This is Lucinda Carlisle reporting live from just outside the Metro Precinct Police Station, and I bring you today a senseless and tragic display of technology gone wrong. 
In the carnage you see behind me, medical drones are digging through the rubble of a crashed shuttle for the remains of over 100 people who lost their lives today in an accident. That could and should have been prevented. Only hours ago, a brave new World Airlines shuttle, carrying starry-eyed colonists to the Metro Tower, experienced an engine failure. And came roaring down on this street without warning, crushing three cars and burying nine innocent pedestrians and two would-be carjackers. The cause of this human tragedy? As of yet, there is no official report. We can only speculate, and speculate we will. Was the pilot drunk? Was he hopped up on Amethyn? Was someone aboard carrying a bomb? Did the manufacturers of the shuttle, Monster Limited, skimp on a part and import it from a bootleg factory in Germany? The truth could be any or all of the above. But whoever is responsible, and whatever the punishment, it won't bring any of those bloody, mangled corpses to life. It won't bring Teresa Roseman, mother of three, back to her husband, Marty. That loss is forever, and a huge cash settlement can only ease the pain. It can never remove it altogether. Only expensive brain surgery or personality modification to proprietary drugs can do that. The exact death count is still under wraps, and work will continue throughout the day to identify the thousands of body parts that are being picked one by one from the twisted wreckage of BNWA Shuttle 709. What repercussions will this accident have on our city? Probably none. You fly a shuttle, you take your chances. This is Lucinda Carlisle, reporting live for the Metro Channel Action News. Back to you, Lisa and Dan. Are we clear? How did I do? Uh-huh. And what are the ratings? Five million? That's it? Five million? Jesus, we've lost out to reruns of Gillian's Island? What the fuck, Gregory? Why the hell did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me any of that shit. You were the one who said this would broaden my audience. I, I should have stuck with the game shows. Jesus! Mission five. Hey! How do I get into the station? That is the question, is it not? Pardon? To get in, or not to get in? That is the question. Good grief, more weirdos. Oh, I'm not a weirdo. I'm an actor. No offense, but isn't that an oxymoron? Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. How do I get into the station? You don't. Not today. But I need to get in. What if there's been a crime? Good point. I guess you need to report it via one of the many kiosks installed throughout the city, or by contacting an officer of the law. Like yourself? I am but a humble servant of Her Majesty. And I'm actually assigned to Vice, so don't bother. Any chance you'll let me through? Shower me with sweet forgiveness, Princess, but unfortunately, I cannot. The doors ain't working. The doors aren't working? They're not. Good lord, I must report this immediately, after I'm done with my policing exercise. Did you say the doors weren't working? Ah, correct. The only things getting in and out of the station today are police officers, prisoners, and garbage. Aren't they all pretty much one and the same thing? Cutting words from a wench's barbed mouth? What did you call me? Hmm, sweet princess. That's more like it. How are you able to bring garbage out and prisoners in when the doors are broken? These doors don't work. But the gate downstairs does, of course. You can only get through that inside of a vehicle. The security measures are quite extreme. Like how extreme? Can you say radiation poisoning? Why were you parading back and forth like that? 
I am practicing the fine art of policing. It doesn't look like policing. It looks like acting. Bollocks! And I thought I was making progress. Maybe if you tried being a little less... rigid? Yeah, but it's this bloody suit. It makes everyone move the same way. I'm not able to release the character. Are you an actor or a cop? Both, darling. Both. I am an actor, but I will portray an officer of the law in my next motion picture. It's called Mad Cop 2. I play the Mad Cop's friend, the somewhat ticked off cop. I think I saw the first one. It stunk. I agree. But this one has a certain uh, je ne sais quoi, flair that the original lacked. You mean, more violence, more sex, less plot. That's it. So you're doing research for your next role? Indeed, my fair maiden, I am. I have been assigned to a squad to capture the essence of Her Majesty's honorable service. And what squad would that be? Vice. Thanks, and good luck. Ah. Uh, Parting is such sweet sorrow. Farewell, princess. Till we meet again, farewell. It says Calavera Crossing MCW, and the street ID number is 0092. It says Threadbare Lane, MCW, and the street ID number is 3018. It's your garden variety robotic roadblock. You see them all over this pothole infested town. There's a small control pen. The display reads 3018. Perhaps if I try entering the idea of the intersecting street, the roadblock will move.
That was so gross. The things I do to save the world, I mean that smell, that sticky stuff, the way that rat just wouldn't let go. Disgusting. <coughs> Not to mention the fact that I really, truly stink. I don't think this is ever coming off. I'm gonna stink like fish heads and moldy pizza for the rest of my sorry life. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? <coughs> Where are the archives? The archives? You're not an officer of the law, are you? I'm in training at the academy, and I need to get into the archives to... study. You're in training? Uh-huh, sure you are. <laughs> then what the hell you doing here? You should be at the academy doing push-ups and learning how to bullshit like a pro. About the archives. You're not an officer of the law, are you? <coughs> so what if I'm not? Then you can't go into the back, capiche? Cops only. Besides, half the doors in this building, including that one, are out of order. Nobody's going in, nobody's coming out. And until those overpaid, underworking <laughs> service guys get off their butts and back to work, that's the way it's gonna stay. Thanks anyway. What do you want? We're on our lunch break, honey. Why are you guys working? We're on our contractually bound lunch break. Uh-huh. Right. But you're not eating. We're done eating, sure. But we're still on our break. Clause 16 of the contract, and I quote, improper digestion may prove detrimental to further work-related activities. <laughs> End quote. Meaning what? We're letting the corned beef settle, honey. Aren't you supposed to fix the doors? That's right. But instead, you're just... sitting here. That's right. And you're not planning on getting back to work anytime soon? That's right. And you're not bothered by this? That's right. I could say anything, anything at all. That's right. And you just answer... That's right. <laughs> well, how's that for productivity? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It'd be so nice if you could fix the doors. And it would be so nice if you could go away and leave us alone. Is there anything I can do to make you go back to work? No, short of emergency. <laughs> we ain't moving our asses in the foreseeable future. What constitutes an emergency? Any event accompanied by a specific work order signed in triplicate. What kind of work order? Ah, well, you know. About the work order... Yeah? Which one? <laughs> you know, for emergencies. You mean the short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits requisition form? Uh, sure. Well... If you were to produce said requisition with the appropriate signatures, we'd be forced to prematurely suspend our lunch break, for tactical reasons, of course. Thus, allowing our scheduled work to be completed. Don't you just love bureaucracy? You what? Never mind. <coughs> Where do I go to get the requisition form? What form? The requisition form for the short-term tactical suspension of... Uh, of union member benefits. Any official office for which we perform services. <coughs> Excuse me, how do I smell? Smell? Are you coming on to me, honey? What? I don't know. Women don't usually come on to me, so I'm, I'm just checking. I wouldn't want to miss a come on. I asked you how I smelled. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, like, uh, moldy pizza and... Um, is that salmon? Smoked. Yeah. And a faint touch of rum? I had an... accident with a bottle inside a garbage <laughs> container. 
Happens to me all the time. You're not alone. In fact, there are meetings downtown every Wednesday night. I don't have a drinking problem. If you can't admit it to yourself, honey, you do. After all, who's the one reeking a rum? Not me, that's for sure. <laughs> not today, anyway. Enjoy your lunch break, guys. <laughs> With the Sunday overtime we're getting? You betcha, honey. It's a toolbox. There's a sheet of paper in here. <laughs> Some kind of requisition form or work order. <laughs> That's the requisition from last week. And what a horrible experience that was. I pray each and every night that we'll never have to sacrifice our lunch break again. You keep it, okay? Seeing that form again sickens me. Excuse me, ma'am. You again, what do you want now? I need the requisition form called Short-Term Tactical Suspension of Union Members' Benefits. All right, all right, what's the number? N number? <coughs> I need to know the identification number of that form. You know, the five-digit alphanumerical ID. Aren't those documents arranged alphabetically? <coughs> yeah, yeah, they are, but I still... Need a number. Capiche? Thanks anyway. Bokama Mercer Corporate Labor Union, <laughs> form number 09042. Short term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. It's a carbon copy of an old work order. There it is, 09042. That's the number the desk sergeant wanted. Excuse me, ma'am. You again, what do you want now? <laughs> I need a requisition form number 09042. Short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> Here you go, miss. Union requisition form number 09042. <laughs> I better forge, ooh, uh, fill out this work order first. Fix the damn doors. Sign the commission. There. <coughs> now we're set. What's this? Oh, just a jolly little requisition entitled Short Term Tactical Suspension of Union Members' Benefits. <coughs> Say what? Lady, do you realize what you've just done? You've. Interrupted our lunch break. This is an official work order. It can't be. Wait. Zero nine zero four two. This isn't zero nine zero four two dash A, is it? Uh, no. Just plain old O nine O four two dash nothing. Ha <laughs> ha! This being Sunday and all, that petition is useless. On public holidays, you need the extension dash A form. Addendum for public holidays. Us being on triple overtime and all. So? So, we're gonna stay here and enjoy our extended break. Thank you very much. Now go away. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. You again, what do you want now? I'm sorry, but I need the 09042-A requisition form addendum as well. The what? The 09042-A? Why the hell didn't you ask me for that one in the first place? Because I'm a cruel bitch and I love torturing you. In fact, I've made it my life's mission to haunt you forever and ever with requests for useless forms and documents. 
Hmm. Hold on. All right, requisition form number 09042-A. And that better be it. <coughs> okay, now we're set, I hope. Why do you keep bothering us? Don't you have anything better to do? No, absolutely not. <laughs> this is requisition form number 09042-A, the short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits, requisition form with the public holiday addendum. Balls! We've been nailed, George. Get your ass off the chair. We're going back to work, thanks to this <laughs> lovely young lady. <laughs> It's an old vid phone. Ancient, ancient technology. Visuals are so passe. <laughs> this phone, 099-120090. Good to see you up and about, George. Mister! Mister! The plane! The plane! <coughs> Good to see you up and about, George. The ants. They're everywhere. There are ants in my pants. Good to see you up and about, George. I'd love some green eggs and ham, <laughs> wouldn't you? <coughs> Are you guys gonna be done soon? Hey, who knows? This is complicated stuff, honey. <laughs> this phone, 099-12090. There's a phone call for you. For me? Who is it? I think it might be union business. Out of my way, lady! <laughs> Good to see you up and about, George. What's the deal with those spaceship dinners, huh? I mean, they taste like hospital food. There's a call for you too, sir. Me? I get no calls ever. Except from my mommy. Is it my mommy? <laughs> uh, it could very well be your mommy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks. It's a long shot, but if I try to cross these wires... You can't go back there. It's a restricted area. I need to distract her. <laughs> but how? <coughs> Let's see. What's the most difficult form to get a hold of? 
The label on that shelf says, Reporting Indecent or Rude Behavior by Bingo or BM Personnel, number 31366. Excuse me, ma'am. You again, what do you want now? I'd like that form for complaining about lewd and indecent behavior, please. Number? <laughs> 31366. Hold on. Let's see. Cola, lemon, lime, lemon lime, strawberry, strawberry lime, strawberry cola, cherry cola. Yuck! I'll go with the old standby, bingo classic. Boring, but safe. Sergeant Frank Manelli. Sergeant Russell Franco. Sergeant Ricky Mahoney. Sergeant Maria Hernandez. Hi. Who's in there? Manelli. Who's asking? God. Oh, that voice. What? Who are you? Sergeant Hernandez. Maria, thank God you're here. Listen, I need you to get my stomach medicine from the locker. Here's the key. Oh, oh God. Sergeant Manelli's been banging his locker shut one too many times. Say hello to seven years of bad luck, guy. That sure makes me feel a whole lot better about harassing him. It's broken. It's a loose shard of the mirror glass. I'll just carefully separate the shard from the mirror. Like so. I'll have to be careful carrying this around. Archives, login. F. Minnelli. Password, wife's birthday. What a smart boy. Real security whiz. medicine is flushing out my system a little, you know what I mean? It's accelerating the natural process. No need to go any further, sir. Thanks, Maria. Hey, you got a cold or something? You sound different. Yeah, a cold or... I got something, all right. How's Mrs. Minnelli doing? Why are you asking? I didn't think it... Oh, hell, Maria, we spoke about this. I told you I... Can't you just let it rest? Uh, sure, sorry. Just... wondering. I wish you wouldn't, Maria. You know how... It is what it is, you know? About Mrs. Minnelli. God damn it, Maria, I'm on the freaking can, yeah? I was just thinking, maybe I should get her a birthday present. What do you think? 
Are you nuts? Have you gone completely nuts? What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Being nice? Nice! You want Laura to kick me out of my own apartment? Is that it? You want my wife to kick me out of the apartment tomorrow? Tomorrow? Your wife's birthday's tomorrow? You're not buying her a present, Maria. Don't even think about it. That would be such a big mistake. You don't want to make a mistake like that. Okay, boss. You're the boss. Don't call me boss. And would you leave me alone? I'm not in a sociable mood. Hell, I'm on the can! Gotta go, Manelli. Thanks for your help, Maria. Phew! Jesus, I think I'm allergic to the goddamn medicine. Oh, crap, my eye! There you are. Back in your slot. Oh, God, I'm seeing red. I'm having a stroke. Maria! Maria, go get the... Frank Minnelli. And I feel really guilty doing this. I, uh, love my wife Laura, and her birthday is on the 31st of this month, which means. Laura 0731? Please, 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 please. Yes! I am so good again. Now, what to search for? I'll just make a few small changes. Nothing major. That's much better. Scary how easy it is to manufacture a saint. Presses are rolling. Now, where's the printer? Warren's sister, and that's her colonization number. I'd better remember it in case I need it. sister. Please, please let there be something. It's the only lead I have, so if this falls through, I'm at a Better get a hard copy of this for Warren. The Church of Voltec is the front of the Vanguard use here in Stark, so there must be at least some information available. Jacob McAllen. Cardinal? What the hell is that? I should keep that name in mind, though. It could turn out to be important. The so-called White Cardinal. I wonder who he is.
There's nothing in here. Oh, except for a tiny data cube. If I'm not completely mistaken, and if I remember my tech classes correctly, that's an anti-gravity control unit. It looks fully intact. How did it go? Did you get the information? Is my sister okay? It wasn't easy, but I did it. Your sister's fine. You don't have to worry about the law or the corporates anymore. That's great. That's... Thank you. Really. Thank you. So do you have the information for me? Sure, right here. Listen, Warren. Your parents... They're... They're dead. But your sister's okay. She's been adopted by some woman named Drake, a lieutenant with the Wakamba Mercer Corporation. My sister's a corp brood? And my... my parents. You know that should hurt, but it doesn't. I don't feel anything. My parents left me a long time ago. But my sister... I gotta find her. I'm sure you will, Warren. I see you wiped my record clean. That's good. I wasn't sure if you can be able to do that. No problem. I'm not too shabby with computers. So let me know what I can do for your sister. Can you put me in touch with your friend now? Yeah, for the information you needed? Right. You got it. Head on out to the Newport docks, down in the outskirts of the city. It's all deserted now since they stopped using the boats for cargo shipments. Head across the construction yard to a large garage. You can't miss it. It's got all these large tubes outside. Knock three times on the door and tell Burns Flipper, and this guy's weird, so don't mind the stuff he says. Tell the Flipper that I sent you. I'll call ahead to let him know you're coming. He should be able to help you out with almost everything you need to know, okay? Thanks. Bye, Warren. Hey, keep it cool, sister.
MTI Industrial Strength Paint Shaker. So it's a device for shaking paint, then? It's so last century. I think that's quite enough. This is volatile stuff. I better get rid of it as soon as possible. You're trespassing. You gotta leave now. Where'd that come from? I'm April Ryan, Warren's friend. I don't know anybody named Ryan, so how about fucking off? Warren called you on my behalf. Warren Hughes, you know Warren, right? Didn't I tell you to fuck off? Yeah, but... So, fuck off already. Am I stuttering here? Jesus H. Christ, you'd think that fuck off would be clear enough as it is for even a slag like you to understand. I'm not a slag. Ah, so you're a gangbanger. Baby, there ain't enough here worth shit, you know? I got no beat with your posse, so fuck off. No, no, I'm... A corp, yeah. I'd recognize a corp bitch anywhere. I'm legit, no funny stuff. Got my corp permit right here in my little hand two weeks ago. And I only do inventory by appointment, so you're gonna have to phone me up there, toots. Could you, like, shut up for just one second? Chill out! I'm April Ryan. I'm a friend of Warren's, who apparently is a friend of yours. And he called you a short while ago to let you know he's cashing in on a favor. Does any of this ring a bell? Ring a bell? Ding dong, the witch is dead. What are you, like a cliche movie chick? Yeah, it fucking rings a bell, but not the bell you'd like to hear. Think it was born yesterday? Like jacking in on a satellite conversation isn't the fucking guidebook to good corporate surveillance? Jesus! Corps always underestimate the blipper. Like I fight because I see a babe in tight pants. I don't think so. You know, if the fate of two worlds didn't depend on me, I'd tell you to go straight to hell. Did I mention blow me, baby? Did you blow me really hard? Well, you're such a bastard! Listen! I was out to arrest you. Don't you think I'd have brought an army of corporate goons? You got a point. April Ryan, huh? Shit. My channel and Warren was scrambled anyway. Top of the line African scrambler. Fucking impossible to hack unless you're the flipper. You're telling me that, that you knew who I was the whole time? Are you a psychopath or something? Or something. Sure, babe. Hey, hold on. Chill out, baby. Chill. Be there in a sec. How'd you get down here? Who the hell are you? I knocked. You let me in. We spoke only a few minutes ago. Warren's friend, April? Warren who? I don't know any Warren. Oh, Warren. Right, yeah. Fire Lizard. Zeke. He's a good supplier. The flipper likes him. Likes him good. You a buddy of his? Yeah. Oh, you his baby. Yeah. Oh, sure, I date 15-year-olds all the time. Whatever. So, what the fuck do you want? I need some information. So visit the fucking library. Or go bother the Oracle or whatever. The Flipper can't help you? That's too bad. I guess Warren was wrong about you. Yeah. Hey, what? 
What was he wrong about? About you being the best there is at getting information. Any kind of information. I guess you can't help me. Fuck yeah, I'm the best. Best there ever was, better than Chocolat. I'm the king of data streams, the emperor of the feed, baby. What kind of information do you need? I need information on a guy called Jacob McAllen and an organization called the Vanguard, or the Church of Voltec. Sounds pretty heavy. I gotta tell you, Voltex and shit, they got security, top of the fucking food chain. You got something concrete for me to go on here, huh? Besides names, names are nothing. What do you mean? Details! Gods and the Jesus is in the details, woman! There's a fucking ocean of info out there. Gotta know where to start, what to focus on, where do I begin? Give me a map! What is this place? This is the Flipper's Boutique, mademoiselle. I sell everything, from joy chips and porn cubes, strictly hardcore. Max, illegality. What would be the fucking point otherwise? The satellites and BH generators? What I don't have here, I can get, for a price. This place ain't your neighborhood S-Smart. Let me tell you, shop smart, shop S-Smart. Nah, what I got here costs moolah, mucho moolah. Are you in the market for a neutronium bomb, by the by? You got a hot one sitting in storage. Give it to you for a cool 100 million, huh? Bargain. Interested? Sure. Let me just check my wallet. No, of course not. Are you crazy? <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> what happened to your legs? Jesus, are you fucking kidding me? My fucking legs, huh? You want to know? I wouldn't have asked if I didn't want to know. That's how you took my legs, Captain Crunch. Now, answer this question for me. I'll tell you who took them. Sure. Are you a virgin? What? I ain't telling you nothing until you answer the question there, Trebek. I'm not a virgin. Good for you. Who'd you lose it to, Warren? What? No! Why the hell are you... I lost my legs when I was 18. I was doing odd jobs, breaking into high security accounts, spying, shit like that. I was hitting MTI at the time. Malkuth Technologies, big guys, big guns. So they caught me with my finger up the proverbial anus. You know what I'm saying? I was hooked up, cruising their network, when they hit me with some shit hits the fan tech. Fried my brain like breakfast sausages. Major brain malfunction. I was dead as a lesbian black chick at a Republican fundraiser. Woke up from the coma a week later. Some shit spewing goons from MTI are hovering over me. They tell me, try that again, dickhead, you die. Yeah, shit like that. Then I found out my legs are cut off. Sure, I can get some new ones, no problem. But that cost like... An arm and a leg. Ha! Get it? An arm and a leg. Shit, I'm funny. So I start building me this hovercraft chair instead. It only works in here, but I don't care. Never leave the damn place anyway. That's the story. Not a virgin. You tell me something personal? I'll tell you something personal. And the world keeps turning round and round and round again because the flipper's on board. You're... Weird. So are you. Thanks for your help, Mr. Flipper. I'm the Flipper. The Flipper. Call me Burns, yeah. Beautiful. Ha! See ya! Hey, Burns? I'll be right up! I got this data cube from the police station. Yeah, so what the hell is on it? You asked for details? This thing has details. Plenty of it, I hope. 
And you expect me to sort through this shit for you, locate the relevant information, dive into the big blue sea of corporate security and fish out whatever it is you need from the feed? Could you? Please? Shit, you're cute. But if you weren't Warren's little plaything, I'd kick you out. And hey, whatever. Hand it over and I'll give me a few minutes. Holy macaroni, you do know what the fuck you're fucking with here, yeah? You do know, don't you? These guys are the fucking epitome of uncoolness. It's good stuff, though. Precious information. I gotta hand it to you, sexy. You know what you were doing bringing this to the flipster. So, what can you tell me about the Vanguard? Is there anything in there about where they're located and how to get access to their files? Shit! Aren't you a little too eager to trot with the beast, babe? Slow down, chill. I'll tell you what you need to know. But first, take a look at this recording. Just step over to the screen there, and I'll play it back for you, okay? To join in the effort, we must charge forward into a new era of compassion, companionship, and goodwill. An era of expansion and enrichment. A golden era. We must forge a future for ourselves, our children, and our children's children that can withstand the forces that oppose us. We shall be victorious. created to do is bring spirituality back into our lives and into our world. Spirituality and knowledge. Our enemies have suppressed the truth for too long. We can no longer stand idly by while they spread their lies and their disinformation to the people of our planet. We must fight back. We must take to arms and defend ourselves against our oppressors. I am not, by nature, a man of violence, nor are you. I know that. But the time comes when all people must do their duty to protect their ideology and to preserve their beliefs. That time has come. We will do what we must to protect ourselves and our families. We will do what we must to defend our beliefs against the heretics. We will go to war if that's what it takes. Charismatic, but cold. What do you think? Your friend and mine, Mr. Jacob McGallan. Head honcho of the Church of Voltec, or the Vanguard, if you wish. Suppose a peaceful philosopher, dude. Not the case, as it turns out. Obvious Hitler complex, real Nazi wannabe. This is heavy, dangerous shit you got here, and I love it. But I thought the Church of Voltec was a peaceful religion dedicated only to meditation and philosophy. You and 20 billion other souls, Missy. This is the truth, as clear as simple as butter. Now take a look at this, on the screen again. Who's this? That's ah, a guy named Gordon Halloway. Evil looking dude, huh? Turns out he's McAllen's right hand man, runs the Vanguard's secret ops. There's a gold mine of info on this data cube. Yeah! The Vanguard have a bunch of agents that they've bred in tanks. 
Her grasp of genetic engineering far surpasses anything I've seen so far. I've seen everything. From what I can tell, the Vanguard are up against an the enemy they call the Fathers of the Sentinel. I don't know who the fuck they are, but I'll find out. Must be the good guys, though, if they're fighting these creeps. Anyhow, this guy Gordon, he was originally intended for some kind of religious duty, whatever the hell it was for the Sentinel dudes. Let's say, like, Dalai Lama or whatever. But the Vanguard kidnapped him before he was ready, and they did some shit with him, some experiments to try to use his powers, and I'm thinking this spiritual crap. It's just bullshit. But both the Vanguard and these Sentinel dudes, they believe this kid has powers, that he's destined for something very important, so when the Vanguard grab him, that's like, holy shit, fucking big deal. What kind of experiments did they perform on the child? Weird fucking thing. He's trying to control these powers he has? They fuck up big time, though. And the kid is totally screwed up. Split in half in some spiritual way. One part chaotic, the other pure logic. So now this dude Gordon, he's like the coldest motherfucker you'll ever meet, so stay out of his way. According to these documents, he'll kill somebody for cutting in line ahead of him, which I'll do too. You know, or like coughing in his own direction, which I'd fucking lop your head off for, but anyway. Now, he runs the whole dark side of the Church of vault -Tec, and I'm guessing he's next in line to take over, after old man McCallum leaves this earthly realm, which could take ages, I'm afraid, with the tech these guys got. How come the police were able to gather this much information on the Vanguard, and yet they don't do anything about it? I don't know, maybe it's routine. Maybe they want something on the bastards to pressure them when they really need to. And maybe the information just got lost in the system. The fact is, though, that with assholes like these walking among us, we're not safe. None of us. Least of all you. So please don't hang around longer than necessary. Yeah. So, okay, these guys are badasses, and I should stay as far away from them as possible. Disregarding that, however, where are the Vanguard headquarters? Uh, you're either very brave or very stupid, Chiquita. But, whichever it is, I shouldn't tell you. Why? Because I'm a girl and I can't take care of myself? No, because anybody who fucks with these guys is sure to end up with a bullet lodged in the back of their skull. Or worse. I'll take that chance. Shit! You know, I'm the flipper. The flipper. I'm not into this shit, you know. I'm strictly into sales and profit. This detective shit you're doing. What the hell is it? Why are you doing it? That's, uh... Very long story. It's some other time, yeah? I really need that information, Mr. Flipper. Okay, chill, dick smack. I got it. I got it. You see, the church has several unofficial headquarters round and about, but they're insignificant. Cover operation, basically. There's no concrete address on this data cube you gave me, but I scanned it through some online records quickly, and I discovered that the Voltex, the Vanguard, are linked to a very big company indeed. Which is? MTI, Malkuth Technologies Incorporated. Big guys, almost as big as Bokamba Mercer. Fake the hell out of me, but it looks like the head honchos of the Vanguard may be running MTI. Which is kind of funny, because I got some beef with MTI, some heavy duty beef. And now I got something to hit them back with, fuckers. What does that mean? That MTI is run by the Vanguard? It means that wherever the corporate headquarters of MTI are, you'll probably find the Vanguard elite. And do you know where the MTI corporate headquarters are located? I'm the flipper, dude! What the fuck do you think, shit? Don't answer that. Grendel Avenue. I don't know where that is. You don't know where Grendel Avenue is? Holy Christ! You're kidding, yeah? That's like the numero uno neighborhood in Newport. Only the top dogs live there. Apartments go for hundreds of millions of dollars. How do I get there? Sorry, babe. A slag like you are stuck on the ground level for all eternity. There's no stepping up in the world for you. you gotta have proper ID, top-level ID, to get to Grendel Avenue. And you don't, babe. Sorry. Hey, Burns? I'll be right up! What is it? Could you fix me up with some fake identification? Why would you want that? 
How else am I going to get to Grendel Avenue? Hey, I'm warning you, don't fuck with those Vanguard shitheads. Yeah, they bite. And I bet you they don't let go like fucking, what do you call those little fucking dogs that don't let go? Pitbull Terriers? Shit. Man, those things are nasty, fucking wicked nasty. Can we discuss the fake identification I need? Baby, I gotta tell you, it's gonna cost you cash only. You got a lot of cash? Lots of it. You better come it out of your ears, baby. And sorry, friend of a friend and all, but it ain't cheap. And I advise you to forget about it pronto. Let me worry about that. How much will it cost me? I have, like, $300. Ha! Ha ha! Try 20K on for size, shortcake. Sorry, little missy, but fake IDs cost a moolah. I need to buy a properly generated key from a connection downtown. I need an authorized blank card. You're an idiot. It don't come cheap, that stuff. Even if I cut out my profit, which for a friend of Warren's, I just may. <laughs> It'll still come to $15,000, baby. Would you consider alternative forms of payment for a fake ID? Sorry, Chiquita, that urge disappeared with my little legs. No! Oh, not that! God forbid! More like a... a favor, or something you need. Don't think I need a... Whoa! God! Shit, that gets me every time. What's up with your chair? Ah, the anti-grav control unit is fried like fried potatoes, brainiac. Ah, it'll be gone, gone, gone for a good in a few days. Final hope of my good friend, my buddy, my mate, Freaky Sales, gets me a new one before that, so it don't fall down. If I get you a new anti-grav control unit, would that get me a fake ID? <laughs> if you found a good one that actually works, and one that can lift more than 200 kilos, hey, sure. Like you're gonna find one. <laughs> Thanks. S sure. There's nothing to see here. Except for that crashed hovercraft. Nah. You see those everywhere these days. Sorry? Dime a dozen. Crashed hovercraft are a dime a dozen? Fifteen a week, ma'am. At the very least. In this city alone. But they say it's the safest mode of transportation available. Statistically, yes. Unless you're aboard one of the buggers, then your chance of survival drops drastically. What? They're the safest mode of transportation if you stay on the ground. The chances of being hit by one going down are relatively low. Thanks for ruining my trust in modern technology. We're here to protect and serve. Isn't it the other way around? Just keep it moving, ma'am. Nothing to see here. Except for you, officer. Hey, me? I always did love a man in a uniform. 
Sorry, ma'am, but I'm gay. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. <coughs> Except for the escaped convict right behind you. I'm on special duty today, ma'am. So that escaped convict will have to take care of himself. After all, who'd guard this perimeter in my absence? Uh, me? I'll be good. That was a rhetorical question, ma'am. You are not qualified. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. Except... I won't tell you again, so move along. There is absolutely nothing to see here. Nothing. Jeez, don't you people have anything better to do? <coughs> Are you feeling all right, officer? Thank you, ma'am. I'm fine. All the dust from the debris is just choking me up. <coughs> Would you like a cold soda, officer, to wash away the dust? Much obliged, ma'am. Damn! Damn it! I have to get to the service office before my suit short circuits. I feel so bad. And I love it. I saw this on an episode of MacGyver 2200. AG control unit is fastened tight with a couple of big screws. Yanking it free might damage the unit. Burns? I'll be right up! Is this what you need? Whoa! Heavy duty! That baby's worth just enough for me to get you top of the line all access ID, babe. Yeah! Hey, with this, I might even be able to zoom on out of here once in a while. Excellent! So how soon can you have the ID ready? Uh, a couple of days. A couple of days? I need it now. Oh, no, 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 no. Ain't gonna happen. Shit takes time, you know? Shit takes time. Tomorrow night at the earliest. Can't promise anything, though, but I'll certainly try for the little girl.
Staring up support for their ideas. And Arcadians, those easily misled sheep, they embrace these ideas because they prophesize change. And change is always attractive to humans. Not only humans, the Vanguard are using a tyrant to force their changes into effect. They say the tyrant have turned to religion, that they have... Ah, the tyrant. Those beasts are not much for loyalty, but promise them money and power. The Vanguard are probably ready to offer them half of the Northlands, perhaps even Mercuria itself for their services. And they have certainly wanted to put their filthy claws on that city for as long as I can remember. Yes, it's beginning to look quite bleak. What about the girl? I think she may have seen the light, finally. She does not know even half of what is going on, and if she did, I do not think she would be able to handle it. Better she does not know. Aren't you worried that the fate of the balance in our worlds is in the hands of a... a child? A simple country girl? Of course. I do my best to help her, as does the mother in her way. Still, April will be on her own soon enough, and then... Who knows? After all, she is the one. No one seems to doubt that. The Balance knows, and the Balance provides. And if the Balance believes in this girl, we should as well. Spoken as a man of true faith. But of course, Father. You're not the only one who places his faith in higher powers. Speaking of higher powers, I have to go prepare my sermon for tonight. And what lessons will be taught today? You know the usual. Sacrifice, devotion, faith. The cornerstones of any religion. Even the vanguard seem to follow these tenets. They require devotion through faith just as much as we do. Good night, Raul. Que Dios te bendiga. beautiful in here, don't you think? So quiet, so spiritual. See, I'm no Catholic, but I still like coming here to meditate, to pray if you want. If you're not a Catholic, who do you pray to? To the universe, to the balance, to the rock in this floor and, and the air around us, to you and, and to myself. What is that, Buddhism? It's life, senorita, pure and simple. So, what did you dig up today? Oh, nothing, except for everything you ever wanted to know about the Vanguard and Jacob McAllen. You got the information? You found Warren? He helped you? Eventually. It wasn't easy. But I know where to find McAllen, and I'm working on how to get there. I should be all set by tomorrow. Good news. And just in time, too. Things are not going well out there. What do you mean? The balance is collapsing, and magic is seeping through into this world. Stark is still protected by its strong currents of logic and order, but Arcadia is on the brink of war and utter chaos. Unless we act quickly, Arcadia will fall into disorder, and Stark will follow. Can't we get help? Everyone with the power and will to help is doing so. But you are so much more important than anyone else. You can travel to Arcadia to bring order to chaos. At least until we find the Guardian and return him to his realm. What about the Vanguard? We investigate your lead tomorrow, yes? If we find what we are looking for, if they have the Guardian or know where he is, then we are one step closer to victory. But we still need to find the entrance to his realm. And the situation in Arcadia is not getting any better, not without your help. I don't know anything. What can I do? By just being there, you are helping. You are strong in the balance, April. And your power flows into those you meet and helps them against the tides of chaos. Whatever you do, however you do it, you are helping. I still feel so... so helpless. I don't understand half of what you tell me, and as for the other half, I can't help being skeptical. Good. Do not trust everyone or everything and make a stand against that which you do not believe. Just be sure to accept the truth when you find it, and embrace the good in the world. I'll do my best. What are we going to do now? Tomorrow, we will visit with McAllen, 
Find what he knows and use it. Then the day after, you will go back to Arcadia. At most, we have a week. But it should be enough. As for today, relax. Be with your friends. I don't think I'll ever be able to relax again. We pay a heavy price for our knowledge, yes. But try to enjoy yourself, because the hard work begins in the morning. I will see you then, yes? Wait, wait! Where are you going to be this time? We will meet here, yes? I'm afraid I cannot go back to Venice. Not now. There are... people looking for me. The Vanguard? Yes. They know what I am, who I am. They will not rest until they have me. So we must work very fast to destroy them. Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow. Have a good night, okay? Be careful. Thank you, senorita. And you. What are you doing? Charlie? A Emma? What are you guys doing here? We locked ourselves in to wait for you. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. By the way, I think Zack was spying on you guys. I caught him leaning up against the door, and he hurried back into his room the second I arrived. He's such a loser. And he seems to have a personal vendetta against you now after what you did to him. Or what he claims you did last night. Gotta love the guy. So what's up? What's the occasion? We want to know what's going on with you, April. What do you mean? Nothing's going on. Don't lie to your best friends, that's way below you. We know something's going on, there's no point denying it. For three days straight, you've been away all day, you've been acting weird and hanging around Cortez, of all people. And then today we find out you've been up to Metro Circle by yourself? I mean, April, for God's sake, what is going on? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Try us. We're your friends. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can help. Somehow. I've been... Uh... Chosen to save the world. <laughs> Stop kidding around, April. We're serious. So am I. I told you, you wouldn't believe me. You're actually telling us the truth. What do you mean you've been chosen to save the world? As in, there's something really bad going down. I can't say exactly what, but Cortez is with the good guys, and I've been... drafted. Look, April, if you're having some kind of nervous breakdown, we'll do anything to... God, I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. Forget it! I don't even believe in myself, so why should you? I believe you, April. I've seen things these past few days, strange, inexplicable things. And my grandma taught us that there's more to this world than meets the eye. And after all, it's you saying these things. My friend, April. I've never known you to lie or even exaggerate the truth. If you believe it, I believe it. And I'm sure the same goes for Emma. Thank you, Charlie. It means a lot to me. I wish I could tell you everything, but I don't think I can. I understand. When you're ready. But if there's anything, anything at all we can do to help, well, don't hesitate to ask. There are a 
few things you could help me with. Great, what? Like I said, I can't really tell you very much about what's going on. Not yet, anyway. Tomorrow, after I've had a good night's sleep, I'll try explaining as much as possible. But there's one thing you can do for me. I have reason to suspect that somebody's out to get me, or Cortez. Who? Long story, but I could need some backup. These goons, these agents, they could be closing in, and whatever advance warning you're able to give me... We'll do our best. What do they look like? I'm not sure, but you'll know when you see them. I'm sure. Anybody suspicious around, let me know. This is kind of exciting, but you gotta tell me, what are they after you for? Did you do something illegal? Not yet. Not really. It's what I might do that they're worried about. But please don't ask me any more questions today. Just keep your eyes and ears peeled for anything weird. I need a good night's sleep, and tomorrow I should be able to tell you more. But thanks for helping me out, guys. I really appreciate it. We're all hanging out at the cafe tomorrow night, April, so you're just gonna have to join us. I promise. Now get some sleep. Sorry to tell you this, but you look totally exhausted. I'm glad we had this talk. Thanks for checking up on me, guys. Sure. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night, girl. Sweet dreams. Where's that light coming from? This is a dream I really do because if Cortez didn't open a shift, who did? And how will I get home again on my own? No dream, and I'm guessing this is Mercuria. It smells like it, like a mix between fresh flowers and cow dung. There's some kind of part going on in there. Excuse me. Hello? Hi, hello, do you work here? Do I work here? Child, I'm the owner. I own and operate the Journeyman Inn. I'm very sorry, ma'am. Your apology is more than enough for me, child. What may I do for you? Is there a party going on? Is there a... Child, do you not know? It is the Feast of the Balance. Have you never taken part in the celebration? Unfortunately, no. I'm not a party person. For as long as I can recall, the feast has lasted three whole days and nights, and everyone celebrated openly. Now, this year, there is great concern about the vanguard and their supporters. 
So this year, the Feast of the Balance is celebrated inside, behind closed doors and for one night only. There's still much food and drink. <laughs> and you are welcome to join if you so please. I don't think so. I don't know anybody here. You're not with the Vanguard, are you? No, I'm from... somewhere else. Far away. So it would seem. Well, if you feel up to it, child, you're welcome to join in the celebration. Thanks. Why do you celebrate the Feast of the Balance? You are a stranger to our customs, indeed. The Balance. You do know about the Balance, do you not? Sure. The Balance between magic and science. I know about the Balance. The Balance of all, child. Everything is in balance, and the Guardian watches over the balance and us. We celebrate the Feast of the Balance to give our thanks to the balance and to the Guardian. If our devotion to the balance falters, if we lose our faith in the Guardian, then we are inviting chaos to destroy us. This is what the Vanguard is doing. Inviting chaos. They are dangerous. What's the Vanguard doing to destroy the Balance? They are not doing anything to destroy the Balance. But they destroy people's faith in the Balance. They speak to the people, telling them how the Sentinel, the Fathers, are holding our world back. And that if we were to use the Balance to our advantage, we could return to the old ways. The ways of the ancient Earth, before the Divide. Vanguard promised the people power, and wealth, and happiness. But they intend only destruction, death. What's your name? Benrima Salman. I am the owner and proprietor of this inn. I bought it with money earned through honest trade in the Southlands. Tobacco, wine, slaves. That is where I'm from, the Southlands. I'm April, April Ryan. Well met, April Ryan. Have you come to meet someone, a handsome young suitor, perchance? No such luck, I'm afraid. I'm here more by accident than anything else. Ah, <laughs> no accident, April. Fate. Fate delivered you here tonight. You are strong in fate, are you not? What do you mean by strong in fate? You shape your own fate, and not the other way around. You are what the dark people call a we. How can you tell? I am not only an innkeeper child. I am a seer taught by my mother, who was taught by her mother before her. And so it goes back to the dawn of our world. To the dawn of magic. What's a seer? A seer? Who is someone who can tell something about people? About events? About the past and the present and the future? Just by looking at you. When I look at you, I see... I see... What? What do you see? Most people are drawn along by events. By fate. Like a carriage after a horse. Some people know how to steer the horse, to change paths at will. You are such a person, but there is more. Tell me more about my future. It is strange. I may see many paths, but they are all dark. I cannot tell much except that you are strong in fate, and strong in the balance. And you are strong in magic, too. Magic? That can't be right. I'm not... I don't know anything about magic. You do not have to know about magic to be strong with magic. If you ever learn how to harvest your talents, you will be a strong artisan. Artisan? Where have you been schooled, child? Have you forgotten your lore? 
My lord? Yeah, well, I haven't really had much use for my lore lately. The artisan is the most powerful of magic users. She is able to shape magic and to use it by force of will alone. An artist can use magic shaped by others, mold it into new magic, new art. A magician, or sorcerer, witch, warlock, can read and write incantations, drawing spells from the power of words. And the alchemist can create magic potions. He is the least of the four. Anyone with proper education can be an alchemist. The other three require some form of talent for magic. Thank you. I am at your service any time, child. I am afraid I must go take care of my guests now. Enjoy yourself. That looks like a really, really comfortable chair. Thank you, April Ryan. What? There is no time here, but there soon will be time for you and I. Time enough to be sure. You are speaking to me, April Ryan. We have spoken. I don't understand what you're... And how do you know my name? Who are you? Have we not met yet? I was sorry then for confusing you. I will be Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the Iread Council in Marcuria for a time. I think I would have remembered you if we'd met. Who told you my name? You did. You are saying your name to me, April Ryan. In this moment, you tell me your name. You question why I know your name, and you speak to me the blessings of the balance for my long journey home. Sorry, I really don't know what you're talking about. It is difficult for us too, April Ryan, to understand you. We, the Venar, are not perceiving time like your people. In this moment, we are everywhere. In this moment, we are nowhere. But there is a veil. Beyond this veil, we are not seeing, but you have. You will be seeing. You are seeing. What veil? The veil created in chaos, by chaos, with chaos. It is a dark presence in our Future, yes, future. A dark veil which hides the things that have been and will be. What's all this got to do with me? It was late. You were tired. We have talked in the morning when you come to visit me. Now you understand everything. Thank you, April Ryan. The blessings of the balance to you too. Did you just invite me to your home? I will. I did. I invite you to my home, April Ryan. My home was in the Mercuria City Green, and you will find it. In the morning, before chaos came. I am explaining everything, and you understood. It seems I've already accepted your invitation, so I guess I don't have a choice. That is what you said. Good night. You will sleep well. It's a very comfortable chair. I'll stay here until tomorrow morning if I can. No, it's the comfy chair. <clears throat> I really am getting tired. I should find somewhere comfortable to sit down. Rest my legs for a few minutes.
Wake up, child. <sighs> Sorry, I guess I fell asleep. What time is it? It is morning. We need to clean before we open for breakfast, so I had to wake you. I slept right through the party? It seems so. You did not stir even when everyone was leaving. Oh well, I feel pretty good considering. You look a little pale, but it's nothing a good porridge won't fix. Do you intend to walk about in that outfit, child? If it is day, it would not be proper. It's all I have. Come. We will find something more suited to a young lady about the city. How do I look? Well, it'll have to do for now. You do not have the most womanly of forms, but I'm certain you will fill out in time with the right diet. Thanks. Thank you for the clothes, for everything. You will have time aplenty to thank me while you are cleaning plates and cutlery, child. I'm sorry. Work? Those clothes do not come free, child. Nor does a night spent sleeping before the fire. I'm not asking much, only for a helping hand in cleaning. All right. Tell me where to start. You can start carrying in the mugs from the back room. You did good work for me today, child. More than was required. Here you are. Some coin to help you out. And keep the clothes. You seem to have grown into them already. It's a flower bed. There's plenty of room for more seeds to be planted in there. I'm not very good at this, but hey, I was born on a farm. That's gotta count for something. must be a natural-born gardener. Strangest thing, I thought I heard a voice say something about a book of secrets. That the book of secrets is now open. Something like that. Huh. Enter, honored guest. And I would have been with you presently.
Be welcome, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part. You are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Who are you? I am Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the I Reed Council in Mercuria. My people live far from here, and they do rarely visit your kind, and so I am their sole link to humans and Domari. Why is that? I alone among the Venar am able to focus on a particular moment and thread in time, and so to speak with those who flow with time, like you. How do your people perceive time? It is hard to explain. Any moment before this moment and any moment after is the same to me as this one. I have lived already and I am yet to live. Do you understand me? I think so, but how's that possible? Everything is possible, April Ryan. There is magic and there is science, and between the two, everything is possible. Can you see the future? To me, every moment is the same. There is no future. I can relate moments you have yet to see, and I can unravel possible threads. But remember, the future I see may not be the one into which you walk. Moments and threads fluctuate, change. I can remember things that have never come to pass, and I have seen things that will never be. So you can't tell the future? I would see your possible futures, the likely threads among hundreds. If there was not a veil in time, I would. What's this veil you keep talking about? Somewhere ahead, in our path, there is a dark veil through which I cannot pass, past which I cannot see. It is disconcerting to me to be blocked from the moments of my life. How did this veil come to be? It was, no, will be created in chaos, by chaos, to keep the future hidden. All threads converge on a single point here, beyond the veil, and this will happen only once it is written. Written? Where? In the prophecies. Tell me about the prophecies. Words have been written by seers who can discern from all possible threads the threads that are certain to be woven. These words are the prophecies. And what do the prophecies say? Prophecies speak of a time when the balance will falter, weakened by the assault of chaos and its servants. The moment the veil falls is the moment of uncertainty. The balance may stand, the balance may fall. I cannot tell which it will be, and I cannot even see the possibilities, the threads extending from each fork. But the prophecies also speak of a savior, as the prophecies usually do. One who will bring order to chaos, only to release chaos on the innocent. 
one who will restore the balance, only to finally break it. That doesn't sound like a savior. The word in my tongue is Kanang La. Literally translated, it means the small seed who grew to a tall tree. I need some help in my quest. Yes, you did. I did? And what did you answer? That I will help you as much as I can, but in the end... I'm on my own. I've heard that one before. What do you know about dragons? I do not know much about the kin, but I do know a little. Perhaps it will help you. Perhaps not. The Dryak kin came to this world a very, very long time ago. Before the dawn of man, before the divide. The Venar had yet to learn to be outside time, and there were few other peoples on Earth. The kin played an important part in the divide, in separating magic from science and in the founding of the Fathers, the Sentinel, to watch over the balance. It is said that after the divide of the four Dryak kin that came to Earth, two went to Stark, and two to Arcadia. But that was a long time ago, twelve thousand of your years. I do not know what has become of them since. You don't know where I may find these dry kin? No, the white of the dry kin, the mother, has, according to legend, been sighted. The tale of the silver spear of Gorimon speaks of the mother and her child. Though I think this is but a tale, and far from the truth. The story is called the silver spear of Gorimon? Yes, unfortunately, I do not have this book myself, and I do not know of anyone who does. What about the other dragon, the other dry kin? Of the dry kin, I only know of the mother, the white of the kin, although I have heard tell of a god who fell from the sky into the ocean a great long time ago. But this may also be just a tale. What else do you know about this god who fell from the sky? Only what I have told you. Someone with greater knowledge of the ocean and the creatures that live beneath its surface may be able to tell you more. Have you heard of a disk that works as a key to the Guardian's realm? Yes, but very little. It has been spoken of in the I Read Council only recently, brought to attention by the Tyran Ambassador. He wished to know where it is kept. And what was the answer? No one at the Council knows or admitted to knowing, and the Ambassador was asked to speak with the Sentinel, which he is unlikely to concede to. The Tyran are allied with the vanguard, and so are in political and ideological opposition with the Sentinel. I know Vestrum Tobias. He would not speak a word with the Tyran, nor the vanguard. Not unless it was to challenge their philosophies. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. Do you know anything about a rift leading to the Guardian's realm? I have heard speak of such a thing. I believe it was where the tower was built and the divide created. When the earth was one, it might still be open. Any idea where it is? I am afraid the Venar were never very involved in the affairs of the Sentinel, nor took any part in the Divide except to agree to the necessity of it. We had little choice but to concede. 
We are a magical people. We need the balance because we would not, could not survive without magic. How would I go about fighting chaos? You cannot fight chaos. It is not so simple. To oppose chaos, one must return order to that which has been affected by chaos, and thus reduce its powers. But this is not something everyone can do. Only those ordained by the balance can embark on such a dangerous task and survive. That's about it for now. I am glad I could be of assistance, April Ryan. Thanks for your hospitality, Obnaxus. Goodbye. Blessings of the balance to you, April Ryan. And may your journey have been a long and fruitful one. Good morning, Tobias. Why, it's April, my friend from Stark. Have you come to visit us again? So it appears. I didn't exactly come here by choice this time, though. Oh? How so, if I may ask? In a weird and twisted way, it's nothing out of what's become the substitute for ordinary in my life. One second I was in my room in Newport, the next? I was in a dark alley in Mercuria. You must have opened a shift while you were sleeping. Good. This means you are learning to harness your magic. Yeah, I guess, except I don't think I'll be able to get back home again. And this time, my mentor, Cortez, has no idea that I'm here. Ah, but I'm sure you will find a way to channel and control your power soon. In the meantime, is there anything I can do to help? I need help getting back home. Unfortunately, I'm in no better state today to help you shift than I was the day before yesterday. You are the one with the talent, and so you must learn to use that talent. I need to locate the disk that unlocks the Guardian's tower. The disk that is the key? Yes, it is needed. It might even restore balance, provided the new Guardian accompanies it to the tower, of course. But you wish to find the disc yourself? I have to. Cliché or not, it's our only hope. You uh, do this often, then? You know, save worlds? It's an expression. Heroism in my world is more of a cliché than anything else. I do not understand, but then I am merely a servant of the balance, while you are... more. But yes, the disk. As I told you once before, when the Earth was divided, and the realm of the Guardian created, a disk was forged in the Well of Making. The disk was to serve two purposes, as a key to the Tower of Balance should it become necessary to enter it in the Guardian's absence and as a replacement for the disk that is already in the tower should it be broken. The tower is now abandoned and locked, and the old disk shattered. I do think the time is right for the second disk to be brought forward and used. Where is the disk now? At first, more than 12,000 years ago, it was kept in the open, at the Sentinel Enclave outside Marcuria. However, when thieves attempted to make away with a disk, it was taken away. Why? 
so that the four parts of the disk could be divided amongst four of the magical people of Arcadia, people who would have nothing to gain from the balance being compromised. What people were the disk divided amongst? This I cannot tell you. I am not sure anyone remembers now. But it would be in the scriptures, I am certain. What scriptures? The scriptures of the balance. There are thirteen of them. Thirteen is a strong number, rich in tradition, and... Did you know the Ired High Council consists of thirteen ministers? No, of course you don't. Thirteen was also the number of the fathers who begat the Sentinel, and who built the Tower of Balance. Where can I find the scriptures of the balance? Pay a visit to the Sentinel Enclave, located outside the city to the east. The great library of the Enclave contains every book ever written by an Arcadian Minstrom, and most others as well. Speak with Minstrom Yerin, the keeper of books. Tell him I sent you. I need to find the entrance to the Guardian's realm. There is one. You are right in that, but where, I would not venture to guess. In the past, when the time came for the Guardian to step down and another to take his or her place, the Guardian opened a gateway wherever it was needed. A Guardian, still in full control of the balance, can invite anyone in, and let anyone out. But with the Guardian gone, the only way in would be the point where the Divide was first created where the tower was built. Isn't that location written down somewhere? Remember that this was done on the old Earth before the Divide. After the Divide, after the creation of Stark and Arcadia, places were shifted about. This entrance may not even be on the ground anymore. What do you mean? It could be up there, in the sky, or far below us through the crust of the earth into the molten depths below. I cannot say, and I do not know anyone who could. Isn't there any way to locate the entrance to the Guardian's realm? Perhaps with careful investigation of the old texts, histories of Arcadia, of the Divide, the scriptures. I do not know, April, but it cannot hurt to look. Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. I need to locate the two dragons that reside in Arcadia. The Drykin? What's the difference? Dragons is a word from your world. The kin are not what they have become in your legends and fairy tales. But they're real, aren't they? Oh, as real as you and me, April. And old. They have been here since before our time. As you probably remember, the kin were instrumental in the Divide, saving mankind from a terrible end. But I know so little. Only what I can remember from my studies when I was a minstrel at the Enclave. How can I get more information on the dry kin? Books, daughter, books. The wisdom of the ages. There is one tome you should study, called The Secrets of the Dry Kin, by Minstrom Elniak. It is old but informative, and it captures the imagination. Where can I find this book? Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. Thank you, Tobias. Good to know I could help you, April.
Hi there, Mr. Westhouse. I'm back. My word. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to return to this godforsaken place? You were lucky to escape the first time, but now you're really pushing it. It's not that bad a place, or else you wouldn't stay here. Besides, this time I didn't exactly come here by choice. I stay here because I'm a true masochist, Miss Ryan. And who forced you to come? Was it Cortez? He doesn't even know I'm here, unfortunately. No, I think I had some kind of accident with my so-called powers. I shifted in my underwear. No, ha! Huh. <laughs> Isn't that the way it is, though? We always cross the rift at the most inopportune times. <laughs> Care for a drink? Oh, no, no, that's right. You, uh, don't. <laughs> Would you mind helping me with a few questions? I have nothing better to do, so shoot. Did you ever hear a story about a god who fell from the sky? Stories aren't my thing, April. You should visit a library. I'm sure you'll find some stories in the books. I know the Sentinel have a library somewhere near the city. I've also heard rumor of a people with wings who do nothing but observe and record history through stories. But I don't know if that's all it is. A rumor. Still, if you're looking for stories, it may be wise to check it out and see if you can find them. I'm looking for a disc that will open up the Guardian's realm. That's religion, Miss Ryan. And the only things I worship are whiskey, a good cigar, and a nice long... <clears throat> anyway, don't ask me about all that uh, balance mumbo-jumbo. Would you be able to tell me where I could look for the entrance to the Guardian's realm? In Tobias's pants, <laughs> if he had his wish, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know anything about the Guardians. Balance, or Sentinel, or gardening. <laughs> now, if you're interested in bullfighting, I could talk all night. Bullfighting's a horrible act of cruelty to animals, and not much of a sport at all. I'll just forget you said that, Miss Ryan. If there's one thing I miss about Stark, it's bullfighting. You'll be happy to hear, then, that they abolished bullfighting hundreds of years ago. Damn. Do you know anything about dragons? I try to stay out of the affairs of the kin these days. What precisely do you wish to know about the damn beasts? There are two dragons in Arcadia, and I'm trying to locate them. Yeah, I've heard that tale myself, but no, no, I don't know anything about it. You'd be better off speaking with the Sentinel Minstrum. After all, religion is their specialty, not mine. What did you say about the flying people? They're supposed to be great storytellers, and they've been observing this world for a very long time. But it could only be a rumor. I can't think of any more questions for now. Then let's talk about other things, shall we? Thanks, Mr. Westhouse. Anytime, April. Come back if you're homesick and you feel like talking to a fellow alien. a circular hollow about 20 centimeters across and about five centimeters deep. It's some kind of sandstone, very malleable, but also very vulnerable to the elements. These cliffs probably have huge, naturally formed caves and tunnels.
notice me. I didn't hear you come in. Uh, by the way, you haven't seen volume six of the complete annotated history of the Northlands, have you? I, I could have sworn it was here yesterday. Sorry, no. I guess someone else must have taken it. <clears throat> I try to tell them to write down what they borrow on the list, but they never listen. Only last week I spent three hours searching the entire enclave for the second scripture of the ballads, the scripture of song, before I realized that Vestrum Tobias was studying it back in the city. Now, such incidents could be avoided if only, and uh, this applies to you too, young lady, people would sign out the books they borrow when they borrow them and sign them back in when they're done. Such a simple procedure. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds to jot down your name and the name of the book you borrow. It makes my job so much easier. Uh, now, which book did you want me to find for you? Are you Minstrom Yaren? Yes, of course. What a silly question. How would I know? I don't know you. I am Minstrom Yerin, keeper of the great library of Mercuria. In fact, this is the greatest library of all the Northlands. Perhaps of the entire world. Although they say the Dark People have a library as big, if not bigger, than this one. But of course, we're not allowed anywhere near there. Have you been there? I don't think... What a silly question. Of course you haven't. You're not of the Dark People, are you? You don't look like any Dark People I've ever seen, so I can't see how you could possibly... Now, where did Volume 6 disappear to? Hmm? Tobias said I should talk with you. Tobias? Uh, Vestrum Tobias? I haven't seen him for... Well, he was in last week, but before that it must have been uh, days at least. How is he? Is still eating enough for two mules? I must tell you of this funny story I heard the other day, of how Vestrum Tobias eats enough for a table full of Minstrum. Uh, or was it one Elguan? Although the Elguan don't, as a rule, eat very much at all. Did you know that the Elguan can smell water more than half a day's journey away? Amazing, amazing creatures, perfectly suited for life in the desert. The balance provides, uh, that's for certain. The balance provides. Vestrum Tobias recommended that I look at some books. Uh, books is what we do best here at the Enclave, that is for certain. Which book would you like to see? I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? Are there any books about flying people who observe and tell stories? Winged storytellers, hmm? Uh, let me see what I can find. Hold on. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. The island of Elias, near the Briston Atoll. Maybe I should try to go there. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Oh, 
Oh. oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I need to find out which four magical people of Arcadia were given a piece of the stone disk that serves as the key to the Guardian's realm. The stone disk of the balance, yes? Yes, yes. There, there could possibly be something on that in... Uh, um, uh, let me check. Just one moment. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I'd like to learn more about dragons, about the dragon kin. Oh, yes, yes. We have some wonderful books on that topic. Stay here. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. I look like a serving maid.
Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. It's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for a story called The Silver Spear of Goriman. Yes, a fanciful tale if I ever saw one, but a charming one. Did you know that I'm often paid visit by adventurers wishing to read everything available on the spear so that they too could set out on their foolish quests? Yeah, don't you just hate those adventurers? Well, they pay for my bread, milk and butter with their contributions to the coffers, so I shouldn't be too critical of them. Uh, but they care not about the books, they care only about what the books can give them. I care. About the books, really? I can tell. So, the Silver Spear of Gurimon, then? I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. A book on the history of Mercuria would be interesting. Ah, an extensive subject, to be sure. I will do my best.
I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'd like to read some Arcadian folk tales. A favorite topic of mine. I have just what you're looking for. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read.
Are you done? Let me take that back for you. How are you today, then? Like you care. Do you know anything about a god that fell from the sky into the sea? Of course. You find fallen gods most everywhere these days. They're an air and a hand. Really? No, of course not. There are no fallen gods in the sea. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? If the sea was full of gods just lying about the sea bit. So you've never heard of such a thing happening? Now you got it. Do you know the island of Elias? The vacation paradise of the ancient Dalmari? Certainly. How do I get there? It's near the Briston Atoll, but boats rarely travel directly to Briston from Marcuria. You'd have to travel via Guienne. Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? Yes. Is it flapping? What? Is it flapping? Is the sail flapping in the wind? Um, no. And why is that then? Because... because it's not windy? Exactly. Well, can't you just use oars or something? Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't we think of that? Of course, oars! By Jaws' stunted left arm, that's it. Why have we been moored to the dock for a month with our merchandise dropping in value when we could have just rowed our way to Guillen? Are you being sarcastic? Sarcastic? Me? What in Jarl's name makes you think that? Can you give me a lift to Guyane on your ship? There are three problems with that scenario. Number one, there's no wind, so we can't set sail south. Number two, I lost my navigator a few weeks past, and I have yet to find his replacement. And number three, you're a woman. We don't let women on board the White Dragon. Isn't that a bit sexist? Sexy is just what I worry about. What with a boat full of men being out at sea for months at a time? Not sexy, sexist. I'm a sailor, girl. What do you expect? Good bedside manners? 
I'd really appreciate it if I could hitch a ride with you to Guyen. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry. How long's it been since the last win? Near a month. Ever since that accursed alchemist put some kind of spell on the wind. The Mojal be cursed if I know why. But it's a bloody catastrophe. I've sent some good people of mine up north to deal with him. But not one has returned. Now the A-Reed High Council speak of sending an entire army platoon to sort him out. But I'm afraid that just might piss him off. Who's this alchemist who cast a spell on the wind? I believe his name is Clax. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere up north, beyond Riverwood. Bye. Hello, old man. I got me no treasure, and I got me no map of no buried treasure. I just be an old sailor with no ship, so leave us be. What are you doing? Mending nets, of course. What it look like I be doing? I'm not well versed in maritime customs. Mar what? Ah, yes, mean sea life, dear nut. Ah. The smell of the salty sea, the lapping of waves on your ship, the spray of cold water on your face, plump maidens in every part. I, I tell yous, I be having stories about the sea. Care to share some of your maritime stories with me? Matter what? Ah, tales of the sea, right? Sure, sweetie, I'd be happy to. Now, what stories be I wanted to hear, then? Any tale of your exciting adventures will do. Aye, I'd be having plenty of tales to tell. There'd be the tale of me adventures in the Bakshivan Empire, if you'd be interested. It'd be a tale of grand romance. Just up your alley, be sure of it. Sure, that sounds like a fine story. Aye. It'd be near on fifty years ago that I was a mate on a sturdy old lady called the Three-Legged Whore. The what? What do I be saying? She was called the Thrifty Horse, she was. Aye, that be her name. The Whistle What's It. Ah, uh, you don't remember the ship's name, do you? Ah... Uh, anyways, I be a young mate then, and we be anchored in Mount Herba, the grand western port of the once glorious Bakshivan Empire. I be having ship leave until the following evening, and it be me first visit to that exotic and dangerous port. So I sits out to have a look around. Now, bear in mind that Mount Herba be ruled by a mock, like all large Bakshivan cities. In principle, the mock be having to report to and pay half of all taxes to the emperor in Port Altaban. But with the Bakshivan Empire having all but crumbled into pieces, the provinces do be having the power to do pretty much as they be wanting. Err. And so I sets out on me own that day to explore the city. Now, bear in mind that all the cities are the Southlands. And that be me adventures in the once glorious empire of Bakshiva. And that be how I meet me bird bird. How I see Deuce and the romance the mock's daughter. How I be chased from Mount Herba by the mock's soldiers. And how I be the first man to walk across the desert of Shangagriel, the wastelands, and how I be getting this awful rash on. Ah, girl, you do not be sleeping, do you?
What? 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 Sleeping? N no, 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 no. Just concentrating really hard. Arr. Good story, though. Solid, solid material. Ever considered doing a book? Aye, but the agents in Marcuria be bloodthirsty vampires with no thought but to milk your life's blood. Oh, so they take an outrageous commission then? No, they actually be bloodthirsty vampires with a penchant for biting your neck when you ain't be looking. Huh. What have you got in that chest? What chest? The one you're sitting on. Oh, that be no chest, girl. That be me stool. I me stool, carved into the uncanny likeness of a chest. But what's in it? No priceless treasure, that be for sure. Nothing, nothing at all. It be empty. No, really. What's in the chest? Oh, live snakes. Aye, snakes that'll bite your face off before you have time to jump. Better leave them be, then. I'm still curious about that chest. Right, right. I be telling you, curse the balance, girl. You never give up, do you? I be having no real treasure in here, like I told ye. Be where I keep me personal articles and things I be picking up now and then on me travels. I me bed, it's where I be keeping me bed before I be losing him. I be a stupid, stupid old man. He be my best friend. I ain't nobody else around to talk to, you see, on account of him being a talking bird. What happened to your talking bird? I be he cheated out of him. I that cups handler on the marketplace be cheat me in a full game of cups, and I be having to give me bird up to try to win me money back. And what happened? He be taking me bird when I be choosing the wrong cup. I my best friend taken from me. Cursed to be the balance. It be all lonesome now. The worst part is that me bird is now a prize to be won. A prize in a cups game. Eat the handler thrice and you win a prize of your choice, me poor bird. What's your bird's name? Bird. Oh. Do you know how I can get passage on a boat going south? Aye, coin be the way, as me beloved wife always be saying. Course she'd be running off with a wealthy merchant while I be away at sea. Women, never trusted one I didn't pay for again. I don't have much coin at all. And I be at a loss, as do ye, unless... I need coin to travel in a boat, unless... what? Unless I be calling in a favor with the good Captain Horatio Nebeve, who be traveling to Gayen as soon as the wind be picking up. What kind of favor? Oh, he be owing me from back when I was his captain. Would you cash in your favor with Nebeve if I got your bird, bird back? Aye, I be promising anything to get me friend back. It be a deal. Do you know the island of Elias? Aye, I be knowing lots and lots about the feared island of Elias. It's feared? How? Because, because it be a place of cannibals. You really don't know anything about the island of Elias, do you? Uh, no, I do not. I'd better get going. Ah, you young'uns who be always running around. Everything be so important. He's been having no time to sit down and take a breath. So go, be not wasting your time here with me.
Hey, you! What's going on? Why didn't you deliver any maps yesterday? I wasn't around. Sorry. Well, there are more maps to be delivered, and my customers are getting very impatient. Did you deliver the map to the rolling man? Yes, sir. All right, let me see his signature, and I'll give you your next delivery. Here's your next delivery, a map of the Northlands to a ton Lyak, staying at the Journeyman Inn. And be quick about it. She's been waiting since the day before yesterday. Want to test your skill and perception with a game of cups? There are prizes to be won! What can I win? Well, there's coin, of course. Double your bet or choose from a wide variety of exotic prizes. Like this antique Domari canter from Guienne. A superb replica of Mount Tyrone, cast in pure solid iron. A magic walnut from the once glorious island kingdom of Anciel. And this, um, unique bird. Get me out of here! Keep your beak shut, you scraggly piece of... <clears throat> and he talks! Great for feasts and for the amusement of infants. He's our top prize, a real keeper. How do I play? You put your coin down on the table. I put a cup on top of it and shuffled it around with the other two cups. And all you have to do is guess which one hides your coin. And remember, no magic used, and none allowed. This amulet right here will light up if you use magic. Then you'll be banned. For life! Okay, let's go. Just place your bet, <clears throat> investment, on the table and the game will begin. Here's my coin. Now, how do I play? I place one cup on top of your coin, like so. Then, I shuffle them, like so. Now, you guess which cup hides your coin. If you get it right, you win another coin. Three in a row, and you win a prize. Nothing happened. Hey, that cup moved. It's gotta be this one. Uh, that's... That's correct, but... That's... You used magic, didn't you? You used your magic wand. Nah, your amulet didn't light up, did it? No, but... But... It's impossible! Because you use magic yourself? Because nobody's supposed to ever win your game? They have a name for people like you, sir. Con artist. What? I'm outraged! I'm... I'm... Outraged! Whatever. I want my prize. Prize? You don't get a prize for winning once. Especially when you're cheating. You cheat. You want me to call the city guard? I demand a prize. Oh, by the gods of gambling. Here, take this and leave me be. A calculator? Where did you get this? Oh, I don't know. Wanted off some guy who got it from someone else who's supposedly been in stock. It's a worth... I mean, it's a valuable souvenir from the mysterious and elusive world of logic. Now, would you please let me be? Let someone else play. Yes. I'll make a trade with you. My screwed... 
My magic wand for one of your prizes, and then I'll leave your game alone. What's the catch? No catch. You get a screw... Magic wand, and I get one of your... exotic prizes. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Which prize would you like? The talking bird. <laughs> that scraggly heap of... A fantastic choice, young lady. Hold on a second and I'll get him for you. A fantastic choice, and I really, really mean that. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Did the old man send you to get me? I guess he did. My name's April. Oh, God. Is there no escape? I mean, not that I like being cooped up in a cage for gamblers to gawk at and children to spit at all day, but give me a break. It's better than being locked away in a stinking chest. Thanks a whole bunch for rescuing me, April. You're welcome. No, 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 hey, hey, that's not what I meant. I was being sarcastic. Do you know what sarcastic means? Speak all tongue? Yes, yes, hmm? No, actually, I don't. I speak English. English? English? I don't know where you're from, lady, but you're weird. Okay, so let me go already, all right? Enough with the I'm human so I can boss the bird around shtick. We're all impressed. Sorry, I promised the old man I'd win you back. I need a favor from him badly. Yeah? So what's so important you'd sacrifice a bird's happiness and well-being? The fate of two worlds, billions of people, and the balance. Yeah? Yeah? So... No, oh, forget it. So we have always just bird? Or did you have a better name? No. It's always been bird. My full name is That Damn Bird. I learned that when I was two weeks old. That damn bird, the old man would say. No good ball of feathers. Then he beat me with a stick. Really? Uh, no. He'd just stick me in the chest and forget about me. Which is almost as bad as beating, believe you me. I'm sorry to hear that, bird. You know, if you were my bird, I'd call you Crow. Yeah, well, I'm my own bird, lady, and I don't... Crow. You'd call me Crow? That's a pretty good name. It's a proper name, at least, not just an insult. Anyway, I guess I'd better get you back to your master bird. He's pining for you. All he's pining for is coin to gamble with. It's really none of my business. Sorry. <laughs> sure you are. Here's your bird. Bird. Sir. It wasn't easy, but I got him back. I sure hope you're grateful. Bird. Blessed be the balance, me faithful friend and companion be back. No, 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 not back in the chest, not in the chest! How can you help me get passage on a ship? I, I be a man of me word. Speak ye with Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, the ship behind yous. Tell him Umbrianos be sending yous to cash in on that old favor he be owing me. Thanks, old man. I.
Hello. Uh -huh. You know old Umbrianos, don't you? The old drunk? Aye, he'd be a good captain once. But ever since he lost his ship, he hasn't been much worth to anyone. Be that as it may, you do owe him a favor, right? Aye, that I do. He saved my life more than once. And I wouldn't be captain of this beautiful lady if it weren't for him. Guess what? I'm here to cash in on that favor. I'll be damned. What did you do for the old geezer? Promise him your hand in marriage? Don't you mind that, old boy. Just get ready to sail south. You're giving me a lift to the island of Elias. I mean, since you're already heading for Gien. I am? That could prove a little tricky. How come? For one, there is no wind. That accursed alchemist up north has put some kind of spell on the wind. Clax, I believe his name is. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere beyond Riverwood. As long as he's got his dirty claws on the wind, this vessel ain't going nowhere. Then there's a little problem with my crew. I can't very well leave the harbor without a navigator. And my last one decided he didn't much care for the sea anymore and went off to marry a serving maid. But, okay. Let's say I manage to free the wind and find you a new navigator. Then will you drop me off on Elias? <laughs> you think you will be able to defeat Clax, free the wind, and find me a new navigator? By Jal's pus filled left eye, if you do such a trick, then I. I'll take you wherever you wish to go. Most likely they'll be holding your funeral within the week, girl. <laughs> Just leave the madman be and let the army deal with him. Never you mind, as long as you keep your promise and take me to Elias. What's with Elias, anyhow? It's been deserted for hundreds of years, ever since the Dulmari fell victim to the Great Plague. I need to visit the Elation people to listen to some of their stories. As if there aren't enough stories here. <laughs> It takes all sorts, that be for sure. Do you always travel like you got a two-headed Vesperian nymphate on your tail? I couldn't keep up half the time. Crow, is that you? Of course, there was that pair of stunning Robin Redbreasts. Twins, did you know? Not as if I could just leave them without a kiss or two. Or twelve, as it turned out. Eh... <sighs> Maybe I'm just out of shape after being stuck in boxes and cages and knapsacks for the past 20 years. I guess it is you. Of course it's me! How many birds do you know with both good looks and a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor? No, oh, funny. Nah, <laughs> that's funny. What are you doing here, Crow? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? How about a nice to see you, Crow, or I've missed you so much, Crow, or at least a glad to see you out of that chest, Crow. It is nice to see you, Crow. How did you escape? 
cunning, milady. Of course, that keg of Andrigan stone liquor the old geezer got his hands on didn't hurt. I've never seen such a shameful display of public drunkenness in my life. Well, not since the last time I had a thimble full of wine. Phew, boy, were those ladies in for a surprise. When they were told I could talk, I'm sure they didn't count on my encyclopedic knowledge of Dolmari obscenities. The old man was gonna gamble me away again, you know. Went straight back to the cup handler after the, um, celebration. So, I decided to split before they put me back in a cage. That place was like a prison without the amenities. And let's not even mention the food. Did you ever try roasted El Guan Dung? Ugh, pooey, duh, don't, ever. So, I pecked a button here and some soft tissue there and fled. I had nowhere else to fly, so I decided to join you on your, uh, quest. It sounded like a spot of good old-fashioned fun. Like a bird's own adventure. It's not as if I came after you because I like you, though. You don't have any feathers. Thank God for that. Okay, if you want to join me, I wouldn't mind some company. I'm guessing you'll be using your wings, though, and not your feet? The ground's no place for a free spirit like myself, baby. Besides, I hear there are a lot of good-looking birds in this forest. And let me tell you, they don't parade about on the ground like winged chickens. Just try to slow down once in a while. Let me catch up. Sure. But how do I get your attention if I need to talk to you? Can you whistle? Like this? <laughs> Sorry. But wait a second. I got a little flute. I could use it to call you. I'm not a sheepdog. Let's get that straight. You play your tune, and I'll consider your request. I won't be flapping to attention like a tame soldier hawk. Deal. We better get moving, though. It's getting late. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll try to keep an eye out ahead in case there's... trouble. Oh dear, oh dear me. Please, human, don't kill me and skin me. I haven't even sung to the soil yet. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Oh my, that is good news. Very good indeed. Who are you? My name's April. What's yours? In my language, it's Bandu Umana Banta Au Rubana Bitana Benort. It means the little one who tries hard to live up to his father who sings to the soil. That's a mouthful. So, um, what do I call you? You can call me Ben Bandu, the sad little one. Banda is the name of my people. We are the little ones. Why are you sad, Ben Bandu? I'm looking for my brother. He's been gone in the forest for many days, and I've not heard him sing to us. Our people don't walk about the forest much. It's too dangerous for us. You haven't seen my brother, have you? He's short, about my height, with a tan coat and a mischievous glint in his eye. You're the first mole. The first Banda I've met. Oh dear. I hope he's all right. A lot of our people have disappeared this summer. What happened to the Banda that disappeared? We don't really know. But there's something evil in this forest. Something that doesn't like the Banda. I shouldn't be out here looking, but I must find my brother. If I see him, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. Aren't your people called the Mole People? That's what the city dwellers and farmers call us. They say it with sharp tongue. Moles. Dirt diggers. They don't like us very much. 
Our given name is Banda, the little ones. Or the Banda Banta, the little ones who sing to the soil. How do you sing to the soil? When we're old enough, and we found our voices, we just sing, and the earth shapes itself to our needs. We live in harmony with the earth, just like the birds do with the air. Good luck on your search, Ben Bandu, sad little one. And the best of luck to you, April. Please, if, if you see my brother, tell him to come home. We're all so very worried. Hey, Crow, would you mind doing me a favor? I was having this tete-a-tete -tete with a pretty young sparrow, but hey, Crow at your service. Did you say favor? Oh, sure thing, unless it's something extremely... No, no, make that even remotely dangerous. I don't like dangerous. Not at all. Just scout out the forest from your vantage point. See if you can find Ben Bandu's brother. Ben who? The mole I just met. I thought you were supposed to be watching me. Didn't you pay attention? No. Uh, mole, you said. They're savages, a lot of them. You eat birds, even. Crow, I eat birds. You probably do, too. Hmm, yeah, I love a roasted duckling in a tangy orange. Oh, uh, well, yeah, 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 I see your point. Looking for a lost mole, then, are we? Yeah, and they're called the Banda. I never got into that whole PC thing. It's not Tyrox, it's the tyrant. Don't say chicks say birds. Don't say birds say women. I don't know. It's all a little too complicated for a simple man of the air like myself. Just go look for the lost mo- the lost Bandu, okay? Yes, ma'am. Oh, please, pretty lady, pretty, please help me. I've fallen and I can't stand up. What happened to you? Oh, I was out picking bones, uh, berries, berries for my stew and flowers. Yes, pretty flowers. Then I tripped over a big old root and twisted my ankle. It hurts so. Please help me home, pretty lady, please. Where do you live? I live not far from here, not far at all. No, help me home and I'll cook you a fine stew, I promise. Yes, I promise. Just help me home and I'll reward you for your compassion. Yes, you'll have your reward. Who are you? Oh, I'm nobody, nobody at all. Just a frail old woman picking bones. Berries, picking berries for her stew so she can feed her prisoner. Guests, feed her guests and fatten them up for the long winter. Why do you keep swallowing your words? Oh, because I'm just a frail, old, forgetful woman, yes. All right, I'll help you home. Oh, yes. Thanks, plump little Trish. A nice, pretty girl, thanks.
I still need your help, Lumpud. <laughs> pretty girl, I can't walk all the way home by myself, you see. Help me home and I'll cook you. A good, thick, creamy stew. Yum, I'm getting hungry myself. Let's go. Lead the way, ma'am. Yes! Let's go. Come on, just follow me, my sweet treat. <laughs> the old woman seems capable of walking on her own, strangely enough. Maybe she just needed some uh, encouragement. Come in, come in, honored guest. I'll just check on my stuffing. On uh, my stew, yes. My thick, delicious stew. Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump, as well-built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Why don't you just wait here and I will go pick some more berries and spices for my stuff. My stew. But wait, what about your bad back? What a strange... I mean, what a strange woman. There's something not quite right about this place. Like those skulls, for one. They look disturbingly humanoid. What's that sound? Where's it coming from? It's too big for me to carry around. Maybe I could use it somewhere in this room. Oh, dear me. Who are you? Are you going to eat me? I'm April, and I've come to rescue you. Oh, my. Did my tribe send you? So to speak, I met your brother, Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu? Bandu Umanu Banta Orobana Biutan Dinoart? I think so. He said to call him Ben Bandu. Because he was sad for me? He will be so glad to find that you've rescued me then. Um, yeah. There could be a tiny little problem with that. The Gribbler captured you too? I guess she. It, whatever the Gribbler is, did capture me. That took me by surprise, since I did come here willingly. That's how she works, the Gribbler. She tricks Banda and humans to come here to her house, and then she cooks them and eats them. Friendly old lady, she's not. What's your name? Bandu Utamatuta Uyatan Ayama Binaort. That's a little difficult for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? Oh my, yes, yes, that would be fine. We have long names, us Banda, as long as our tunnels. You can tell me more about your people later. Right now we need to find a way out of here. Over here, let's try something. Oh dear, oh dear me! What are you going to do? I'm gonna get you out of here, hold on. Hey, 
wait a second. I need you to open the door for me. Don't run off. Damn. What am I gonna do now? I am back with the berries and... What's happened here? Why is the... Human. I... I just saved an innocent person from being your dinner, Gribbler, so there! So... you think you could come into my house and... set my dinner free and get away with it? Uh... well... I will get away with it, because soon a lot of people, armed people, will come to get me and to kill you, so you'd better... you'd better run away while you still have a chance. I guess you will be my dinner tonight, then. And I had hoped to save you for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Gribbler. You can't honestly think you can eat. Step aside. I know karate. Beat it. Get out of here. Oh, shit. Hi, Ben. Oh dear, oh dear. Where's the monster? She vanished like smoke up a chimney. Do you know what happened to your brother? He just ran off, didn't even stop to say goodbye. I, I met him back on the road. He was running like the wind. Said that when you helped him out of the window, he spotted the Gribbler returning, so he went to get help. I told him to alert the village, gather as many of the Banda as possible, and come back here. And that I'd try my best to aid you in the meanwhile. Thank you, that was very brave of you. Brave of me? Oh my. You defeated the Gribbler. You are a hero. I owe the life of my brother to you. The life of everyone in our tribe. I know my fellow Banda will want to reward you for your gracious deeds. You are invited to our village with me, and I will tell my people to prepare a grand feast for you. You don't have to do that, Ben. I just did what anybody would have done. But you did it! Give me your map, and I will show you where our village is. Then I must run ahead to tell the Banda that the Gribbler is no more! April! I'm so glad you could come to our village and sit by our fire so we can thank you in the proper manner. It's my privilege, Ben Bandu. I wouldn't want to pass through this forest without visiting your village and seeing for myself how the Banda people live. Oh my. You speak so eloquently. My brother sits by the fire. I know he wishes to speak with you. But the elder would speak with you first. He rests in his hammock up on the mound. Go speak with him. And then come down again, so we can celebrate the death of the Gribbler and the brave escape of April Ryan and Ben Bondu's brother. <laughs> the hero of the day comes to visit the old Bondu. Let me see your face, human. Make yourself shorter. That's much better. The human is closer to the soil now, and she may even feel it like we do. Moving, shaping itself, breathing, beating. I don't feel anything. Sorry. So the human is not a digger. 
But we don't judge her because of that. The human is a hero, she is. Don't call me that. I'm not a hero. I was just in the right place at the right time to help somebody out. She destroyed the evil that haunted our forest and rescued one of our little ones from the creatures of chaos. And so she is a hero. She's the one spoken of in our songs, is she not? The one who will deliver us from an evil presence and who will go on to save the balance. You are she. Are you not? I don't know. Well, we will see. We will see. You will sleep in our spirit dig tonight. And then tomorrow, we will see. But now, you must enjoy yourself. This feast is in your honor to show our appreciation for your courage. Thank you. Go, oh, eat, and drink, and dance, and then go to sleep in the spirit dig. We will talk tomorrow before you continue your journey. You are on a journey, are you not? A very long one, yeah. We are all on a journey, but yours is the most important one ever. So go. I will smoke my pipe and think on prophecies and songs. Go. Oh dear, it's April. Sit, sit down. Are you feeling all right? I thought you disappeared on me back at the Gribbler's lair. Oh dear, I do apologize. I saw the Gribbler return from the forest, so I ran into the bushes and headed straight for the village. I was going to get help, you understand, but then I bumped into my brother and I told him what was happening. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks to you, April. How did you kill the Gribbler? Lots of luck, and a little bit of quick thinking. My limited talents in the martial arts were woefully underused. Were you frightened? I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my entire life. Kind of exhilarating, actually. Although at this point, I think I've had quite enough excitement for a lifetime. Oh, dear me. I could never be as brave as you, April. Ever. What is the spirit dig the Elder told me about? Oh, it's a sacred place. A very sacred place. It's where we, the Banda, can speak with our ancestors, ask them questions, and learn from their wisdom. Yeah, well, the Elder said I was to sleep there tonight. He did? The Elder said that? Then you have been honored by him, April. Only those worthy of the spirits of our ancestors can spend the night in the spirit dig. Where is the spirit? Right behind you, at the far end of our dream. Enjoy the party, guys. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself, too. Just lie down for a few. No, screw that. I'm getting a good night's sleep. That's what I'm doing. I've never been this tired in my life. save the world, do you? Who are you? I don't tell me you don't recognize me, April Ryan. I'm 
You. That's... impossible. This is just another dream. I must be dreaming. Think again, loser. This is as real as it gets. Why are you here? I'm sending you home, that's what. You're a sad little twit, don't you realize that? There's no point subjecting the entire world, hit two worlds, to your feeble attempts at redeeming yourself, is there? Go away, leave me alone. How the hell am I supposed to do that, Einstein? I am you. You are me. Unfortunately for the both of us, we're inseparable. I don't need this Freudian id crap. Not now. There's so much I have to do, so many people I have to help. Oh yeah? Like you really believe that? Like you give a shit about those people? You're doing this for yourself, April, and that's why you're gonna fail. Shut up! Shut up! That's always your way out, isn't it? Telling people to shut up when they speak the truth and shutting them out when they're getting too close for comfort. Hey, don't tell me. I do it because Daddy hurt me. Screw that. How do you think you're gonna hold up when this job gets tough if you can't rely on anybody or believe in anything? I'm doing it, aren't I? Yeah, because what kind of choice did you have? Face your problems back home? Face the nightmares? I don't think so. So you run. And you think you're putting distance between yourself and your fear of the past and the present? All you're doing is running straight into an inevitable nervous breakdown. I'm right now. You're talking to yourself, April. No, that's not something a mentally stable person would do, is it? Shut up! Shut up! Shh. It's okay, April. It's, it's okay. okay. Charlie? Charlie, is that you? Shh. Don't you worry. I'm here. I'll take good care of you. Oh, God, Charlie, I'm so glad that... that you're... you're... You're not here. You can't be. I'm still dreaming. No, no, you're not dreaming. I'm here, but in spirit only. Is it? Is it really you, Charlie? We are Charlie, your friend. We feel his heart and his mind, and his sleeping spirit joins us. But we speak from the great digs of the beyond, where the songs of the panda never end. Are they dead? We have passed into the soil. We are spirits, and we have come to guide you. Why Charlie? Why do you show me Charlie? He loves you, and so he guides us here, into your heart and mind. He loves me? Charlie loves me? You are not alone in the world, April. There are many who care for you. Your friends and your family. Your real family. You are not alone in your journey through life. What do you know about my family? My real family? They watch out for you, April. That's all we know. They have never abandoned you. They have just let you live the life you needed to live. To understand. It's important that you understand. Understand what? That life. Even when difficult and painful is a gift. That love is priceless and rare and precious. That every good action, every good thought counts. And that a single person can make a difference, can change the world. If she puts her mind to it, if she believes in herself, and the people who believe in her. But everything is so frightening. I don't understand half of what goes on around me. Did not the mother say she would help you? Watch out for you? Did not Charlie and Emma, your friends, offer to give you a helping hand when you didn't even tell them the truth about what was going on? And Cortez the Red, did he not prove himself a friend as well? How then can you be so afraid when you have so many spirits to be with you in your darkest hour? Cortez the Red? 
Please, tell me what I have to do. I'm just fumbling in the dark here. Follow your heart and your spirit, April. And use your mind. These are your weapons. And with them, you will defeat chaos. When you wake, tell the Elder that you've had a Bakbar. That you've spoken with the Banda spirits. And that your name amongst our people is now April Bandu and Bata. April Digger who will seek and find. Oh, don't go. Please don't go. She's awake. April! Good morning, Ben Bondu. Greetings of the new day to you, April. Did you sleep well in the spirit dig? Did I sleep well? Aside from the voices, the apparitions, the sharp rocks poking me in the back, and the moist moss mattress? No, not really. So you were visited by the spirits? I guess. When you told me last night that I would be, I didn't believe you. I thought it was just a manner of speaking, like saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. Our ancestors are close to us at all times. Once in a while, they speak to those who have been chosen to spend a night in the spirit dig. That they spoke to you is a great honor. April, a great honor. Right now, I'd be happy to exchange all the honor in the world for one decent night's sleep. <laughs> oh, dear me. You are very funny, April. If all humans are as funny as you, your cities must be filled with laughter. The Elder wishes to speak with you again. And I must sing now, down in the tunnels. It was decided this morning that I was finally ready to join the diggers. I'm happy for you, Ben Bondu. Thank you. May the balance provide you on your journey, April. You will be in my heart, always. And you will be in mine, Ben Bondu, always. Y you will come back when your journey is over. I'll try. Goodbye. Oh, my. I cannot stand farewells. But... farewell. So, you are awake? Did you sleep well? As well as can be expected, I guess. Does the word Buckbar mean anything to you? Buckbar? Where did you hear this word? The spirits told me that I'd had a Buckbar. So, the spirits spoke to you openly? You are lucky, human. Some who enter the spirit dig never come out again. And some spend the night but hear nothing. But to you, the spirits spoke. A bakbar is a vision of yourself that speaks the truth in two ways. One is the dark truth. This is how you see yourself when you are not sure of yourself or angry with yourself. The other truth is the very opposite of the first. This is how you must see yourself to be happy. But the spirits remind us that both are important. That you cannot love yourself without first seeing your flaws. The people I saw, were they really there? The spirits use masks to convey their messages. And they speak in voices from the past or the present that carry great weight with you. The messengers are never the same, nor the message. But you must take care to hear and heed their words. I was told that my name among the Banda would be April Bandu Mbata. She among the little ones who seeks and finds. 
So, you are the one we sing of. The human who would come to aid us and to save our world, and who will then tear it apart. You bring tidings both happy and sad to the Banda, April Bandu and Bata, both hope and despair. This world will never be the same again once you have passed through it. But we are grateful, and I'm proud to have met you and to give you what you came for. It was just luck that brought me here. I didn't come for anything in specific. Yes, you did. This is what you came for. What is it? This is the stone given to us by the fathers to keep safe until this day. It has been with us for so long. Oh, it's a piece of the disc! Then you know it. You came for the stone, even though you didn't know it until now? I guess I did. Thanks. Now, you must continue your journey, April Bandu and Bata. Remember that this is your tribe now. And so you are welcome at our fires and in our digs whenever you come this way again. I'm honored. Thank you. May there always be soil between your toes, April Bandu and Bata. And between yours, Elder. Goodbye. Wake up! Huh? Turn off the big light, Mommy. It's called the sun, Crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. <sighs> I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy. And we need to leave right now. We do? We do! Let's go get him! <clears throat> uh, who are we getting again? Some evil alchemist out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Yes! Exactly! Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats then, shall I? Like, uh, marauding mice? You do that, Crow. Thank you. There's an ordeal I prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. Whatever it was, one of those things probably ate it. They feel very soft to the touch and soothing like skin moisturizer. I'll bring a few in case my hands get dry. Never hurts to be prepared for a dry skin emergency. must be Roper Clax's castle. The whole gravity-defying bit kind of gives it away. Strange texture. Fingers feel tingly. Oh my god! You. I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try to open your mouth a bit? Impossible. Impossible? Okay. Okay, there's gotta be some way to help you talk. By the way, can you help me get up there? Into the castle? Yes. I don't know any magic, sorry. 
But I'll try to find a way to soften you up. Thank you. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Those berries look ripe and juicy, but my mom taught me never to judge a book by its cover. They're probably poisonous and almost certainly fattening. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Nah, uh That marshy ground between me and the berries looks treacherous. I'll probably get stuck and drown. here. You should really be wearing a sweater, doll. You don't want to catch a cold, not with the fate of the known cosmos on your shoulders. I'm fine, thanks, Crow. What's going on with you? Keeping my eyes open, you know, floating on the warm winds, doing that whole Hawkeye shtick. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. I spotted you from at least 100 yards away. Impressive. Yep. They don't call me the Lord of the Winds for nothing. Do they really call you that? No, but soon, by the balance, they will. Now, what can I do for you, sweetheart? Crow, I need you to fly over there and get some of those berries for me. And Crow? Yes, ma'am. Don't eat the berries. No, ma'am. Thanks, Crow. You got it. I'm gonna go back up there and work on my eyesight. I ain't stopping until I can spot those cute chicks from miles and miles away. I don't think the salve will be effective for very long. I'm April, by the way. Lorhan, I'm a sailor. And you've got to help me get out of here. I don't think I can stand it much longer. What happened to you? Oh, that blasted, blasted alchemist cast a spell on me. Turned me to solid rock. Then he put me here to be gatekeeper and anchor for his blasted castle. That was near six full moons past now. You've been here for half a year? Curse the balance. We say it like that. It is an age. My wife is sure to have taken someone else's bed by now. Blasted magic. The Vanguard were right. What do you mean the Vanguard were right? That we've been at the mercy of the balance for too long. It's time to make some changes. Put the control back into the hands of the people. How would that have helped you? Well, for one, there wouldn't be any rogue magicians like this Roper Clax running about causing trouble. Do you not agree? I'm not about to argue politics with you right now, Lorhan. I'm in a hurry. Who's arguing? And blasted be my rocky hide. Get me out of here. How can I help you? It ain't just me, April. There are dozens of men up there. Servants and sailors and merchants and soldiers. All sent here by their masters to deal with Roper Clax. Ha! <laughs> Cursed be the balance. We've all been turned to stone. And our souls trapped in a crystal that the madman keeps in his tower. He draws power from that, power that shouldn't be his by right. But this blasted problem of the balance has upset the natural order of things. If the Vanguard were in control, this would never have happened. 
Things will be like they used to be a long time ago. Everything was good then? Oh, sure, there were problems, but this rift, it ain't natural. Science and magic belong together in the hands of the people, not to some naked guardian fellow on a tower somewhere far away. Listen, we've got more important things to think about, like how I'm going to get inside the mountain, beat this clack sky, and free your soul. Yeah, 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 you're right. And I can feel my muscles turning to stone again. We must hurry. How do I get inside the mountain? I'll pull the stairs down for you. Usually when Clax comes and goes, he softens me up for a bit, just so I can raise and lower the stairs for him, and then he changes me back to solid rock again. Once you're inside, and if you manage to defeat the madman, I don't see how you're going to do that, a young woman like yourself. I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm not your run-of-the-mill teeny bopper either. You're what? Anyways, if you defeat Clax, you must find his study and break the crystal, the soul stone. That should break the spell and give us back our flesh and bone bodies. Sounds like a plan. All right, here goes. Watch your head, April. I so love these things. Jump! Jump into the abyss! Who is that? Wait, don't tell me, evil wizard. They all sound like Richard III on crack.
Finally. <laughs> I was beginning to think you would never make it through my labyrinth. Welcome to my humble home. Do you like it? I had it built according to my own specifications by the most skilled architects of Arcadia. They have since become a permanent and quite attractive fixture of their own building, of course. Oh, but I forget my manners. I am, as I am sure you already know, Roper Clax. And you would be? Never you mind who I am. Never you mind. Never you mind. Ha! I know who you are, April Ryan. You have come to strike me down like so many before you. But you will not succeed. You will be trapped here with the rest of them in solid stone for all eternity. I don't think so. Release your prisoners and free the wind. I am very sorry. But I have plans for the future, and so I must disappoint you. And I am afraid I must take your soul. There is just no way around that. Why did you trap the wind? Why does the wolf eat the sheep? I don't think you answered my question. Because I can, little girl. Because I can. And because of who I am. Because I am hungry. And because the time is right. I think you did it because you're insecure and you have to show off your petty magic to the world. Shut your pretty little mouth. I will devour you. I will... <clears throat> but we must not lose our self-control, must we? No, we must not. Why did you turn those people into stone? Questions, questions, questions! I do not need to explain myself to you, little bastard child! Do you know who your parents are? No, of course not! Too stupid! What? What do you know about my parents? Suffer the little children. Oh, how I love that phrase. It is my life's philosophy. I like suffering, especially the suffering of innocent children. Their screams are so pretty, their tears so salty. You're a real shit, Clax. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Prepare to be defeated. Prepare to be defeated. Ha! Clichés! Is that the best you can do? Watch me. Yes. And you plan to do what? Witness the men who came before you with their weapons and their magic. Look what happened to them. Turn to stone. Each and every one of them for all eternity. I even own their souls now. And they will feed me and keep me strong for as long as I need them. How original. Been reading a lot of fairy tales lately, have we? Oh, how precious. <laughs> See? I could scour your flesh off your bones in a second, little girl. Now, do you think you could defeat me? How about a proper challenge? A proper... <clears throat> what, what do you mean by a proper challenge? I can't defeat you with magic. I'm not a wizard. Wizards? Frauds! The lot of them! The only real magic is the magic of alchemy. But of course, you cannot defeat me with magic. That is why I will win. What's so great about beating me with magic? That's not a challenge. That's a walkover. If we even the odds out a bit, you'll have more fun and satisfaction from turning me into stone later. 
You are trying to trick me, I know that. But you intrigue me, little girl. Go on then, issue a challenge worthy of my powers. Give me a moment, and I'll think of a better challenge. A moment is all you get, little girl. Strangely enough, it's an old-fashioned calculator. Like the ones they used back in, like, the Elizabethan times. I challenge you... to a round of tic-tac-toe. Ah. <laughs> Did I forget to mention that back at the Alchemist's Academy, I was a faithful member of the Tic-Tac-Toe Club for five years? Oh, really? Fine, you win. I challenge you to a cooking contest. Ah, cooking. My secret passion. You have not lived until you have tasted my mince pie. Oh, brother. Forget cooking. I suck at cooking. I challenge you to a game of hopscotch. Do not underestimate me, little girl. I was young once too, believe it or not. And I was the neighborhood champion in hopscotch three years running. Um, okay, let's rock and roll. Fine, you win. I challenge you to a contest of simple arithmetic, using only this petty little device against your supreme intellectual powers. Give me your best shot, but after this, I will take your soul and trap you in stone for all eternity. Sounds good to me. Okay, here's one. 49 times 11. 49 times 11 what? Numbers. Okay, think of apples and oranges. 49 apples times 11 oranges. 49 times... Carry the one over, divide by three. What to do with that file? <clears throat> no, forget that one. So that leaves us with. Nine! Aha! <laughs> Wrong! It's 539. That was an easy one, Clax. Is that the best you can do? Uh, two out of three. I'll give you an even easier one this time. 603 divided by 3. Ooh, you underestimate my powers, little girl. 5,867 
point two point three. Aha! Way off, buddy. It's two hundred and one. Sorry, you lose. Give me that thing. This is intriguing. This really is. What does this do? Oh, my. I always thought math was such a waste of time. It's a spell. Clouds and spider's webs, plus, um, a magic finger? If alchemy is anything like chemistry, that last one is probably some kind of catalyst or something. Clouds and spider web plus catalyst makes invisible? There's something behind the curtain. Clever fellow, that roper clacks. Who'd think to look there? I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Like so. Fortunately, they're small enough to carry in my pocket. Save it for when I really need it. I'm invisible! That's so cool! Good timing. I've got to hold on to this stuff. If nothing else, it's perfect for sneaking into clubs back home. Why 
wings with clouds makes leaf? Makes you light as a leaf, probably. Clouds with brimstone makes storm. Storm? I can bring the wind back with this potion. Brimstone with brimstone makes Big Bang. Ooh, like a firecracker. I always wanted a firecracker. Spider's webs and butterfly wings makes... What is that? A chain around a chaotic symbol? Chaotic like... like magic? Chain magic? Bind magic! Oops, that didn't seem to mix too well. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. It's a bottle containing a red liquid. I'll just take a tiny little sip. Bitter. I do feel a little less weighty. If I put my mind to it, I could probably jump quite high. Whoa! I should save some of this stuff for the Olympic Games next year. It's a safe bet. I dominate the high jump and pole vault contests. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials.
I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. What's going on? Nice digs you found here, though I'd cut down on the mad alchemist decor just a little. It's just not you. I don't plan on sticking around, Crow. Heck, why not? You'll be mobile. Home security is not an issue, and you can strike fear into the hearts of men. When you put it like that, no. Hey, up to you. So, why'd you call me? What's going on out there? What's going on is that we're currently cruising at an altitude of, uh, oh, very high. And where are we heading? We're very slowly going nowhere except up. There's no wind, remember? It'll start getting chilly and hard to breathe in a few hours, however. That won't be very pleasant. I could use some help. I'll try my best. Just let me know what you want me to do. Hold on to this vial, okay? Oh, sure. Holding on to stuff is a specialty of mine. What for? I'll let you know. I want you to fly out there, Crow, as high as you can and empty the potion into the clouds. Oh, what if there's lightning? I don't like lightning. Lightning has caused better birds than me to crash and burn. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'm the ever-faithful Crow. Uh-oh. I guess it's working. That's done with. There's still quite a bit left in the bottle in case you need it later on. Captain Nebeve? Huh? Oh, it's just you. Where have you been? Where have I... Don't you remember? I went north to find Roper Clax and get him to release the wind. Oh, I... You know, the wind did pick up mysteriously last night, but... Uh... 
But what? I don't trust it to not die down in a few hours. Or at the most, a day or two. But I destroyed the Alchemist. I even set his prisoners free from the rock they were trapped in. Destroyed the Soul Stone. Sailed back here in his floating castle and... And you don't believe a word of it, do you? Not a word. Great. I did defeat Roper Clax. Uh-huh. Do you have his severed head somewhere on you? I beat him. I didn't say I killed him. Of course you didn't. Can we set sail for Elias now? Well, the wind has picked up a bit, but I don't trust the good weather to last. I don't want to be sitting dead in the water come tomorrow afternoon, so I'll wait a few days more. Thanks for nothing. Captain Nebeve? Huh? I got something you want. What? Well, out with it, girl. What is it? Oh, nothing. You do remember our deal, don't you? I? Um, uh, remind me what the deal was again. That if I defeated Roper Clax and brought the wind back, you'd give me a lift to the Isle of Elias. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the day I see a girl like you bring down a powerful alchemist like Clax is the day I hire a woman to be my navigator. Well, look at this. <sighs> By the balance, girl, that's a strong grog you got there. What is it? Tyron spice wine? It's the wind. Watch this. Sweet child, that's a strong wind. You got some mighty powerful magic there, girl. And there's more where that came from. Care to share some of it with us? With that magic, we could make good time to Guillen. Pick up a cargo full of apples and be back here before the competition got, uh, wind of what was happening. Sure. If you give me a ride to Elias, as promised. Balance be cursed. Women aboard? When will it ever end? Jowls, bowels. Be here by this afternoon, or we'll sail without you. As if you'll get far without my wind magic. And you did say something about hiring a female navigator? Damnation! Do you insist on remembering every little thing I say, girl? Don't you know that Jal has forbidden women from riding the waves? Sounds like a bunch of sexist bullshit to me. But it's your choice. I got the wind in my pocket. Now you learn to treat women with a little respect. I've run out of curses, girl. Jal be damned I am in desperate need of a navigator anyhow. All right, all right. You be here by this afternoon with your navigator. It's not as if I ever put much faith in the teachings of the drunken prophet Jaw myself. Pardon me for intruding, ma'am, but is your name Tunlayak? Yes, I'm Tunlayak. I have a delivery for you. Oh, a map of the Northlands. I had almost forgotten I ordered it. Sorry about that. I came by a few days ago, but you weren't here. No, no, I was looking for work. <sighs> Thank you kindly, young woman. I will need this map now if I'm to make it to Coruscant by foot. Why are you going to Coruscant by foot? 
I can ill afford the cost of passage on a ship bound for the Bay of Fire, and since I do not have a job, nor the prospect of getting one, I have little choice. Are you from Coruscant? No, I am from the Southlands. I have never been to Coruscant. Then why are you going there? Because I am told that in Coruscant, captains allow women to join their crew. Here, in Mercuria, they do not. So I've been told, but you shouldn't have to go somewhere else to get a job. That just isn't fair. Fair or not, it is custom, and custom is a difficult thing to change. Why are you so depressed? Is it that apparent to you? I do beg your pardon. It was not my intent to burden you with my dark mood. It's okay, I don't mind. I'd like to help if I can. I do not think you can. Unless you were the captain of a ship, and you could hire me as your navigator. But you are not, and so you cannot help me. You are a navigator? Yes, and I have a letter to prove it. Do you want me to show it to you? No, I believe you. And you're looking for a job? I have been looking, now, for many moons. But most captains do not want women on their crew. And so I am leaving for Coruscant in the morning. I got a job for you, if you want it. A job? As a navigator? Yeah, on a boat called the White Dragon. We're leaving this afternoon, if you're interested. If you are serious, then yes. I am more than interested. But will the captain allow a woman as his navigator? This one will, trust me. Because if he doesn't, he's not going anywhere. Just pack your stuff and head down to the docks. Talk to Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon. Tell him I sent you. The name's April Ryan. Thank you, April. I am Tun Lyak. I am most grateful to you. Will you be going with us? Yeah, so I'll see you there. Thank you so much. delivery ages ago. Really? Well then, I can finally fire you. You're the most incompetent errand boy I've ever had. Give me the delivery list and get out of here. I think I left that list somewhere far away. Ye gods, not only do I have to deal with your incompetence, but now the guild will skid my hide and hang it up to dry. You have returned from your trip north. It is good to see you again. I was concerned. You're worried about little old me? That's sweet. And guess what? I kicked some alchemist ass while I was up there. Bet you didn't think I'd be able to do that. Then you have lost your wager. I knew you would. After all, you are... I was worried because of the trouble in the West. What trouble? The Tyran. They left the city all as one, the evening before yesterday, and many of the vanguard with them. I fear there are dark times ahead. You don't mean war, do you? 
War, yes. It has been an age and a half since our last war with the Tyran. But relations have always been strained, and now, whipped into religious fervor by the vanguard, the Tyran are thirsty for blood and for revenge. They are a people bound by violence and without honor, and easily seduced by the prospect of a holy war. God, that's horrible. But the city's safe, isn't it? It's a big city. Yes, but unfortunately not well armed. Marcuria has not seen war for centuries, and people grow soft, forget how to fight. It can easily be taken by a strong army, and so I fear our safety. And yours. What did you mean when you said, after all, you are... Forgive an old man his misgivings, April, but I should have trusted you before. Of course you should have. With what? With the truth. That you are the one who will watch over us for a thousand years. That you are of the balance. And the balance is in you. That you are the one born into the heaviest duty of them all. You are the guardian to be, April. The thirteenth guardian of the balance. No! No, that's a lie. I'm not your guardian. That's not possible. It is certain. I had my doubts, unfortunately. It could have cost us the balance, and I made a mistake. But it is certain now. You are stronger in the balance than anyone before you. God damn, Cortez! He didn't say anything about... If I'd known, I wouldn't have come here. I would have... I don't know what I would have done, but I wouldn't have come here. Maybe he did not know. Or maybe he did. And he knew it would be wiser not to tell you. But I am telling you now because you cannot stay here. You are too valuable. You must leave. I am leaving for Laius this afternoon. Good. The Tyran are not a seafaring people, and the islands are probably the safest place to be right now. Before you go, I want to give you something to carry with you. I spent the night looking for it in the Enclave. It has been gathering dust for over 10,000 years. Oh, Tobias, I can't accept anything that old. You are not accepting it. It is yours. The Fathers have only kept it safe for the day when the Thirteenth Guardian would come to collect it. And now you are here. Please, take it. It is the Talisman of the Balance. Known to but a few, it is mentioned in one text only. The Scriptures of Reunification, one of the Thirteen Scriptures of the Balance. What does it do? The scripture speaks not of its purpose, but it is yours, whatever it is. I am certain it will help you once you find its purpose. It has strong magic, very strong. Thanks, Tobias. I really do appreciate it, e even though I wish I didn't have to accept it. You are the guardian, child. Your fate is both glorious and terrible, but it is your fate. If you deny it, you deny our future. But I have faith in you, April. That's what I'm afraid of. What if I screw up? The balance provides. The balance protects. Trust the balance, and trust yourself. Goodbye, and good luck on your journey. Finally, we are ready. 
And we must away before it's too late. We still have another six or seven hours of daylight today. Come, come aboard. Did I tell you how much I hate water? No. Well, remind me to tell you sometime. My guts have been cleaned out, and I still feel sick. <sighs> it's the apple barrel. It's half empty, and aside from whatever fish we're able to catch, those apples are the only food we got on board. People do not toss the apples back into the barrel after eating. Here's a nice plump. It's a glass orb with a strange magical glow. It could be some kind of compass, I guess. My nose is itching. Are you sleeping on duty again? Storm front. West, heading our way. Looks like a right old bugger too, Harv. Aye, by the mercy of Jaw, it's a chaos storm. Where in damnation did it come from this quickly? And what's pulling it here? Navigator. Change our course. We must away from the storm front and to safe harbor. Uh-oh. I just felt a cold shiver running down my spine. worm. Uh, and this is good because? Get to it, little guy. Eat your heart out. The worms have invaded the apple barrel. Curse it be the balance. First the storm, now this. Is there no end to the horrors? Let me see. Charles infected arsehole, you be right. Those are worms, all right. Vicious, snarling wheat worms driven mad by their hunger for a change of diet. As far as I could tell, that was the only apple infected. I could be wrong. Good of you to catch it, girl, before it's spread any further. 
I'll have to go pluck the apples immediately. They must be saved. going on, Tun? A storm approaches April, and it is no ordinary storm. What do you mean by no ordinary storm? Look to the clouds. Do they appear normal to you? They look strange, it's true. It is a chaos storm. A strong storm caught in a magical vortex, drawn to strong magic like bees to honey. I have never seen one with my own eyes, but I have heard stories. What have you heard about chaos storms? That they appear only rarely, and that they signify great and terrible events in the near future. It is also said that they are weapons used by the Dark Lords of Chaos to hunt and destroy those strong in the balance. Can we escape a chaos storm? If we run fast enough and reach safe harbor, perhaps. I have not heard of a chaos storm to last more than a single night, and this one is still quite a distance away. But it gains fast. I do not know, April. Will you still be able to get me to Elias tomorrow? I am afraid not. The captain has ordered our course changed south to get us away from the rocky waters around the islands. We are about three days away from Guienne, but if the weather improves before then, perhaps he will be willing to turn about. But I would not count on it, April. He cares much for his ship, and for his crew, and he would not risk it for anything or anyone. You still need my magic to get wind in your sails. The wind seems to be picking up on its own. Thus, Nebeve has no need for your magic, April. I am sorry, but once we reach Guienne, I am certain you will find passage to the islands. I don't have three days, Tun. The balance is failing. I am sorry. It is out of my hands. I have a question about your compass. Certainly. What kind of compass are you using? It is just a normal spirit compass. When we are not navigating by the stars or by the sun, we use this. What's a spirit compass? I forget that you are not familiar with the sea. A spirit compass points always to the magical North Pole, and thus we may navigate according to it. It is very precise, and less affected by a strong magical source. Won't the Chaos Storm affect the accuracy of the Spirit Compass? If the storm catches up with us, perhaps, but I do not think so. Only a very focused magical field in close proximity to the Compass would be able to affect it. Thanks. That's all I needed to know. I hope this knowledge made you richer. Do you want me to relieve you at the wheel for a while? I am not sure if this is such a good idea, April. What's the big deal? I just hold it straight, right? Well, I could do with a short break to stretch my legs. Fine, but I will be back soon. And if anything happens, just call out for help. Of course, thanks. So if the compass was pointing in that direction when we were on course for Elias, and now it's pointing in this direction... Oh, hell. I'll just wing it. Use the Force, April. After all, who's the chosen one here? Ton! Need some assistance up here!
think I may have strayed off course a bit when I was at the wheel. I did not feel the boat turning. Well, I have a feeling we're gonna miss Gien by a couple of hundred kilometers if you don't correct our course. Let me check the compass. By the balance, you are right, April. It is good you were aware of your mistake, or we might have ended up pierced on the deadly reefs of Tagate. I will correct our course immediately. Sorry about that. Oh no, I let you take the wheel. I'm just glad we are back on course. Y yeah, back on course. <clears throat> I'll let you go back to work. Thank you. No, I'll leave it there until I can convince Tan to change our course. Is it my imagination, or is the storm getting closer? By the balance, you are right. The storm is catching up with us. We might have to ride it out. It is good we are nowhere near the islands, or we would have to worry about reefs as well. Reefs? Nobody said anything about reefs. Tun, I have something to tell you. Captain! Sir! We need you on the bridge. The storm is closing in. By the foul bowels of jaw, you're right, Lyak. It's closing in faster than any storm I've seen or heard, chaos or otherwise. It's like it's chasing something or someone. All right, listen up. The storm's going to hit in an hour or two, and I want everything to be ready. Tighten the hatches, strap down the cargo, wake up the watch, and by Joe's big toe, someone put a lid on the apple barrel. So no need to worry. What was it doing next to the spirit compass? Let me see that necklace right now. It's a valuable family heirloom. I don't let anybody touch it. Give it here. This talisman has the mark of the balance and of the sentinel. This is an object of great magic. The balance be cursed, girl. What by Jaws' hideous countenance did you think you were doing? I need to get to Elias as soon as possible. So you claim. But do you know what you've done instead? you put the lives of everyone on this boat in grave danger. With the storm upon us, the last we need is dangerous waters. Thank Jal's assassin, we still may have time to avoid the rocks of the Briston at all. But I swear by the honor of the three biased judges of Guillen that I'll have you before a court when... If... We get to land. Check the compass, Layak, and correct our course accordingly. And don't let this wedge touch anything from now on, you hear? I need to place this accursed talisman as far away from the spirit compass as possible. a good thing. It's locked with a big padlock. It's been a while since I chopped firewood. But I think I'll be able to knock the lock off pretty clean.
thank the balance she's all right. Are you all right, April? April? Are you sleeping? She's sleeping, bless her little heart. Boy, is she cute. Too bad she's just a chick and not a bird. April, wake up! Crow, I was so worried I thought the storm got you. Me? <laughs> Honey, I'm the sidekick. Didn't you ever read any legends? The sidekick always survives. So you're fine? A few singed tail feathers, and I'm so charged up sparks fly when I try to peck something. Other than that, better than ever. The sea air does wonders for my allergies. I didn't realize you had allergies. Exactly. Do you know what happened to the crew? As far as I know, they got away in the lifeboat. There was a lifeboat? One of those magic fold-up types, yeah. I guess they forgot all about me. I think the captain said something like, I let the wench drown and justice be done. <laughs> but uh, I could have been wrong. Any idea where the lifeboat is heading? South, I guess. From what I can remember of the old man's stories about the sea, Tagade would be the closest civilized island. Any idea how I'm going to get to the islands now? You could swim. Humans swim, don't they? They must, or you wouldn't be here now. I don't swim. And nobody can swim that far. There's no land visible in any direction. Well, I'd suggest flying, but you don't have the necessary equipment. Why don't you try and find the closest island? I could do that, but I'd have to leave you on your own. Crow, I'll be fine. All right, all right. Don't blame a bird for trying to be a gentleman. Gentle bird, whatever. I'll be back as soon as I can. Don't go anywhere. Where would I go? Girls always disappear on me. Trust me. What the hell is that? Uh-oh, for some reason, the story of the bloodthirsty cannibal merman of the Sea of Song suddenly pops to mind. Hi. Do you speak... Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? Come over here and let me pet you. You're just like a seal, aren't you? Bloody typical. I told her she didn't believe me. Girls always disappear on me. Always. It's a drawing of a man cutting his finger open and squeezing some blood into a bowl together with some green, mossy stuff. Then he mashes it together and... Oh, gross! He dips a black pearl in it and eats it. That's barbaric. Maybe the stories about the cannibal merman were true after all. But hey, in the next one, he seems capable of speaking fluently with the creatures that brought me here. I wouldn't mind that, if it could get me the hell out of here. It's a 
drawing of a man, a human, sticking a strange polyp-shaped object into his mouth. Ugh! In the next drawing, he seems to be able to breathe underwater. Convenient, if somewhat radical. The walls look organic, and those blue things... I think they're polyps of some kind. They live inside the wall and are part of the structure. National Geographic would go nuts over stuff like this. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. These polyps must process the oxygen in the water somehow. That's how I'm able to breathe in here. Oh, this is so disgusting, but I have to get out of here. There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. Why did you bring me here? I'm stuck at the bottom of the sea with Bubbles the Mermaid. There's got to be a way to communicate with these creatures. This gets infected, and I have to chew off my finger to fight the gangrene. I'm suing somebody. Ouch. The things I do to save the world. Worlds. Always had trouble swallowing pills, especially huge golden magical ones. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Oof. Understand what I'm saying? Yes, we understand. Weird. I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be able to understand what you're saying, but I do. You have passed the two tests of the Gatherer Landwalker breathing water and speaking the tongue of the Merum. You can serve us now. Serve you? You have been brought here to serve us as the Gatherer of Tanyan. What's Tanyan? Tanyan is life. Tanyan brings light to darkness and sustenance to our caves. Tanyan keeps the snapjaw from our children and heats us when it is cold. Tanyan is life. Where does Tanyan come from? Our gatherers collect it from the caves and shores of the islands, but there is less Tanyan to be found each season, and we need help. How does Tanyan do all those things you said? Tanyan provides warmth and light. It draws the harvest close, 
Harvest? The creatures of the sea that we eat. The golden tail, and the weed eye, and the sand eater. Fish. You're talking about fish. The harvest, yes. That is what we said. The harvest is drawn to the light and to the heat. But the snapjar are clever. They stay away. They know the light allows us better aim with our spears. Why can't you gather Tanyan yourself? We do. But we cannot move far from our cities, or the snapjar will hunt us and eat us. If we travel in force, we leave our men and children without guard. And we cannot travel too close to the islands, or the winged demons may catch eye of us. They leave our gatherers alone, though, so you have nothing to fear. Who are the winged demons? Ugly, leathery creatures who defy nature to fly up there in the sky. They are evil and live to destroy our people. Don't the Snapjaw kill the gatherers? Rarely. Your meat is bitter and tough, not soft and tender like ours. I won't ask how you know that. I think I've learned enough about Tan Yen for now. You have learned nothing, but your training will teach you what you need to know. Are your people called the Miram? We are the Miram. Most landwalkers call us mermen, or merpeople, but the Merim was our name in truth. Who are you, man? We are the queen of the third city of the Merim, enlightened keeper of the Tanyan, protector of the light. I'm sorry, your... Your Majesty, I really had no idea you were a queen. We are just a queen. Our function is to serve the people. To light our cities, provide food for our men and children, and to protect them from the snapjaw that hunt us in the dark. Do you know where my ship went down? The vessel you foolishly travel in above the water? It rests not far from the city, just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble where you were first brought. I think it is dead. Do you know the island of Elias? Yes, we know the island of Alais. Our gatherers find Tanyan there, and the Merim once had a city in the shallow waters below it. Can you bring me there? Until your training is complete, you cannot go gathering. We cannot risk losing you to the Snapjaw, or to have you desert your duties to our people. How long will my training take? Six cold oceans. Six years? Sure, that makes sense. Everything in this world takes ages. I've been told that you worship an old god who lives in the deep. How did you come by this forbidden knowledge? I picked it up on my way here. Could you take me to him? You? No, we cannot. Unless you are Miram, you are not even allowed to speak of our sleeping god. Thanks for your time. We will call on you soon to begin your service. Until then, you should stay inside the Landwalker's bubble and away from the dark waters where the Snapjaw lurk. Do you need this? No. It is of no value to us. Where did you find it? It looks very old. I believe one of the children found it just outside the city, not far from the Landwalker's bubble, among the seaweed by the rocks. We have used it for decoration in our hall, but you are welcome to it. Consider it a gift, gatherer. another one of those crystals buried in the sand among the seaweed. There's an entrance to a cave back here. 
Judging by the amount of seaweed, it's a long time since anybody's been in there. It's the crystal I took from the Marian's home. the crystal I found among the seaweed. crystals on the altar light up the entire cave. It's a circular indentation framed with the image of two dragons biting each other's tails, almost exactly like the markings on my talisman. It looks like some kind of visual history of the Marum people. According to this first tablet... Oh my god! It turns out the Marum came to Earth inside a type of spaceship from another planet! They're aliens? Not that anything should surprise me at this point, but still. They look very different back then, though. It must have been a long time ago. Their ship looks to have been a living thing, according to these drawings. Wait a minute. Could this be their ancient god? One of the dragons? I think it has to be. After they arrived on Earth, their species divided in two. One crawled into the sea, the other onto land. What does that mean? This must be a while later, because the Marum look like they do today. At least, the ones who went into the sea do. The other ones? They have wings. If I'm going to guess, I'd say that the ones who went to live on land became the Alation, which means the Marum and Alation are related. In this one, they're living close to each other and in peace. And it seems they share equally in the production of Tan Yen which attracts fish for both peoples to eat. Then something happens. War, it looks like, and the Marum and Alation move away from each other. In this last one, Tanyan is beginning to become scarce, and the Marum are losing many of their young ones to the Snapjaw. They fear the Alation, and they forget their common heritage. At the very end, there's a prophecy, I think. The Marum and the Alation joining hands once again. When they do, Tanyan becomes plentiful and both people prosper. The, the crystals on the altar light up the entire cave. Crystals on the altar light up the entire cave. I I'm wet.
talk for a minute? Yes, Gatherer. We may. Why was the cave with the altar and the wall painting just outside the city abandoned? What? Show us this cave. Immediately. I lit the cave by placing the crystal from your palace, together with three more crystals I found on the altar, and moving the stone rings into their correct positions. Can it be that you are... but you are a gatherer? You cannot be she. Who? Who can't I be? The Water Stiller. She who, by prophecy, will deliver us from strife and unite us as one people. She who will uncover the ancient shrine. Looks pretty ancient to me. This is the shrine, yes. And you have brought light to the darkness as well. But the other prophecies... You have not fulfilled them. You have not proven yourself to be the water stiller yet. How can I do that? Come back with us, and we will tell you. Who is the water stiller? She is of the prophecies. She will bring an end to strife and unite our people. How can I prove that I'm the water stiller? You have uncovered the ancient shrine and brought light to the darkness. But this could be just chance. You must show us the witness you carry of your mission to the balance. The talisman! Damn, I lost it when the storm hit us! You must also kill a snapjaw with a spear. And then you will have proven yourself to us. Once you have done this, we will aid you in your quest to make us one people. Where do I begin? Take this spear and slaughter a snapjaw. This must be done to prove your strength, and to prove you are of the mirror. Where do I find the snapjaw? If you are the water stiller, you will find a way. I'll need something to bring back to prove that I killed the Snapjaw. This tooth will do just fine. Oh man, that's sharp! I had no idea Snapjaw had razor teeth. If I did, better not think about that now.
talk for a minute? Yes, Gatherer. We may. Thanks for your time. My time is yours, Gatherer. containing what appears to be a shard of a stone. It's a piece of the stone disc! No, wait. It's only one half of a piece. It looks like it's been divided in two. Strange. I've taken from you the object you've kept hidden for generations. It's part of the disk that will restore the balance and save the twin worlds from chaos. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the water stiller. Here's proof of my mission. A magical talisman with the sign of the balance. It means that I'm the 13th guardian of the balance. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the water stiller. Here's a tooth from the dreaded snapjaw that guarded the shipwreck. Proof of my strength and courage. You have indeed fulfilled all but one of the prophecies. You might yet be the water stiller. We would not have thought she would come in our lifetime. Good. Then you'll take me to your sleeping god. There is but one more prophecy you must fulfill. There's more? Sure, there's always more. That's the fun part about prophecies. You must unite our people once again. But you said you were united, that there's no strife between Miram. The Water Stiller will come to bring our people together again, to unite us and save us. This has still not come to pass. Until you do so, the prophecies of the Water Stiller have not fully come to pass. I think I know now what the prophecies mean when they say your people will be reunited. The Miro are at peace with each other, yes? But you're not at peace with the Elation. The Wind Demons. They are our enemies. Right now they might be, but it wasn't always like that. Not according to the carvings in the Temple Cave. What do you mean? Once upon a time, long ago, the Miram and the Elation were one people. What? This is heresy. I'm just telling you what I saw in your temple. This was a very long time ago, and the one species soon divided in two. One sought refuge in the sea, the other on the winds. But both the Miram and the Elation were dependent on the other for various reasons, amongst them Ten Yen, which was abundant where the two people lived in close proximity to each other. Apparently, there was peace between your two people for a very long time, but then something happened. Something that caused a war to break out. Both the Elation and the Mira moved far away from each other, and ever since then, your people have had a tough time finding Tan Yen. I think the only way to save the Mira from a slow death, and the Elation as well, probably, is to reconcile you with your, uh, common ancestry. How can we believe you, Water Stiller? Your words are too outrageous, and the consequences, were you to be speaking the truth, are grave. If you don't believe me, 
check out the temple walls. The whole story has been recorded there, probably when you first came to this place. But what will our people say? What will they think when we tell them they are brothers and sisters to the winged demons? You're their queen, and so you'll have to make them understand and accept their heritage. As must the elation I expect, and I don't think it will be any easier for them to come to terms with their history. You must go to them, then, to find if our temple speaks the truth, and if they are willing to speak with us like civilized people. I guess I must, water stiller or not. If you don't reunite with them, you will die, eventually. We will bring you to the shores of their closest island, and we will await word from you on their answer. Does this mean you believe me? You are the water stiller. You are prophecy. We will follow your directions and fulfill our destiny. One of our people will bring you to Aleus, a night's journey from here. Once there, you will find the Elation and speak with their leaders. If they agree to meet, then we will do so in a place of your choosing. I promise I'll do my best. Goodbye. Safe journey, Water Stellar. We will hold on to the piece of the disk you found in the temple. If the winged demons, the elation, agree to meet us, we will bring the stone. the remains of a stone structure that probably fell down here through the crevice. There's a piece amongst the rubble that looks like a bolt or a key. It's intact. The bottom half of the statue depicts a large-eared creature listening intently. Some kind of giant crab. Sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Yeah, the shell does look way too tight. Maybe he's outgrown it but can't shed it. Or whatever it's called.
I can get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. you go? I thought you drowned. I was completely miserable. And the chicks on this island are so prissy. They don't even care for a kiss unless you're all settled down with a nest in your own territory. <laughs> Glad to see you haven't lost the gift of the gab crow. Lady, you have no idea how limited bird Twitter can be. It's all, hi, this, and here I am, that, all damn day long. I haven't had a decent conversation in days. Well, you're making up for it now. I never know when you're gonna go AWOL on me again. I had a little adventure under the sea. Oh? I didn't know humans had gills. We don't. Well, I do, I think. At least I can breathe underwater now. Cool. Not as cool as being able to fly, of course, but still. Hey, does that mean you're a mermaid? Hardly. I don't have a tail. What did you do after I saw you last? Well, it took a while, but I found land. Not this island, just a rock with a couple of trees, basically. But when I went back to tell you, you disappeared. I thought you'd gone bonkers from thirst and hunger and drowned yourself or something, so I decided I'd better find solid ground myself or I'd suffer the same fate. And then I found this place. Nice, isn't it? And the best part is, there are no hunters. Only a bunch of big crabs on the east side of the island and a volcano. I'm gonna walk around for a bit, Crow. I'll just stay here and preen myself, thank you very much. What can you tell me about the island, Crow? Only what I've been able to see from above. There's a volcano, dead I think, and lots of jungle, and some nice beaches. I'd like to explore the jungle, but I'm afraid I'm gonna get lost. Any ideas? Well, I could stay airborne and keep track of where you are. That way I could direct you if, sorry, when you get lost. Sounds like a super plan, Crow. Let's go. The rumbling is much fiercer here, and the ground is really shaking. It's definitely seismic. It has got to be emanating from this volcanic mountain. I mean, it looks dead, but it must be about to wake up or erupt or something. Great! After surviving a shipwreck, being kidnapped by fishes, and learning to breathe in water, I'm about to die in a volcanic eruption? Isn't that ironic? What a strange symbol. It's a small, eye-sized aperture with a crystal in it, like a lens. Maybe some kind of telescope? What a strange symbol. It's a statue standing in the ruins of a city. see a statue on a cliff overlooking the sea. I don't see anything interesting. I 
don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue just below a really tall tree. I don't see anything interesting. Somebody's looking back at me. Oh, wait. That's just my eye. The lens is turned into a mirror. I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue standing in the ruins of a city. One mother of a tree. It's got to be at least a hundred meters tall. And what's that in the tree crown? Looks like a man-made construction. That's a huge tree. There's a large object in the tree crown. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a creature with large ears. Dried twigs and sticks. Ow! Shh! Who's there? Duh! Shut up. I know there's somebody there. I heard you. Is she gone? Nope. She's still around. Shut up, shut up, shut up. If you won't come out, I'll just sit down here and wait. Sooner or later, you'll have to show yourself. Solar eclipse! Oh my god! Ah! I hate this place. I so hate it, I can't even sit down without crushing the natives. Big person alert! What are you? What does it look like? Um, uh, a talking twig? We're stickmen. And you're an accident waiting to happen with your large, ungainly body and wobbly legs. What's a stickman? An unlucky bugger doomed to a miserable life of stiff backs and monotonous drudgery in the shadow of a mother tree. Happy little fella, ain't ya? You have no idea. So, you guys are stickmen? That's right. I'm Wick. This is Willow. And that dumb-looking one over there is Woody. And this is our mother tree. What's a mother tree? What do you mean, what's a mother tree? It's a mother tree. How difficult can it be? It's our mother, and it's a tree. It's a mother tree. What do stickmen do? What do we do? What do we do? What do you mean, what do we do? Well, the people in this world always do something. Like the Banda dug tunnels in the earth. The Marum killed Snapjaw and covered their houses with Tan Yen. You gotta do something. Hey, it ain't easy being a stick, let me tell you. You got your stiff back and limbs, your fear of fire and water, your 300 years of miserable boredom, and then you have to get planted and raise a family. It ain't easy. So, you're not doing anything worthwhile then? Lady, I'm miserable. I'm grumpy, and I got a headache. What do you want from me? Where do the Elation live? The Elation? The guys with wings? Up in the volcano. There's an old city in there. I think they're squatting. How do I get into the volcano? You don't. The road collapsed a few centuries ago, 
And when traders come, the Alation fly down to meet them. Nobody goes up there anymore. What's that constant rumbling noise? Lady, you have no idea what we have to endure. All day, all night, that noise is just murder. It all started when Quaman, the quiet giant, would you believe that's what we used to call him, was banished by the Orowal from his perfect fishing place to some remote place in the forest. Whoa, information overload. Let's step back for a minute to fill in the details. Who's Quaman, the quiet giant? He's the scariest human we've ever seen. He stands tall as a mountain and uses whole trees for toothpicks. But he was a quiet type and reasonably gentle for a human. He'd spend his days out by the Orowal village, catching fish and frying fish and eating fish, and looking out across the ocean, dreaming about loose women or whatnot. What happened to get the quiet giant banished from that place? The Orowal got scared when he accidentally stepped on one of their young ones. He didn't do any real harm, but they banished him from their village nonetheless, and told him to go far into the forest. Who are the Orlowal? They're the crab-like creatures who live down by the sea. Ah, they're nice people, if a little crabby. And it's hard to understand what they're saying half the time. Where's Kwaman now? Somewhere in the forest east of here, we don't know where exactly. He went there to get as far away from the Aura Wall as possible. So what does all this have to do with the rumbling noise? Oh, I was getting to that. If you just let me get a word in edgewise. I just had some questions is all. Anyway, Quaman is the brooding type. And he takes everything so to heart, he got instantly depressed and went to sleep. And what is he doing now? Still sleeping! That's the problem! But how long ago was it that the Orlowal banished him? The last full moon. Nearly 30 sunsets passed. He's been sleeping for a month? He was depressed. What do you want, lady? Once I got so miserable I slept for eight years. And let me tell you, those eight years were the happiest of my life. I still don't understand what this has to do with the rumbling noise. See that statue over there? Sure. What's up with that? Back when the Dalmari lived on this island ages ago, they put these statues up all around the island so that they could speak with each other. You're kidding. So they're, like, telephones? Tell her what? I don't know what that is. The thing is, these statues are all connected through magic. And when you speak into one, your voice flies through the air and comes out of another statue. But I still don't understand... You saw the big head up by the mountain? Yes. That's the one they use to talk to everyone on the island, to warn people of storms or to hold evening prayer. It's connected to the statues as well. And Quaman is sleeping right next to a statue's ear. I get it. Resonance. He's snoring and the deep bass reverberating through the loudspeaker, the big head, causes a resonance that vibrates the entire island. But can't you just wake him up? We don't know where he is. We're not much for exploring this forest. There's water and fire and monkeys. Monkeys like to play with sticks. We don't like monkeys. But can't you just, well, send your voice to his telef... statue to wake him up? There are four problems with that. Number one, all the statues have an assigned symbol, an identifying mark, but we don't know which his is. Second, most of the statues are broken in some way or another. What do you mean? Some statues can only talk to certain other statues. Some can't be spoken to, and some can't hear, which makes it very difficult to get a connection through to where you want to send your voice. Number three, in order to use the statues, you need a key. We don't have it. We don't know where it is. And number four? We're stickmen, lady. What do you think? 
we don't know much about magic or magical devices. And, and... And what? Uh, we're not too smart, okay? There, I said it. We're not too smart. And when you look at Woody over there, who's pretty stupid by Stickman standards, that's a pretty scary thought. Sorry I asked. with a big mouth. Creature with large ears. Hello? Hello? Doesn't seem like it's working. It's a big wooden crossbow, I guess. I wonder who built it and what it's for. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. Hello? Hello? Doesn't seem like it's working. I look like a real sailor. Arr, matey! The bottom half of the statue depicts a large-eared creature listening intently.
It's the ruins of an old city. Quaman? I'm Amber Lion. And me be Quaman. But what you be doing up in the air, big woman? Big woman? Watch it, I don't... Oh, I see. It's just my voice that's big, Quaman. I'm really quite average, size-wise. Could you please stop snoring? Quaman be snoring? No one ever tell Quaman he be snoring. But then Quaman always be sleeping by his lonesome. No woman like Quaman. Don't say that about yourself, Quaman. I'm not sure of it. You know? It's kind of uncomfortable to be discussing this in a public like this. Yes, everyone be hearing about the Quama now. Do you want to talk about your problems? Face to face? What be the point? I'm a good listener, and I'd like to be your friend. Quaman, not sure if he want friend now. Please let me be your friend. Why? Because I'm lonely too. I don't really know anybody on this island, and I need some help. Well, Quaman be wanting to help, but. Okay, Quaman be your friend and talk to you. My secret place be in the ruins of the old temple by the wells. Follow the stream up from the rock beach and go right where it branches. Thanks, Quaman. I'll be there as soon as I can. just about the biggest person I've ever met. Quaman be a freak. No one be liking him. I didn't mean it that way. I just meant... April, you know just what to say, don't you? I'm sorry. I like tall guys. Really, I do. You be the only one, then. Because no one else want anything to do with Quaman. How 
did you come to be on this island? That be a long story. Do you want Kwaman to be telling you? Sure I have time. Tell me the story. Many long moons ago, Kwaman be happy. He be working at the Circa in Khorasan, where he be big attraction. What did you do? Kwaman be the world's strongest man. He be popular. People come to see him from all the Northlands. Some even from east of the Bay of Fire. But then there be an accident. And the Circa tell Kwaman to leave. That he be dangerous. And that no one be paying to see him anymore. What kind of accident? Kwaman's most popular feat be the breaking of large rocks with his fist. Everyone would applaud when the rock be breaking. Then one day, the Caliph be at the Circa to see the performers. He be saying, Kwaman, I hear of him breaking a large rock with his fist. This I want to see. But my performance be over that day, and there be no rock to break. So the Circa Ringmaster Obron, he be saying, let's get a rock in here, any big rock at all. So they bring in this rock that Kwama never be crushing before. Kwama not be sure if it is a good idea, because rock can be dangerous when it breaks. But Obron be saying, this you must do. The Caliph wants to see. We do not disappoint the Caliph of Khorasan, or we lose our heads. So Kwaman break the rock, and when it breaks... What, what happened? There'll be large pieces of rock flying everywhere, and one piece be hitting the Caliph and one his son. The Caliph be not seriously hurt, but his son be unconscious and bleeding from the head. They say to Kwaman, run, get away from the Circa and Khorasan, or the Caliph will have his head. So Kwaman run, and he get passage on ship leaving that night. When the ship passed this island, Kwaman be jumping into sea and swimming ashore. And now he be here. What happened between you and the Orlawal? Oh, Kwaman be so clumsy, so dangerous. He should not be among people. He be only hurting them. Be all the wall, be kind, letting Kwaman live and fish in their village. But then Kwaman be stepping over a young all the wall, almost breaking his shell. Be all the wall, tell Kwaman to leave village, to not come back because he may kill an Orwal. They tell him to go as far away as possible. Kwaman be sad because he liked the Orwal and because Kwaman be having the best fishing place in all of Elias. He lose his friends and his food. What do you eat now? Kwaman fish in these wells here. But the fish that live down there be small, and not very tasty. Would you like to move back to the Orlawal village? Oh yes. Kwaman be wishing that more than anything in the world. I saw an Orlawal down by the beach, just outside the village. It seemed to be in pain, but I didn't know what to do. Perhaps if you come along, you can help him out, and get back in favor with the Orlawal people. Yes, perhaps Kwaman can help, even if the Olawal do not want him back. Here it is, the, uh, Orlawal? Can you help it? Perhaps Kwaman can help. Poor Olawal. He'd be crying for help. Uh, Kwaman see what be wrong. The Olawal not shed its shell when time come. And now it be stuck in the show. Why didn't the other Orlawal come to its assistance? 
Their claws be no good for this work. They be helpless. But Quamon help. Quamon be good with his hands. Quamon be happy. Quamon accept your graceful thanks, sir. Thank you. You be making Quamon very happy. Quamon accept your offer and be grateful to the Allawal people. Thank you very much. What? What did he say? Why did you thank him? Olawal be inviting Kwaman to stay on the cliff above the village, where he can fish again. Kwaman be very, very happy now. You understand what it's saying? Olawal language be easy to understand. It be just click and clack and clock. I'm so happy for you, Kwaman. Go on, don't let me hold you back. How's the fish biting? With its teeth? But not today. Why is that? Quaman be not certain. The fish always bite before, but then Quaman be having lure. Now no lure, just bait. What do you need to make a lure? Quaman can make lure with just anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. You're a real DIY guy, don't you know? Always be something wrong with Quaman. That was actually a compliment. Oh. Are you happy now, Quaman? Quaman be happy. He be wanting fish to bite. But if they do not, Quaman still be happy. Can I borrow your fishing rod? Quaman must catch fish first, so he can eat. After Quaman catch fish, April can borrow fishing rod. Happy fishing. Thank you. Could this wrapper work as a lure? Yes. Yes, with some work. It'd be perfect for a lure. Now Quaman can make one, and hopefully catch many fish. Hello, Quaman. Hello, April. Happy fishing. Thank you. It's a wooden crossbow. Who built that big crossbow in the tree? I did. Well, I thought of it. And these two nincompoops gave a helping twig on the, uh, manual side. So they built it, and you supervised. Yep, but it's not done. There are still a few pieces missing before we can blast off for Luna. Did you say blast off for Luna? That's what I said, Luna. As in the moon? The same. You intend to go to the moon using that thing? Lunar cannon. And yes, that's the plan. You guys are loonies! If by loonies you mean visionaries, then yes, yes we are. 
How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why. But Quammen has moved back to the Orlowal village. He's not going to disturb you again, trust me. Really? How the heck did that happen? Nah, I don't care. The important thing is, we can work again. Thanks, lady. I'd be happy to talk to you later, but I got some fine-tuning to do before I'm done. How's it going? Almost there. Oh, uh, one tiny little problem, though. And that is? We don't have a bowstring for our... Uh, uh... Propulsion drive mechanism, Wick. Uh, what he said, uh, yeah, we need a bowstring. Uh, something strong and flexible and sinewy. Like what? I don't know, lady. I'm no engineer. I'm just a supervisor. String made from animal guts would be perfect. Yeah, but look at us. Do we look like the kind of stick men who'd make good hunters? Do you see me going after a gate beast carrying what, a comb? A dry leaf sharpened to a razor edge? I don't figure I'll be needing the rod anytime soon, but I'll borrow the line. Can you use this as bowstring for your, uh, lunar cannon? Let me see that. Oh, yeah, that gonna work good. All right, listen up. I got us what we need. And now we finish this damn cannon. Go to work, people. Give us a few minutes, lady, and we'll be all done. You wood brain fool, I built it. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. The lunar cannon is now ready to be tested. Well? Well, what? Are you gonna do it? Do what? Test the cannon. Me? And get myself killed? I think not. But go ahead, be my guest. I don't think I'll fit in there. 
That ain't my problem. I'll just place the hook along the bowstring, like so, and let the rope trail behind it. Okay, we're ready to fire. There's a slight updraft here. The wind is channeled through that chasm down there and blown out and up here. That's the last of it, unfortunately. God, I think I'm gonna throw up. That was so not appetizing. Weirdest thing, though. I do feel lighter. Like I lost 90 pounds. I can't even imagine what people would pay for this stuff back home. Ah! Human, you flew across the chasm. You don't have wings, but still. You fly like the elation. Believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. Are you the Windbringer? What's the Windbringer? It's a prophecy amongst my people. Of course, there's no escaping the prophecies. It's said that someone not of the elation shall come among us to float on the wind like an elation, to learn our stories, to bring the wind back to us and to bring us into a new and happier age. Is that all? You know, I'm starting to forget how simple my life used to be. Family, friends, grades, boys, no prophecies, nobody looking to me for salvation. I don't understand, Windbringer. You should speak with our teller up in the city. She'll be wanting to see you, I'm sure. We've waited for the Windbringer for a very long time. The teller? Thanks. No, Windbringer. Thank you. Hello. Good day, stranger. What would you hear among the elation? I need to speak with the teller. The teller? Uh, go down into the city and you will see the castle. The teller, she keeps to the tower. She's old, and her eyes don't take well to the sun. Hi there. What you doing? Playing. Yeah? What are you playing? Nothing. My daddy's in the castle watch. He's allowed to sharpen his claws. Really? My daddy owns a farm. Yeah? Do you have animals there? Sure. He has some cows and some horses and... What? What's cows and horses? Well, cows are big, brown, fat animals with four legs and white spots. And they go moo. <laughs> and horses? Horses are fun to be around. They run really fast, and they can jump over tall fences, and they look beautiful and graceful. But the best thing about horses is that you can ride them. I can run fast, too. But I can't fly yet. My wings aren't fully formed. But when I grow up, I'll fly far away and see everything. I'll go see our horses. That would be nice. My name's April. What's yours? Saina. Will you be my friend, April? Of course, Saina. As long as you promise to be my friend. 
I promise. Do you know where the teller lives? Over there, in the castle tower. My daddy's watching the entrance so that only nice people can get in. Do you think he'll let me in? I don't know, if you're nice. But you have to ask my daddy. Where are the other children in your village? Oh, they're in school now. And why aren't you in school? Because I'm ahead of everyone else. I'm really smart, you know. I'm the only youngling to have learned the first tale this soon. So some days, I get to do what I want. It's a little boring, though. I wish I was in school. At least there I could sing and play and jump around with all the other children. Why don't you go to school anyway? Because they say I would just distract the other children who are still learning their first tales. It's not fair. I mean, I get to play by myself and everything, but that's not fun all day. And my mom is working on her pottery at home, and she doesn't want me disturbing her because she might make a mistake. But the day after tomorrow, I get to go back to school because then we're going to learn some more flying lessons. They're always a lot of fun, and I'm getting pretty good at that, too. I bet. I wish I had wings like you do. Yes, they're very good to have when you fly. Have fun, Saina. Are you leaving? Yes, I'm sorry, but there are some things I have to do. Grown-ups are always too busy. Be careful, don't come too close. I'm almost done with this pot. Sorry. Are you here to buy pottery? I didn't think traders were allowed up here. No, I came to speak with your teller. Really? I didn't know the teller spoke with anyone from the outside. You must be a very special girl. Supposedly. My name's April, by the way. Nima is my name. Nima of Taama. The only Alation village on Alace. I like your pottery. It's our craft. That and storytelling. But storytelling can't buy merchandise or food. I know a lot of people who live by telling stories, although I guess that's kind of different. They are lucky then. Not that I don't enjoy making pottery. It's good to feel the wet clay between my claws, to shape it into whatever I wish. It's almost like creating a new life, I think. I don't have a husband yet, so I haven't tried. Have you? Do you have a husband and children? Neither, thank God. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I was 18 turnings this spring. I'm ready for a husband, but I've yet to court anyone who could make me soar on the winds. I think the men of Tom are dull and timid. What about the guard on the road below the village? He's our age, isn't he? Isam? He's quite pretty. And his wings are big, but I don't think he likes me. He never looks at me or talks to me. That doesn't mean anything. He could just be shy. Maybe you could talk to him, find out who he likes. But don't say I sent you. Sure, I can do that. Thank you, April. Thank you, Nima. You're welcome, April. Halt! Halt! Who would visit the teller? I'm the Windbringer. The Windbringer? You are not the Windbringer. Are you? How else would I have been able to get up here? I am the Windbringer. If so, you must prove that you are of the elation. There are four tales from the four corners of the world that you must know by heart. They are the tale of winds, the tale of stars, the tale of sea, and the tale of homecoming. I will ask you one question from each tale, and you must answer each correctly, or you cannot be the Windbringer. Are you ready? No, give me some time to prepare. Then return when you are ready, and I will test your knowledge of the four tales.
Hi, Mima. Hi, April. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? I had to learn the tale of homecoming. It took a long time, but I think I got it now. I'm better with pottery than I am with the tales, unfortunately. Do you want to hear it? Please. Very well. This is the tale of homecoming, my tale, and I shall tell it in my own words as told to me by my teacher, in her words, and by her teacher in turn. Moran was a handsome young Alation man with strong wings and a hardy beak. He lived below the white cliffs where the water was salty and the fish plentiful. Moran was betrothed to Anara, the loveliest girl there ever was. She was fair and slender and tall, and her eyes were the clearest shade of blue. But Moran was hesitant to enter into union with Anara, to become her husband and to give her children. He would always come up with a new excuse for why they had to wait a little while longer. Now, Anara was skilled at pottery, but even more so with stories, and the teller of the village had many times asked Anara to be her apprentice, to learn all the tales, so that someday she could take over as the teller. But Anara refused, knowing that if she did accept the teller's offer, she would never be able to marry Moran, because a teller cannot have a husband nor children of her own. Her refusal to become the teller's apprentice was unheard of, because who could refuse such an honor? But to Anara, love was more important. Her love for Moran was beyond honor, beyond reason. But despite Anara's love, Moran was still hesitant. And then one day he told Anara, I am traveling on a pilgrimage to the far shores. I will be gone for some time. And while I am traveling, and in accordance with our traditions, I will be freed from our betrothal. Not until I come back will the bond between us be renewed. It was not unusual for a young Alation man at that time to go on a pilgrimage, and the bond between the betrothed would often be cut while he was away, to be formed again upon his return. But Anara was heartbroken, because she had thought that Moran would soon want to marry her. When Moran saw her tears, he said to her, Do not weep. When I come back, I promise I will marry you. Just wait for me, and stay with your pots, to make the time pass quickly. And then Moran left on his pilgrimage to the far shores. Many years went by, and Moran had exciting adventures on the far shores. But by and by, he began to long for home, and for Anara. And now he had finally realized that he loved her, and that he wanted to marry her. But when he returned, he could not find Anara amongst the pot makers. He went to visit her family, and they told him that, after waiting for many years, Anara accepted the teller's offer of apprenticeship. And that when the teller left on the last wind during the previous winter, Anara herself became the new teller. Angry, Moran made his way to the teller's nest, and when he saw Anara, he said to her, You promised me you would wait! But Anara did not say a single word in answer. She just turned around and wrapped in leaves from the cot behind her and gave it to Moran. Moran unwrapped the package, and inside he found an old pot, cracked and broken in two. What is this pot? he asked. And why did you not wait for me like I asked you to? And finally Anara spoke, and she said to Moran, I made this pot for you, my dear Moran, when you left, because I wanted it to be my marriage gift to you. But when many, many years passed, I finally realized that you did not love me the way I loved you, and to live hoping otherwise would be death. But I want to marry you, cried Moran. I came back. But Anara just nodded at the broken pot in Moran's hands and said, Like an old pot that is left without care, a heart may break in two, and a broken heart can never be mended. And so Anara turned away, never to speak with Moran again. And Moran's heart, like the pot that was left untended, broke in two, because absence makes a heart brittle. This was the tale of homecoming, my tale, and I told it in my own words as told to me by my teacher, and as I will tell it to my student when the time comes. Bye, Nima. Goodbye, April. Hi, Saina. Hi, April. 
Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Yes, my mommy taught me the tale of the stars. It's a really pretty story. Do you want me to tell it? Please, Sayana, I would like that very much. Okay. This is my tale, the tale of stars, and I tell it to you in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in her words. In the small village of Jinjay near the rumbling hills of Onion, there lived a girl called Mona. She was a curious girl, and she would always get in the way of grown elation. Go play somewhere else, they would say to Mona, but she didn't want to play with the other children. She wanted to be where the grown-ups were, to see what they were doing, and learn from them. But one day, after getting many complaints from the pottery makers, and guardsmen, and traders, and soldiers in the village, Mona's mother told her that she wasn't to interfere with the grown-ups anymore, and that instead she could go play with the other children, or sit still and draw, or work with clay. But Mona was always curious, and now, since she wasn't to be among the grown elation anymore, she decided to go exploring the forest that lay just outside of the village of Jinjay. She had many times been forbidden to enter the forest because it could be a dangerous place, but Mona was very curious. Of course, she wasn't planning on going far into the forest. But then her eye caught sight of a white fluff tail hopping through the tall grass, and Mona, curious as ever, gave chase. The fluff tail ran away into the forest, and Mona followed, blind to where she was going, and interested only in catching the white fluff tail so that she could keep it as a pet. But then, after a good while, the fluff tail disappeared into a hole in the ground, leaving Mona alone in a small clearing. Somewhere deep inside the forest, she was exhausted after running after the fluff tail for so long. And as she looked around at the clearing at the unfamiliar trees and flowers, she realized that she hadn't been paying attention to where she was going. Not for the first time, her curiosity had gotten the better of her, but this time it was serious. Mona was too young to fly, and she had very little sense of direction. And chasing the white fluff tail. Had made her dizzy and tired. It was getting darker, and Mona was all alone in the deep, dangerous forest, too sleepy and too scared to be able to go anywhere. Mona curled up with her wings wrapped around her under the leaves of a tree, and began crying. Soon it got really dark, and somewhere not far away, wolves started howling at the moon. Mona was so scared she was petrified. But after a while, her exhaustion got the better of her, and she fell asleep. She woke up when she heard a voice calling her from somewhere far above. Looking up at the starry sky, Mona saw a vision of the spirits of five tellers gazing down at her. "You have let your curiosity leave you astray," said one. "You are lost, and you deserve to be lost," said another. Poor little girl," said a third. "We will help you home," said a fourth. "But remember this," said the fifth spirit. "We will lead you back to your village, and to your mother only if you promise us one thing." "I promise," said Mona. "Whatever it is, I promise I will do it." "Very well," said the first spirit. "You will make the story of this night into your own tale, and you will call it the Tale of Stars." It will be a tale to warn the curious to be careful," continued the third spirit, "and to not let their curiosity get the better of them." And said the second spirit, "To remind the elation that the spirits of their tellers watch out for them when they most need it." And so the spirits of the five tellers guided Mona through the forest, and by dawn she was home. And Mona did tell her tale. The tale of stars to everyone in the village, so that everyone would remember that the curious must be cautious, and that the spirits of the tellers are always watching. This was my tale, the tale of stars, and I told it in my own words as my teacher did to me. That was a beautiful tale, Saina. Thank you. Goodbye, Saina. You're leaving again. I wish you could stay. Me too, Sayna. Believe me.
Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Would you mind telling it to me? I would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea, told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words, and to him by his teacher in his words. This was a very, very long time ago, when the Alation were a strong people, and we could spend days riding the hot winds above the seas. We hunted fish then, and we were at war with the Merum, the wet tails. Akalis was one of the strongest warriors there was. His claws were sharp and long, his beak pointy, and his teeth strong. Akalis was admired by everyone in his clan, and because of this, he was cocky and arrogant. So one day, the teller of Akalis city asked him to perform a very important and very special duty, to bring a sacred jewel to the teller of an elation town across the sea. This particular jewel was very important because it signified a union between the two towns, and it would benefit the people of both that it was delivered safely and promptly. Akalis grinned and told the teller that he would deliver the jewel both quickly and safely and that she was not to worry. But the teller did worry because Akalis was young and too sure of himself. But she wanted to test him and to teach him that sharp claws, a pointy beak, and strong teeth are not all a warrior needs, that a warrior must also be wise and careful. So Akalis set out across the sea on his flight. It was on the fourth day that he spotted something in the water that caught his attention, and forgetting his duty and following his curiosity, Akalis dived towards the water to investigate. When he came closer, he saw that there were merum in the water, foolishly hunting close to the surface, and Akalis saw an opportunity to again prove his might. As a great warrior to his people, and to capture the fins of a few wet tails. But this time, Akalis' arrogance got the better of him, because the Merum had set a trap. As he dived towards the Merum with his claws, a spear shot up from the water to hit him. Akalis struck the water and dropped the jewel he was carrying, and it was all he could do not to drown. Akalis was bleeding, and the Merum were grabbing onto his wings and his legs, but he fought bravely, and finally he managed to escape. But even though he now lived, he was dead inside, because the shame of losing the sacred jewel would always be with him. Akalis could not return to his village, because he had neglected his duty to his teller and to his people. And so he went away to a small island where he could be alone. To himself and his people, Akalis now became the lost one. He who had been on a sacred mission, but had failed in his arrogance. A year passed, and one day Akalis met with human traders from a ship that came close to his island. From the traders, Akalas heard speak of a hideous creature that lived in the sea, the Aktawo. The Aktawo was said to have a third eye, like a jewel, and that this eye pulled hapless sailors into its deadly eight-armed grasp. Akalas knew immediately that the Aktawo's third eye had to be the jewel that he lost in the sea a year ago and he now saw the opportunity to redeem himself. But Alation were not used to water, and the thought of submerging himself in the cold, harsh ocean chilled Akalis to his heart. But he was the lost one, and if in his death he could at the very least redeem himself, 
to his own heart, then, it would be worth it. So Achilles fashioned himself a spear, because in the water his claws and his beak would be too slow, and he flew out to where the octavo was last seen. And then Achilles dived into the sea. The dark water closed in on him, and his wings and legs went numb. But still Achilles kept pushing down until he saw the lair of the octavo. Spotting Achilles, the octavo attacked, and Achilles saw the monster's third eye, his sacred jewel, shining bright in the darkness. And his heart was filled with a sense of duty and courage that he had never felt before. But as he began fighting the eight-armed monster, Achilles realized that if he were to fight like he usually did, he would not stand a chance. He would have to think differently. And so Achilles tricked the octavo into following him through a tight chasm where the monster got stuck. And then he swam above it and, using his spear, tipped a rock on top of the octavo. Swinging back down again, the octavo was flailing helplessly. Now, almost out of air, Achilles took the sacred jewel from the octavo's head and swam back up. Finally, Achilles could deliver the sacred jewel to the town across the sea. And upon returning to his village, he went to the teller, bowed his head, and said, Forgive me, teller. For in my arrogance, I thought I could do everything, but I could not, and I became the lost one because of it. You were lost, said the teller, but you are no more, because now you see the limits of your own strength, and you will know that a warrior must be careful and wise in addition to being strong and fierce. This was the tale of sea. And I told it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of winds, Windbringer. Do you wish to hear it? Very much. Then I shall tell it. This is the tale of winds, my tale, and I pledge to tell it in my own words, as told in turn by my teacher. In the village of Karan, in the mountains of tall winds, there lived a young Alatian woman named Iwana. Iwana had one desire above all others, to soar higher and farther than anyone else. And even though her wings were no broader, nor her body sleeker than anyone else's, she pursued this foolish desire without rest. And as time passed, she did soar higher, and she did fly farther than the other young Alation in her village. And her name became known far and wide amongst the tribes of the mountains of tall winds. But still, Iwana was not happy. She was not happy because, in her vanity, even though she was a better flyer than almost everyone else, and to her eyes, she was still not good enough. She wanted to be so much better than anyone else that she would be remembered for all time as the best flyer amongst all the elation. And so one day, Iwana decided to climb to the top of Mount Bakta'ana, the Tower of Light, and to soar from those giddy heights to the ends of the world. Her friends and her family pleaded with her not to, because every Alation knew that to soar from such heights was dangerous, that at such heights the air was thin and the winds treacherous. But Iwana would not listen, and on a cold and clear morning she climbed up the Tower of Light to the rock and the ice at the very top. From there she could see to the ends of the world. And it brought tears to her eyes to know that now, finally, she would be greater and better than any elation before her. And so Iwana spread her wings and leaped off the mountain. 
Those who watched her from far below said that for a split moment Iwana soared, and she soared higher and farther than any elation before or since. But then the treacherous winds caught a hold of her, and the thin air made her plummet towards the ground and to fall to her death amongst the rocks at the base of the mountain. In her vanity, Iwana could not see beyond her desire to be the very best. And vanity always stands to fall. That was the tale of winds, my tale, and I told it in my own words, as told to me in turn by my teacher. Are you ready for the questions now? Yes, ask me the questions. In the Tale of Winds, which mountain did Iwana fall from in her vain attempt to fly higher and further than anyone else? Mount Bakhtaana, the Tower of Light. That is correct. In the Tale of Stars, what did Mona see in the sky that helped her find her way home? The spirits of five tellers. That is correct. In the tale of C, what creature did the lost one battle in his quest to recover the sacred jewel? The Octavo? That is correct. My final question to you is this. In the tale of homecoming, what was given to Moran by his teller when he returned from his pilgrimage? A broken pot to teach him that absence may break a heart in two. You have correctly answered all my questions, and so have proven your knowledge of the four tales. You are the Windbringer. The teller would see you presently. Come closer, human. Closer. I cannot see your face. Closer still, come sit here by me. There you are. <laughs> you see, my eyes are not what they used to be. Ages ago, I could spot a ladybug crawling up a straw of grass from 15 tree lengths up. Now, I have a hard time seeing my supper. But my ears, Balance be praised, my ears, they are as good as ever. I could hear you outside, learning the tales my children tell. You are a good listener, and a fast learner. They were interesting stories, and your people told them well. That is what we do. The Elation are the keepers of the tales, and I am their teller, the one who must know all the tales told since the day we came to this world. How can you do that? How can you remember every story ever told? The secret is to tell them often and to tell them in your own words, not the words of your ancestors. Doesn't that mean that the stories change with every generation? Yes, as all tales must. Change is important. Otherwise, the tales will have no meaning to us. They will just be words, and we do not care about the words. We care about what the words tell us. How long have your people been telling stories? Since the beginning, human. Since we came to this world a long, long time ago. You're not from Earth? From Arcadia? Not according to our tales. We came on a great wind before the divide, when the earth was one and humans had yet to learn of magic and science. But we were a different people then, and the tales we tell from that time are vague and incomplete. Like myths and legends, the younger relation pay little attention to these tales. Sometimes I worry they will be lost with me, these tales, and I am getting old, very old. I came to you to find answers to some important questions. 
ask, and I will try my best to answer. Have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Once, long ago, when my people lived in harmony with the Merim, there were stories of an old god worshipped by the Merim who resided deep in the darkest depths of the ocean. According to legend, the old god had once brought the Merim into their realm, into the ocean, and he was now sleeping, resting, before the journey back. Back where? To a great ocean amongst the stars. When the time came, he would gather the Merim and bring them home with him, back to their world, to their ocean. Strangely enough, we have a similar tale. It is said that the great wind that brought us here will someday return to bring us back to a place where we can soar forever on warm winds. Like heaven? In a way, perhaps, but without the need for any of us to die. The great wind will just sweep us up and carry us away. Every evening before I go to sleep, I recite this tale to myself. It is a comforting one. What do you know about the dry kin? Kin are numbered four, or so our tales tell. Two in this world, two in the other. The mirror world, the white and the blue, the red and the green. Do you know where they are? No, the tales never say. The kin are elusive. They keep to themselves. I have never seen one myself, and I doubt any of my kind has. The tales do say that our past and our future are tied to the fate of the kin, but how I would not pretend to know. This is one tale that is yet to be told. Do you know anything about the Guardian's realm? This is human business. Would you not know more than I? Your people are the keepers of the tales. You remember more than humankind is forgotten. Please, I need to hear what you know. That is very little. The Guardian's realm is home to the Guardian in his tower. No one is permitted within except the Guardian who was, the Guardian who is, and the Guardian who will be. And of course, the Dryak kin, who were instrumental in its making. Have you ever heard of the existence of a hidden entrance to his realm? Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard tell of such a thing, though I would not know where it is. I gather that one of the kin may be able to tell you. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. I am glad I could help you with some answers. I'm the Windbringer. I know you are. <laughs> it's strange to me to hear those words spoken. I did not think they would be in my lifetime. But here you are, standing in front of me as real as the sky is blue. I'm sorry I have to ask, but what is it that the Windbringer is supposed to do for you? I did not expect you to walk in here and have all the answers, child. The balance has both blessed you and cursed you and it has sent you here to do what it wills. The Windbringer is said to be the first sign of the great wind that will take us away from here. For a long time, the Elation have lost the strength they used to have. Our bones have become weak and our wings fragile. Where we used to be able to soar for days on strong winds, we are now using our legs to walk rather than fly. Why this is, we do not know. Ten Yen. You know of the reason for this? I'm just guessing, but it makes sense. Go on. The tales also say that the Windbringer will unite us with our past and end the age-old strife. I know. You must make peace and be reunited with the Merim. You share a common ancestry. I have always thought we did. The tales were too similar, the signs clear. But my people, they, they will have a difficult time understanding why and how this can be. If you don't, both the Elation and the Merim will die out. When war broke out between your people and you were forced to move up into the mountains, it compromised a precarious symbiosis. A substance called Tanyan was abundant where the Merim and the Elation lived in close proximity. It brought fish and heat and light to both your people. 
But now, living up in the mountains, your way of life, your diet, your customs and habits, they've all changed. And that's probably the cause of your brittle bones and fragile wings. Then we must make peace with the Marum and restore the balance between us, so as to strengthen us both and prepare us for the journey that will surely come soon. When our sitting is over, I will speak to my people, and I will elect one representative from the Elation to meet with the Marum in the place of your choosing to open a dialogue. I guess it's time for you to talk to your people and for me to make arrangements with the Marum. Where do you wish for our meeting to take place, Windbringer? You want me to decide? Um, well, I know. Send your ambassador down to the ancient caves by the beach. Inside, there are remnants of an old Alation settlement and a Marum city. It's a good place for your two people to meet, don't you think? Yes. And could you ask if they would bring their half of the stone? The stone? You have the other half? We have held on to it for centuries, knowing that someday it would be of use to the Windbringer. It will, trust me. Then we must make haste and arrangements. It is an important day, so let us not waste light. Go and wait for my ambassador in the caves. It's amazing. This place is so beautiful. And the scent of sea and rock and nest. This scent is a home. This was home a long, long time ago, according to the tales. We lived in peace with the wet tail, uh, with the Merum back then. Now you'll be able to live in peace again. And with the Tanyan bringing fish to your doorstep. You'll be able to eat well and restore strength to your bones. Soon you might even be able to soar on the winds for days like you used to do. I hope you are right, Windbringer. And I hope that the wet, the Merum, will see the sense in it too. They are coming, are they not? They said they would. Hush, I hear something. We are here, Warrior Stone, as was promised. Good. Now, as representatives of your respective peoples, you, the Queen of Amiram City, and you, Guard to the Elation Teller, must fulfill the prophecy and join the two parts of the One Stone. We hope that our peoples may be joined again, Elation, and that we may live in peace and prosper. As do we, Merrow. And we pledge to do all we can for this to happen. The stone is now whole, Windbringer. And the elation and the mirror will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Thank you. The both of you. Come now, April. And we will take you to our sleeping god. May his wisdom guide you and lead you down the right.